still examining the survivors of the damaged freighter. Looks like it goes by the name of the Ebon Hawk. Only one survivor, placed in the Coltal tank for recovery. The carbon scoring on the vessel suggests it was in a battle, but no indication of who fired on it. Couldn't get much from the Navi computer. I'm surprised the ship was able to make it inside the Paragus asteroid field without the asteroid drift charts. Aside from the lone survivor, we recovered an old woman. No life signs. There was also a protocol droid and a utility droid on board, sent both down to maintenance while security sorts through the other items on the ship. It looks like the utility droid, a T3 unit, was able to get the ship working enough to get to the colony. We're prepared to... Find what you're looking for amongst the dead. Yes, I had hoped as much. I slept here too long and could not awaken. It may be I reached out unconsciously, and your mind must have been a willing one. Or perhaps you have been trained for such things. Close to death. Yes, closer than I'd like. You have the smell of the Colto tank about you. How do you feel? I am Kreia, and I am your rescuer, as you are mine. Tell me, do you recall what happened? Your ship was attacked. You were the only survivor. A result of your Jedi training, no doubt. Your stance, your walk, tells me you are a Jedi. Your walk is heavy. You carry something that weighs you down. So it would seem. Keep your past and let us focus on the now. I do not know. I was removed from the events of the world as I slept. A survey of the surroundings may provide the answers we seek. The ship we arrived in, the Ebon Hawk, must still be in this place. We should recover it and leave. We were attacked once, and I fear our attackers will not give up the hunt so easily. Without transport, weapons, and information, they will find us easy prey indeed. Even as I slept, I felt much unrest here. I saw strange visions, minds colored with fear. Now, everything here feels terribly silent. A last word of caution. I would find out as much as you can about this place quickly. I fear we will need to depart as suddenly as we arrived. You may wish to extend your search to some clothes, if only for proper first impressions. I leave you to the explorations of this place. Here, I will remain and attempt to center myself.
This is the exit, but it is sealed. Strange. In my visions, it was open. much energy in the room beyond, yet it stems from nothing that lives. Can you not sense them? Reach out. Cast aside your sight. Cast aside what you see, and instead reach out with your perceptions. Ah, you can feel them. The droids you cannot perceive. But the small oscillations of energy, that you can feel, echoing outwards. Ah, you hear it. It is faint, but it is there. It is the force you feel. It has not been so long as for you to forget. Do not turn away from it. Listen. Feel it echoing within you. Come. I shall guide you down the familiar paths. You will need it if we are to survive and escape this place. this door someone yet lives be mindful his thoughts are difficult to read but you have nothing to fear from this one and he might yet prove useful
Nice outfit. What, you miners change regulation uniform while I've been in here? Atten. Atten Rand. Excuse me if I don't shake hands. The field only causes mild electrical burns. You mean before or after that Jedi showed up? Either way, it's a real short story. You see, this Jedi shows up, and you know what that means. Where there's one Jedi, the Republic will soon be crawling up your ion engine in no time. But the story gets better. See, some of the miners get it into their ferrocrete skulls that since the Jedi's unconscious, they can collect the bounty the exchange has posted for live Jedi. Well, what passes for the law here didn't like that idea. So the two groups started fighting. Then there was some big explosion, and then I was sitting here for a long time, waiting for some half-naked miner to show up and ask a bunch of questions. Don't know much about it. Maybe the Exchange wants one as a trophy, or somebody's got something against Jedi and is looking to collect. Not many Jedi left. Wouldn't surprise me if the bounty's pretty high. The ones that weren't killed in the Jedi Civil War ended up switching off the lightsabers long ago. Word is there's not even a Jedi Council anymore, but who knows. Yeah, Revan, Malak, and the Jedi that went to join them in the Mandalorian Wars. They turned against the other Jedi and had a scrap that almost laid waste to the galaxy. <laughs> Where have you been? Well, I wasn't there, but like all Sith, Revan and Malak turned on each other. After they turned on the Jedi, of course. Well, that was the story, but whatever happened there must not have lasted. Oh, there was some big civil war on Korriban. Knocked that academy to the ground. Looks like Revan's Grand Crusade finally consumed her. Maybe you're right. Maybe I just hoped Revan was a woman. Look, no offense or anything, but your weird half-naked interrogation isn't my idea. Hey, wait a minute. You're that Jedi the miners were talking about. Where is everybody? From my beautiful view in the security cage? Look, I heard some explosions, some emergency alarms, some toxic gas pouring out of the vents. Maybe none of them survived whatever happened. And if they're all gone... Look, hey, let me out and I can help you. I can. I've gotten out of trouble countless times. This facility isn't a military installation, which means we may have a chance. You shut down the cell security field and I can reroute the emergency system so we can get to the hangars. We grab a ship and then we fly out of here. No deal. If I'm not leaving, you're not leaving. Great. Now to business. Let's get to the command console. All right, here we are. Now this console is set on automatic hail. You may have heard it when you came in. The asteroid drift charts are constantly being updated, so it sends out a transmission to incoming vessels so they don't get crushed into space dust. The hail warns them to keep their distance until orbital drift charts are transmitted and then provides docking instructions to incoming ships, usually freighters. Thing is, you can bounce that same transmission back to the comm here, and suddenly you've got access to the communication system from the inside. Pure pizzack. The console's ours. Now all we need to do is reactivate the turbo lifts, cancel the emergency lockdown, and... Hey! This system's been severed from the main hub, after it was locked down from remote. You can't even reroute the system, it's been cut clean. No. Someone tried to lock down this whole level tight, and leave us here. Trapped. I doubt it. All we have is communications back, for all the good trying to shout in a vacuum will do us. We could try, but if the miners were trying to trap you up here and probably kill you, why not call them and chat? I don't think a friendly call is going to wake them up. Be my guest. Not much else we can do. The comm's all yours. Tracked at the freighter in. It was lucky it wasn't destroyed when it drifted into the asteroid field. Not much on board. One damaged droid, one annoying protocol droid, and a lot of bodies. Sent the survivor to medical and the others to the morgue. Didn't recognize the ship's ID code, so we transmitted it to the Republic for some answers. Questioned the protocol droid about what happened. Says his master, the survivor, I guess, 
was on the Republic ship, the Harbinger, when it suffered an engine failure. He says the survivor was a passenger on the vessel and a Jedi. If so, that's gonna mean true. Inventory the bodies and cargo. Everything matches the protocol droid's story. The T3 droid had seized up, so he left it in storage and standby mode. Don't know what code to access it. It could be its voice activated for all we know. We put the protocol droid to work in maintenance, sorting the mining droid comm routines and updating the recognition sensors. Man, to shut him up. When the survivor recovers, hopefully we can get him off this station before there's a... Re Trouble between the work shifts. Word of the Jedi leaked out and the miners aren't sure what to do with him. Quarter's mining crew wanted us to collect the credits for the bounty the Exchange has on Jedi, but I put a stop to that. We're contacting Telos to get the Republic records on the Jedi, but nobody will... will know a word from the Republic. But I've sent out a Broadcom transmission for records on this Ebon Hawk. One of the miners said it used to be a smuggling vessel. Accidents are making the miners restless. The droid behavior course must be undergoing some kind of binary decay. Two miners were drilled by a droid's mining laser, and those blasts in the ventilation tunnels nearly caused the whole facility to blow.
As requested, all the programming spikes the security officers wanted confiscated have been stored there as well to prevent further system compromises. The secure cargo hold should be safe enough. If anybody wants to break into it, they'd have to blow it open with explosives. Who ordered the mining droids to repair that Jedi's freighter? I come in here off the work shift and three of them are repairing the port stabilizers? Did I miss something? Is somebody planning a trip? Because orders were that the hangar was to be locked down ever since that Jedi arrived. I don't know what maintenance is up to, but you can't just commission droids for repairs, especially with half the work shifts in medbay. Those droids are needed to repair the ventilation tunnels before gas builds up to terminal levels. It's not like that ship can go anywhere anyway. Even if it had the asteroid orbital drift charts, the Nava computer's been voice locked. You'd need the access code to get it spaceworthy. Considering this latest droid commission breach, I'm putting the droids in this section under the control of the current dock officer. If anyone sends commands to the mining droids outside this terminal, I'll be forced to enact full override. Looks like those droids got the vessel working again, even with all the damage it had taken. The maintenance officer still won't admit ordering them to fix it, though. 
Regardless, still no luck accessing the Navi computer. It's been voice locked. Maybe by one of the corpses we found on the ship, like the old woman. If so, that ship isn't going anywhere, unless we rip out the Navi computer and put in a new one, if we even had one to spare. The only reason someone would lock their Navi computer is to hide their astrogation charts. Someone didn't want us to know where that ship was going, or where it had been. Only smugglers do that, or someone with something to hide. That Jedi's got a lot of questions to answer. So is that stupid droid of yours gonna come through or not? Well, I'm beginning to think I was a little better off in my... Hey, what do you know? A little cargo cylinder came through. If he got the turbo for you, we should have a clear run to the hangar. Wait, wait, don't tell me you're taking that hatch down into the mining tunnels. Are you? That explosion I heard came from below. There's probably nothing down there except superheated rock and collapsed blast tunnels. You'd be an idiot to go down there. Me? You're the Jedi. If one of us has to go, then it's you. Guardians of peace and justice throughout the galaxy, last I heard. There's no way I'm going down there. You might as well lock me up again if you freed me just to throw me into a nest of gun darks. I'll take coward over stupid any day. I'll keep the comm link on just in case you need some help. Not that I'll come running, mind you.
Watch out. That explosion has superheated the tunnels ahead. That steam will cook the skin off your bones. If you can find a mining energy shield, switch it on. It should protect you against the heat if you move quickly enough. Watch where you step. I'm picking up a lot of sonic mines down there. Don't run unless you have to makes them harder to spot. If you have any skill with demolitions, you might be able to recover them and use them against the droids. That is, if the mines don't get you first. If you have survey gear or a safety harness, put them on. They'll make spotting and disarming the sonic charges a little easier. out. Those little pests will try to repair the mining droids if you don't gun them down first. Still, it's odd they're still active after the explosion. They don't have the same shielding as the mining droids. Be careful of those droids. I don't like this.
anybody here? What's up, Kurda? We're supposed to be sinking fuel siphons into the 3218 asteroid shelf right now. Forget the siphons. You know that survivor they pulled from the freighter? One of the miners said they served with him on Malachor 5. Malachor 5? So he's one of the survivors. Or worse, a Mandalorian. So what? Not a survivor, idiot. He's one of the Jedi from Malachor 5. If he's one of the Jedi, hell, we can't have him walking around here. He'll... Well, I don't know what he'll do. I thought all the Jedi were wiped out in the Civil War, weren't they? Guess they missed one. But it gets better. I did some checking, and that bounty of Hushda is still mine. What? You wanna sell the Jedi to the Exchange? Korda, have you been chewing spice? Look, you know how big that bounty is? That Jedi's our ticket off this rock. Korda, there's no way the officers will go for that. They'll lock us up for sure. Then we'll improvise.
I may be able to keep it contained until you get the turbo lift to the fuel depot, but not for much longer. I'm locking down the turbo lift to the administration section now to keep the blast from spreading. If you've got anything left to do down there, make it quick, because where you are is going to get real hot real soon. It is a pleasure to see you alive, Master, provided my receptors are not off focus. How may I be of assistance? Answer. I am a survivor of the Harbinger, just as you were, Master. With the unexpected termination of my previous Master, you are the only organic which I may now serve. Irritated answer. Oh, Master, it is such a long, dull story, and not terribly relevant to our current situation. Hesitant explanation. That has been the subject of considerable discussion since our arrival here, Master. Many have attempted to claim you and this unit as salvage. I was crudely interrogated concerning our brief history together on board the Harbinger, before its communications, weapons, and engines suffered the cascade failure that disabled the ship. Speculation. It is possible you were incapacitated and locked in the well-shielded cargo compartment as the Harbinger was being systematically crippled, Master. Clarification. Yes, Master. No doubt the flurry of destruction on board the Harbinger somehow drugged you into a stupor from which you could not awaken. Most curious. Placation. Merely a turn of phrase, Master. The implication that your state was due to the result of ingesting large quantities of Juma juice was unintentional. I meant to communicate only that you were somehow rendered unconscious before you were locked securely in the cargo hold. Clarification by locked. I meant sealed, Master. My vocabulator seems to be malfunctioning. Recitation. Following the unusual set of coincidences that led to the cascade failure in the Harbinger's systems, we were boarded by a small freighter with unknown ID codes. It appeared that this freighter had been attacked, and the captain wanted to study it. This freighter appeared to be still spaceworthy. Your cargo compartment was breached, and you were taken on board the freighter shortly before the Harbinger's systems began to go critical. I, too, managed to board the freighter before the Harbinger's destruction. 
We were most fortunate to have survived, Master. Explanation? I believe it was a smuggler's vessel by the name of the Ebon Hawk. Speculation. As to its purpose, I do not know. Perhaps it was always its intention to play dead, then kidnap you off the Harbinger and rob me of my bounty. Clarification. By bounty, I refer to your life, Master. It would pain me to see you damaged in any way. That is why the arrival of this Ebon Hawk caused me considerable distress.
told me that his master is the only Jedi he knows of in all the galaxy, and that the Jedi had served in the Mandalorian Wars almost ten years ago. That would have meant that the Jedi served under Revan for a time. That can't be good. Everyone knows that all the Jedi who followed Revan fell to the dark side. I've been too busy to enter a log for a while. There's been more and more accidents since that Jedi arrived. The miners are starting to get restless, especially Korda. Korda said the exchange is offering a huge bounty on Jedi Knights and that we can make a fortune if we sell the Jedi to Nar Shaddaa. Security shot down that idea pretty quick, but I don't think Korda and his men are gonna give up that easy. I mentioned the trouble to the Jedi's protocol droid, and he seemed concerned about his master's safety. I told the droid not to worry. The Korda wouldn't... With the protocol droid's help, I made some upgrades to the sonic imprint sensor using some of the droid's vocabulator subroutines. In addition to its ability to store and record voices, it now has the droid's full array of alien languages, including basic. Should prove useful as a portable translator. I tried to make sure the protocol unit got some credit for helping fashion it, but the droid refused. Saying the work was reward enough. I was thinking of installing the prototype in one of the mining droids as a test and see what happens. When the dock officer reported the droids repairing the Ebonhawk, I installed a voice print ID on the droid console system. Someone ordered them to repair that freighter, and I can't find a trace of the order anywhere. If anyone tries that again, they won't be able to do it from this terminal unless I let them. The voice print should cut any user off from the central functions unless I get the code. The maintenance check on the droids didn't help. If anything, the accidents have increased. Security interrogated me about the droids, and they weren't too happy with my answers. I understand it, though. These aren't combat models. They shouldn't even know how to attack. I can't help but think, what if somebody staged the initial trouble with the mining droids just to get them all sent to maintenance, and then did something to them? I think security's right. Someone's trying to sabotage this facility, and they're using the droids to do it. But why?
It's about time. I lost your signal after you left the mining tunnels. Now you're coming in clear. Except I'm picking you up on the exterior of the facility. On the asteroid's surface. That can't be right. Huh? What are you doing out there? You're crazy. Even for a Jedi. Look, you need to get out of there, quick. What little is left of the facility's venting systems have gone active, most likely from the explosions in the mining tunnels. They're venting Paragus fuel deposits into space through the exterior vents, right in your path. The vents look like they've been purposely rerouted to vent the gases to the exterior. And only in the last few minutes, it's almost as if... Now what now? I don't believe this. There's a ship coming in. Sending a docking code. I have a bad feeling about this. Bye. 
didn't make it out of the dormitory section before the lockdown, you murklack. You're cutting a little close, aren't you? Yes. A regrettable miscalculation on my part. 
I'm contacting you because I'm picking up a subspace transmission from within that level. Is that your doing? No, they, they must be trying to use the old relay system to send an emergency signal. I doubt they know what's really going on. Hey, this turbo lift's locked down. Try the code again, and don't worry about the miners and their transmission. By the time help arrives, we'll be all the way to Nar Shaddaa. Oh, they won't be leaving the dormitories. The explosion within the tunnel has damaged the ventilation systems, causing breaches in the core exhaust conduits. What? That's going to kill them all! Not all of them, but I'm sending a number of mining droids to your location right now to correct that problem. Kurda, this turbo lift's locked down. The sequence isn't working. Keep trying it! You! Why are you doing this? Why me? You? It was never about you. The Jedi is all that interests me. But then you had to ruin everything by revealing his identity, and then trying to harm him. And that I cannot allow. Statement. You are a risk, Corda. You are impulsive, crude, and soon, deceased. that I reversed the turbo lift codes in case you manage to get this far.
This may be the beginning of a long record. It's about an hour after the facility suffered the explosion that triggered the emergency lockdown. Just finished helping the dock officer set up the transmission relay. Not much signal strength, but it's better than nothing. The transmission gives the code to open the turbo lift when or if help arrives. Code is a simple group of five numbers. Three, 17, 13, then the next two numbers are... Sir, couldn't we contact the med bay? Maybe the Jedi's awake. If so, he could help us. No good. The link to the medical computer was severed from the hub, just like the administration console. Even if the Jedi wakes up, how would we get the dormitory turbo lift code to him? Without it, the turbo lift to the administration level is locked down. We just took an inventory of our supplies. We've got enough emergency rations in the dormitories to last almost a month. But with all the problems in the facility, I don't know how long we'll last. I wish we could contact the Jedi. Maybe he could... But no, he's still floating in that damn tank. Someone's played us for fools. And since Corda and his crew aren't locked in here with us, it's pretty clear who it was. If I ever catch up with that Mandalorian loving son of a... At least the air scrubbers are still working, even though they're tied into the... Hey, what's happening to the ventilation system? It's... Mein Name ist Reto, so wie Barack Dodrun. Chris und mein Trug, Greb, aber noch flank Tour, nach Saganinch. Grab away, no cool, sit a bate bate. Da ruin stolz, so. Der Winter runter, walk away, que, wapa, terra, tana, chinga, radana. Ferra, rampada, no, da bring tada, ne, camera, chela, fibor, no, but. Reliber, corundo, so, mele, grim, grim, con, corre, gim, basa. Rechu, contrada, summa, con, cherry, non, grum, grum. Der, der Winter runter, walk away, que, wapa, terra, tana, chinga, radana. Ferra, rampada, no, da bring tada, ne, camera, chela, fibor, no, but. Mein Name ist Reto, so wie Barack Dodrun. Chris und mein Trug, Greb, aber noch flank Tour, nach Saganinch. Grab away, no, ku, sit, bate, bate. Da ruin stolz, so, but hut in el. Der Winter runt, walk away, que, wapa, terra, tana, chinga, radana. Ferra, rampada, no, da bring tada, nel, kemera, chela, fibor, no, botat. Dosene, karamalak, blur, incidera, ran, mel, rebe, we, chin, chin, kran, nak, tada. Ferra, to, rampada, no, rinka, nel, kemera, chela, fibor, no, lo. To, rum, kawere, kare, papa, nala, ran, chinga. To, to, re, re, sen, sen, sen. Mein Name ist Reto, so wie Barack Dodrun. Chris und mein Trug, Greb, aber noch flank Tour, nach Saganinch. Grab away, no, ku, sit, bate, bate. Da ruin stolz, so, but hut in. Der Winter runter, walk away, que, wapa, terra, tana, chinga, radana. Ferra, rampada, no, da bring tada, nel, kemera, chela, fibor, no, botat. Dosene, karab. Ferra, to, rampada, no, rinka, nel, kemera, chela, fibor, no, lot. Turun, kawere, kare, papa, nala, ran, chinga. Toto, re, re, seni, sen, sen. Wanna juun, seni, sen, sen, drawi, che, ka, nel, kemera, chela, fibor, no, lot. Your ears always were too big, Cian. Come on, if the maintenance officer comes through on the explosions, these dorms are gonna be filling up soon. And shut that damn data pad off and throw it down the refresher. We managed to get to the dormitories. We should be safe here. We've been trying to use the holo transmitter to beam a transmission to the administration level to end the lockdown but the administration console's been severed from the main hub. Everyone thinks we should try to evacuate on our own as soon as possible, but there's no way to break the dormitory seals from the inside. I'm going to keep sending distress calls in the meantime. We've been trying to find a way to circumvent the lockdown and get to our hangar bay, but so far, no luck. <sighs> the situation's worse than we thought. Even if we get out of here, we can't shut down the fuel depot force fields if a fuel leak was detected. If so, the only way off this asteroid is if a ship docks with us. But the only connection to the docking platform is on the administration level. And we can't get up to the docking bay while we're trapped here. I only hope someone survived the explosion in the mining tunnels. If not, then we're stranded here. Unless our transmission reaches a passing ship, or a Telos freighter. Managed to use the hollow transmitter here as a crude relay to beam short burst transmissions outside the Paragas facility. With any luck, the transmission will carry beyond the asteroid field. We've set the emergency transmission on automatic playback. 
We're using a simple military flash code to transmit the code to the turbo lifts, so maybe our rescuers can get down to the dormitory when they reach the station. Without those turbo lift codes, our rescuers wouldn't be able to get here from the administration level. And without those codes, we wouldn't be able to get to the administration level if we found a way out on our own. <sighs> the messages are short distress calls only, since we can't get much signal strength. It's pretty weak, after all. Who would be scouring frequencies way out here looking for trouble? The transmission gives the code to open the turbo lift when or if help arrives. Code is a simple group of five numbers. The one that fired upon the Ebon Hawk as we attempted to rescue you. And he will not let us go without blood being shed. You know much of battle, enough to know that this is a battle you cannot win. We are together in this matter, you and I. What affects you affects me. There can be no division in our actions or everything is lost. We need to make our way to the docking area on this level. I fear the airlock has already opened, and if so, we must be on our guard. If we cannot reach the Ebon Hawk, then we must find a way to escape on the ship that has docked here. What in space is going on? Who's this? Another Jedi? What, did you guys suddenly start breeding when I wasn't looking? Uh, alright. I'm guessing that Republic ship that just docked isn't carrying friends of yours. 
I hope your talent for understatement is offset by your skill with a blaster. If not, then I fear our time together will be short indeed. Yeah, and I'm also good at running and drinking, Your Majesty. And even if you two aren't big friends of the Republic, that warship's the only way off this station. Good thing we have a clear run to the ship. Threat. Master, perhaps I did not enunciate clearly the last time we spoke. I suggested that you should shut down, stay put, and wait for rescue. Clarification. Assassin and droid is such a crude term, Master. Reserved for Durasteel drones uploaded with only the most archaic kill programs. The function I perform has been referred to as wanton slaughter. I prefer to see it as a means of facilitating communication, resulting in the termination of hostilities. Indignant answer. Master, the miners intended to place you in jeopardy. I could not allow that to take place, so I was forced to negotiate a termination of hostilities. After reprogramming the mining droids to mine any organics they perceived, they began to kill the miners one by one. Then a series of flawlessly timed explosions drove the miners into their dormitories, where I was able to gas them all at once without wasting time hunting them through the mining tunnels. I then administered a large dose of sedatives to the remaining miners in the med bay, enough to kill them, but ensure you slept peacefully. Of course, against my calculations, you awaken from your tank prematurely. I am ashamed by the inconvenience that caused for both of us. Answer? You misunderstand me, Master. Those droids were there to guard you. As I said, I did not anticipate you awakening from the tank. You are quite a hardy specimen for a Jedi. A wrong toe among humans, if you will indulge me the metaphor. Besides, as you proved, Master, such droids could never pose a threat to a Jedi. The droids were custodial in nature. Cleaning the facility of other distractions. Answer. It is beyond the scope of my programming to probe the motivations of my clients, Master. Suffice to say that I am being well compensated for my services. You have been a difficult target to find. You have been wandering the galaxy since the end of the Mandalorian Wars, leaving little record of your passage. It is as if you did not wish to be found by hunters such as myself, or more likely, the Jedi Order. Chiding answer. My programming renders me incapable of revealing the identity of my client, Master. However, I am free to say that my client is wealthy and very interested in possessing the last of the Jedi. Resignation. Very well, Master. If inflicting pain is the only means to resolve this matter, then you leave me no choice.
Something is wrong. I sense no one on board. You sense no one on board? Sense any assassin droids creeping up behind us like last time? Everyone here has been slain, yet there are few signs of battle. No carbon scoring, no blast of fire. This place has been hit by assassins of a different sort. Then what are we doing on this ship? We were better off in the facility. You two are supposed to be Jedi? You two are the worst Jedi I've ever met. If the assassin machine was correct, then we cannot reach the hangar. Be silent. I need some time to think. Look, I don't mean to cast another shadow on this, but even if you could reach the ship you came in on, it wouldn't matter. You'll need the orbital drift charts to clear the Paragus asteroid field, unless you want to have the shortest flight out of Paragus ever recorded. Well, of course they have the asteroid drift charts in their Navi computer. They'd have to. Well, we'd have to get to the bridge. I mean, well, that's the biggest problem I can see. That is a sound plan for the moment. Let us go. Our enemies gather while we wait here. All right, but this won't end well. Trust me. Passengers to Telos. Sir, we've just received an emergency broadcast. A freighter under attack by Sith forces. Can you get an ID on the ship? Yes, sir. We have its ID signature. It's not in our databanks, but its profile suggests some low stock freighter. It says it's being hit hard by a Sith warship. Sir? I'll need to confirm with command before we move to intercept. Report. The Sith warship is empty, sir. We attached an umbilical and sent three strike teams through it, and there's no sign of a crew or its commander. There's no one on board? What about the escape pods? They're still in their berths, sir. This place, it's empty. It's like a ghost ship. Then who was firing at the freighter? We don't know, sir. The freighter's empty, too. We, we did a clean sweep and nothing except a lone T3 unit, badly damaged. Did you still want a tractor beamed to the harbinger? Search the freighter and the warship one more time. If they're clean, then we'll tractor the freighter over. Yes, sir. No idea why the Admiral thought that freighter worth all the effort, but we'll find out. Everyone in the Ebon Hawk was dead, sir. We're starting autopsies within the hour. What about that Sith corpse we retrieved from the warship? We haven't had a chance to fully examine it, sir. He looks human, but he's fractured in several places. Then keep me posted. Something's wrong here, and I want to know where all those Sith on the warship went. We are still experiencing a problem with the communications array, and now maintenance is telling me there's a cascade failure in the weapons. Sir, I just picked up an unusual sound from MedLab. Ah! I have come for the Jedi. What the hell was that? Sir, I don't know. Communications just got cut. Send a security team to MedLab, now! Thank you. 
Are you all right? This was your room? When? We do not have much time. Whatever you intend to do, do it quickly. Something's wrong. 
Ever since we picked up that Sith firefight in the region, crewmen haven't been reporting for their shifts, and I can't reach people on the comm. The strange thing is, I keep feeling like someone's watching us here in the ship, but I can't see anyone. I don't like this. Checking the survivor from the Sith vessel. I'm not sure whether he's alive or dead, or what's even keeping him together. His flesh is cracked and scarred, and I'm registering several thousand fractures in his skeleton, as if each bone was splintered repeatedly over time, then put back together. Judging from the scar tissue, I believe these wounds took place before his death. If so, he must have been in constant pain. I have no idea what's been keeping him together. This is the medical officer. The soldiers sent to the medical bay have just died. I don't know where the subject went. I think he's gone to find more of the crew. With him are Sith. They just appeared right out of thin air, like they were wearing stealth generators, but I think they were always on board. When we stopped to pick up that freighter, they must have come on board the Harbinger. I have no idea how many are on the ship. There could be only a few, or as many as a hundred. And with communications cut off, we can't call for help. I think that thing in the tank was a Sith Lord, alive the whole time, waiting for something to wake him up. More where that came from. Everyone down. Time to even the odds. Everyone down.
Tell me you're joking. We are not going to cross back into the Paragas facility through the fuel line. That's crazy. All right, but I know I'm going to regret this. I sent you, my master. Faint. Weak. Your senses betray you, as you betrayed me. After all that's happened, still you live. You are difficult to kill. For one as limited as you, perhaps. To have fallen so far and learned nothing, that is your failing. The failure is yours. No longer do your whispers crawl within my skull. No longer do I suffer beneath teachings that weaken us. And now you run in search of the Jedi. They are all dead, save one. And one broken Jedi cannot stop the darkness that is to come. Perhaps we shall see. Ah. What's wrong? Are you all right? Damn it, hold on. It's only a little farther. Don't give up on me now. What happened to you? Huh? How do you know that? Look, if she's in pain, then that pain's buying us time we can't afford to waste. Especially if sleeps with vibroblades gets tired of playing with her and decides to use us for practice next. It's a utility droid. Looks like it's been hit with an ion charge and dumped here. from
Take you down to stop. This door's magnetically sealed. I can't believe this. The ship's right out there, and we can't get to it. Huh? What is that piece of junk saying? How can you even understand that noise? All right, well, if he can slice the door open from the terminal above, don't let me stop him.
Quick! We're gonna need some time to fire up the engines. Let's give the laser turret a workout. Let's get out of here! There is no time. We must leave. If they hit us, we're dead. But if they keep missing us, we're dead. It's great odds. Somebody shut that trash compactor up! That'll take out the whole field, the colony, and maybe us. We might not even be able to jump to hyperspace in time. Then we die here. Choose now. Hold on! This is gonna get a little rocky. Well, now that we just killed a planet, maybe one of you can tell me what's going on. Because between assassin droids, a Sith Lord that looks like he sleeps with vibroblades, and being target practice for a Republic warship, I was better off in my cell. The Republic warship was the Harbinger. It was seized on its way to Telos by the Sith. They sought you, Jedi. Yes, to aid in the recovery effort there. Many roads lead to Telos, including ours. Not like we have much of a choice, the Paragus astrogation charts being what they are. It is where we must go, and where the Harbinger was bound before our unfortunate encounter on Paragus. You were difficult to find, but coincidence was on our side. When I learned that you were on the vessel, I knew the Sith would not be far behind. When we intercepted the Harbinger, it was crippled, drifting in space. It was a simple matter to board the vessel and rescue you. Unknown to me, however, the Sith were already on board. Just as we made the jump to hyperspace, they fired upon us, nearly destroying the Ebon Hawk. Whatever occurred on board the Harbinger had rendered you unconscious. Though your thoughts were faint, I was still able to find you sealed in one of the cargo holds. True. But as one trained in the Force, you know that true coincidences are rare. I do not know how the Ebon Hawk was able to make it to per Be silent. We're having a conversation here. Repaired this ship. My eye. Next thing you know, it's gonna claim credit for saving our skins. If that little noisemaker says it repaired the ship once, then it can prove it by doing it again. Go on. Get! Because you are the last of the Jedi. Once you are dead, then they have won. The Sith will dare to accuse you of such. They believe you to be a Jedi Knight, and that is all that matters. The Jedi's civil war destroyed the Jedi. By the war's end, barely a hundred Jedi remained. Many fell in battle, and many more were seduced by Revan's teachings. The Jedi Academy on Dantooine is nothing more than a crater that echoes with the ghosts of dead Jedi. And the Jedi Temple on Coruscant lies empty. The waters in the Room of a Thousand Fountains have fallen still in reverence to the fallen Jedi and those now lost. Many Jedi blamed the teachings of the Jedi Masters for Revan's fall and the civil war that followed. Perhaps, but they are Jedi no longer. 
If the Sith have not already slain them, then they will not help you, nor can you help them. That is not an easy question to answer. This threat is greater than you know, and I do not believe it is a battle that can be fought. Look, enough with the we already. We cannot hope to triumph against them alone. To stop them, you will need weapons, allies, and a teacher. In the end, I fear it may not be enough. You fought in the Mandalorian Wars, and it cost you everything. Are you willing to sacrifice as much again? You are not listening to me. This is not like any field of battle you have ever fought in. Think carefully on your choice. If you choose to fight, if you choose war, it is a path few turn from once the first steps are taken. It carries with it a terrible price. And in the end, you may find you have nothing left to sacrifice. <laughs> like so many Jedi, you hear, but you do not listen. You have much to learn. But we have spoken long enough, and my wound pains me. If you have other questions, find me in the crew quarters. There we will speak more. Hey, don't stop your long, boring rants on my account. I was just getting sleepy-eyed. Also, in private, we will be mercifully free from the opinions of imbeciles and fools. Look, uh, not like I care or anything, but you might want to go check on our passenger, especially with that hand of hers. I think she was barely keeping it together. I'm surprised she's able to stand with all that pain rolling off of her. Are you blind? If I were her, I'd be screaming like a stuck Minoc. Well, I mean, a very strong, manly Minoc. I think she's just too proud to show any weakness. Especially in front of you. In case you hadn't noticed, she won't say two words to me. But she'll talk your ear off any chance she gets. Well, what you think matters to her. A lot. She wants you to respect her. Besides, we haven't got much else to do until Telos. Oh, don't give me that. All it takes is being around people enough to read them. You should try it sometime.
you come for more answers. There is little more left to give. That does not surprise me, any more than you hearing my thoughts when we were apart. The pain, however, was unexpected. If I could, I would have shielded you from it. I do not need your condescension nor your lectures. If anyone needs training and guidance, it is you. I do not know. I fear that the consequences would have been more extreme then the sensation you would feel upon my death might be less than that, though much quicker. Possibly, yes, and I fear it works both ways. I would not wish to test it, nor should you. If you think a connection to one such as yourself gives me any comfort, then you would be wrong. I desire this no more than you do. It seems that at times of stress and pain, if they catch us unawares, then the pain is transmitted between us. I confess its nature eludes me as well, but the bond is strong and its roots run deep. It seems the force flows easily between us. When one of us manipulates the Force to heal or strengthen ourselves, the other is aided as well. A powerful technique indeed, though, as we have noticed, it has its drawbacks. I do not know. The Sith struck more swiftly than I thought, and they will not stop until they have you in their grasp. If you fall, all the galaxy will echo it. It does not matter where we go. It is not the destination that matters. It is the journey. All paths will take us to the end, whatever it may be, and no matter how strongly we fight against it. For now, we are bound for Telos, and that is enough. Before the war, Jedi who failed their training were sent to the fields of Telos to serve the galaxy, not as Jedi Knights, but as farmers and laborers. The destruction of Telos was complete. I doubt any Jedi remain. Yet there may be echoes of their passing. We shall see. Then I am left with nothing more than we had already. My faith in you and your ability to meet what comes. Ask. These Sith... They seek the death of all Jedi, as have all the Sith, since the Jedi Order was first split. I would see to that fool in the cockpit and remind him of our destination. I would not want him attempting to veer from Telos. Watch that one. His thoughts are slippery. I do not trust him, and nor should you. Such a man serves himself first and his allies next. How's our passenger? She's still aging? Yeah, to you, maybe. I don't usually hear much beyond fool and imbecile. She's lucky she's a Jedi, or someone would have killed her years ago. I mean, how old do you think she is? She may have been good looking once, but it takes some hard living to make creases like that. Hey, I just got out of prison. If we had a decent Navi computer, trust me, we'd be dropping out of hyperspace into the Nar Shaddaa Red Sector right now. After spacing that old witch, of course. Oh, no, no, no. Look, look, I respect your privacy. I mean, when have I ever asked you any questions? I mean, besides that one. Well, the astrogation system is voice printed and locked down, but that T3 unit is doubling as the astrogation system. 
You can try to plot a course, but without that T3 unit to perform the calculations, you'd probably plow us into a star. As long as he doesn't steal the ship, we should be all right. Uh, not much. Except sounds like it was after you. As far as I'm concerned, you handled that pretty well. No more droid, no more problem. Beats me. Sounds like you're pretty popular. If it was built to hunt you down, that is. Could have been around before you even appeared on the scene. <laughs> yeah, well, you got me there. Look, droids, I don't trust them. That one we fought, some of them are built like that. Others just, well, break. In the head. Sometimes conflicting orders cause it. Give a droid too much data or tell it to do something it can't do, it'll crack their behavior module in half. Others just don't get memory wipes and they start going crazy. Speaking of which, I think that little trash compactor's long overdue. <laughs> Trust me, droids were made to break. And most of all, they're predictable and stupid. So, what happened? Don't give me that. There were plenty of times back on Paragus where a lightsaber would have been helpful. So where's yours? Oh yeah? I thought a Jedi was supposed to be married to their lightsaber. Guess I heard wrong. Were you a single hilt or one of those double-bladed Jedi? Huh. I hear the twin blades are harder to master, but they can make enemies stampede over each other running for cover. A lot of Jedi in the Mandalorian Wars use double-bladed sabers. A more aggressive blade gives you more slaughter per swing. Hey, you didn't go red, did you? Great. Maybe you and that Sith Lord can have a party after we're dead. Must have been something. Sure be nice to have it now. Might make those Sith think twice before coming after us. All right, forget I said anything. Like I said before, you can check our course on the galaxy map if you want. It's on the wall behind you. sound of that. If they think we caused the explosion... Uh-oh. Here comes the welcoming party. They may not know what happened, so don't blow it. I'm Lieutenant Grin, Telo Security Force. I'm under orders to take you into custody in regards to the destruction of the Paragas mining facility. That as it may be, the circumstances of your arrival are suspect at best. Due to the nature of the investigation, I have no specific timetable to offer you. In the meantime, your ship and any droids will have to be given over for safekeeping. Yes, that includes you. You are a droid, so you will be detained. In addition, we will have to take your personal arms and armor until the completion of our inquiry. You are the only witnesses of the mining facility's destruction. Thus, it is necessary for us to keep you under surveillance until we have a better idea of what happened. If you are cleared of any involvement, your personal effects will be returned to you. You will be held briefly in the TSF station until living quarters can be arranged, at which point you will be placed under house arrest. Do you understand? Look around you. Even if you manage to overcome all of us, Bay Control could simply open the MagCon field and shoot you into space. So, let's not do this the hard way. Given your position, it would be a good idea if you took a more accommodating tone. My men will relieve you of your arms and armor. Follow me. Tell me I'm not going to jail again. be held here briefly. Living quarters are being arranged for you and your companions as we speak. Someone will return shortly to escort you to an apartment in Residential Module 082. As I said, this is only temporary while other arrangements are made. I'm sorry, but you'll just have to bear with us until then.
Well, we might be here for a while. Might as well get comfortable. Someone is coming. So this is the last of the Jedi. I must admit I'm a little disappointed. Doubtful, though at least it appears you have some spirit. The Exchange has a bounty on Jedi, you know. You're worth quite a bit of money. The Exchange, huh? <laughs> I'm pretty sure some two-bit pistol jockey like yourself isn't one of them. Hey, I'm more than skilled enough to work for the Exchange. You bounty hunters couldn't even win a fair fight. You're the cheapest, most worthless mercenary scum in the galaxy. I'd hire a Mandalorian over your filth in a second. No Mandalorian could match my skills. No Mandalorian could have been clever enough to infiltrate this station, taking the identity of one of the guards, then... Then what? Overloaded our force cage fields and made it look like an accident? You probably don't even have the guts to fight me. <laughs> Pathetic. Don't think overloading your cages had not occurred to me. You're wanted alive, but I doubt anyone will care as long as I bring them your corpse. The security cameras have mysteriously shorted out. There will be no witnesses to your escape attempt, during which I'll have been forced to kill you. By the time the TSF realize I'm not one of them, I will be far from this place. Come, Jedi. It is time to die. Hey, leave him alone. You want to fight? Then try me if you've got the guts. You have goaded me once, and you shall not do so twice. But I shall dispose of all of you eventually. And an old woman, a fool, and a broken Jedi are no match to my skills. The security cameras are... What? What's going on here? Man down! Quick! Call a medic! All right, Jedi. I want you to back up slowly. Hands in front of you. Into the Force cage. Cooperate, and we won't have to gun you down. Come on, Lieutenant. They've already killed... Uh, oh. Who is that? Is that Batu Rem? Rem's no assassin. Batu Rem is on leave. He shouldn't even be on the station. This man isn't him. We've arranged for an apartment in Residential Module 082. You'll stay there under house arrest until our investigation of the Paragras matter is complete. You'll be under TSF protection. I'll personally clear any visitors to your quarters, and we'll investigate this incident to the best of our ability. Officer, let Lieutenant Yima a report of this incident. She'll look into this. The rest of you come with me. We'll escort you to the apartment in 082 immediately. These will serve as your quarters for the duration of your house arrest. Two officers will be stationed outside at all times. Again, I'll clear any visitors. There won't be another incident. But just to be on the safe side, why don't you leave us a blaster or two? Let's go. This isn't good. We've got to get off this station. What do you think the TSF is going to find at Paragus? That could bring the Sith... You know what? Forget it. As long as we're trapped here, it doesn't matter. We cannot stay in any one place too long. But our path has brought us here for a reason. I must meditate on this. In the meantime, we should rest. Yeah, you go ahead and meditate. As for me, I could use some sleep. representing the Ithorian planet restoration interests on Telos. Lieutenant Gren's cleared him if you'd like to speak with him. He says he wishes to speak with you on behalf of Chodo Habat. That's all he will say. Very well. I'll let him in now. Yeah. 
Perhaps Chodahabat should turn his eyes to his own people, if they truly suffer so. Now perhaps we will be able to rest uninterrupted. Assistant, no doubt informed you, I am John Aluso. I understand that you were approached by Nathorian earlier. Doubtless he tried to obtain your help, attempting to purchase it with imposed guilt and veiled threats. Yes, they play at being downtrodden innocents, having come to you because of these Jedi rumors that are going around the station. Oh, I'm sure you've heard that you're a Jedi. One of the last, wanted by the Exchange, and who knows how many other organizations, for reasons good or ill. But that's of no interest to me. The Jedi, and your standing with them, have no bearing on this discussion. I believe you're a person of influence, someone I'd like on my side, rather than aiding the Athorians, whose quasi-mysticism and bumbling foolishness is standing in the way of progress and profit. I'm not asking for your help, though. I'm offering you a job. Work for Zerka and be handsomely rewarded. You'd be helping yourself. If you're interested, please visit our offices here in Residential 082. B44 will know what to do when you arrive. I'd rather discuss that in person. I'll be more than happy to answer any and all questions when you visit our offices. Excellent. Good luck with that messy investigation, and I hope to see you shortly. We should get back to bed. Whenever they decide to release us, we should get going immediately. Explain something to me. I do not have the years required, nor the desire to indulge you. If he served in the war, well, Jedi are supposed to be tough, capable. Yes, and what are they without the Force? Take the greatest Jedi Knight, strip away the Force, and what remains? They rely on it, depend on it more than they know. Watch as one tries to hold a blaster, as they try to hold a lightsaber, and you will see nothing more than a woman, or a man, a child. But to lose so much, I guess I didn't realize how much they relied on it. Do not be surprised. In many ways, even you are more capable than a Jedi. You could survive where they could not simply because you do not hear the Force as they do. It is irony of a sort, and it is why I tolerate your presence now. But such a loss of ability for a Jedi, it seems so extreme. He has been gone from war some time. 
it is conflict that strengthens us, and isolation that weakens us, erodes us. Add to that that he turned away from war, did all that he could to forget it, and the last piece clicks into place. But we have spoken enough of this, and we do him a disservice by not speaking of this while he is present. I've come to inform you that the Talosian government has completed its inspection of what's left of the Paragas facility. It appears that the Harbinger had indeed been present, though it was gone when our ships arrived and was responsible for the station's destruction. Logs recovered from the facility's wreckage indicated that the miners perished as a result of sabotage, which began while you and your companions were either incapacitated or incarcerated. As such, you are to be released from house arrest. However, the Republic is sending its own ship. They have insisted that you remain on station for the duration of their search. To further investigate the station's destruction and search for their missing ship, the Harbinger. The sojourn is already en route, likely not more than a few standard days. Feel free to use these quarters during your stay. The vessel's IND is complete. Please visit the TSF station in Entertainment Module 081 to complete the necessary paperwork at the front desk. The Evan Hawk should be transferred from the impound docks by the time you're free to leave. After filling out the paperwork, it'll be transferred with your ship along with your confiscated weapons and armor. Well, now what? We can't just stick around. We need to find a way off the station, whether it's the Evan Hawk or some other ship. We could hit Nar Shada, maybe. If you've got people coming after you, it's where you go to get lost in the crowd. Hey, everyone needs to get lost once in a while. Get away from something, you know? It's no big deal. It is difficult to say. I feel we came to Telos for a reason, but we may have spent too much time here already. Even if the Harbinger was destroyed at Paragus, more Sith could already be on their way. Still, there is a chance we might learn of other Jedi here, on the planet's surface. Jedi who might help us restore your abilities, or sever the link between us. Well, what do you think? It is unlikely, but we shall see.
Nita manta. Tovre kun mili wosa slima po. Kavadumpa mun suru kupla liya wa. Bo tong hite mo si jokia. Kawana bota yunta tanga kinamatura. Ejikonu ta yun yuna palawalit basha makaranwa niro. Bariki, mangra, do, cha, screen, do, pat, slim. Da hupa, bo sakurata, go, juju, to yoke. Kavadumpa munsuru kupla liya wa. Bo. Watakra tungji, mularayi mulakri. Muliwrawa, iberendi adia wi. Hey, what are you doing in my apartment? Looked like you were doing more than just looking. Yes, I will. I'm not going to let you push me around in my own place. Now get out of here before I get the TSF to throw you in jail. Why not? You didn't seem to have a problem taking everything else. What? You are crazy! Our psychotic urge is all that drives you. I don't know what even came over me. One second we were just standing there talking and then... I am not speaking to you, fool. Be silent. When one of us is committed to battle, then all of us are committed. We must stand together. I would examine the situation as a whole, all of its ties to the Force, and then decide which string to pull, not sever them all at once. Such crude methods grant you nothing. Perhaps. And perhaps in the future you will remember such a lesson. There are many paths in life, and some are short and empty. Oh, I grow weary of this. Perhaps time will allow my words to take root, if your common sense will not permit it. Good day. I am B4D4, Administrative Assistant for Zerka Corporation's Citadel Station Branch. How may I help you? Of course. She has been expecting you. You will find her through the door and down the hall on the right. I hear Asgol's been paying mercenaries to go to Dantooine. Can't figure out why anyone would need mercenaries for a planet full of farmers. I'm glad that Zerka put a capable woman in charge of the project. I've got every faith she'll do things right. I knew you'd come eventually. I'm confident that we will be able to reach a working agreement satisfactory to both you and I. But where are my manners? On behalf of Zerka Corporation, I would like to be the first to welcome you to Telos.
Our primary concern on Citadel Station is the restoration of Telos's surface. The Republic is eager to revitalize Telos as a benchmark for other such efforts in other systems. While a generous amount of credits has been budgeted to Telos, the bumbling of Chodo Hobat and his Athorians has squandered away much of these resources. For a project of this size, judicious planning and thrifty spending of resources is a necessity, something Habat fails to understand. Nonetheless, Zerka remains optimistic. There are many jobs we need assistance with. For someone with your experience, you would be well compensated. Very well then. I hope to see you soon. Welcome back. Up uh, while it for a project. No. Zerka has been managing the restoration project without the assistance of a droid for some time now. Habat has commandeered the new droid intelligence that was to be delivered to the station. I'd like for you to meet the shipment at Dock Module 126, Shuttle Bay 2, and bring the droid back here before the Athorians foul things up again. Don't worry, Zerka wouldn't expect you to work unpaid and won't subject you to veiled threats and coercion like Habat. For your help in this matter, you will be paid the sum of 250 credits. You're right, 300 credits would be much more reasonable. Very well then.
Your speech is filled with maybes and perhaps. You are bold to make promises of healing while the world under your care burns and dies. Consider carefully. You have already begun to heal to feel the force again. If so, then the offer is worthless. <laughs> Hello there, and greetings from Isis and Onderon. I'm a diplomat from Queen Talia on Onderon. My stay was supposed to have been shorter, but the contract disputes over the restoration project have prolonged it. The Athorians negotiated the export of flora and fauna from Onderon, but with their disagreements with Zerka, the status of our arrangement is in the air. has really inflated prices here in the Outer Rim. The medical
TSF isn't cut out to handle all the problems on Citadel Station right now. We need Republic assistance. They want to susi to mukara tonoranga ma in wamagro in wamagro. Tere wana jun konata delo era guno antuna. Da erinto ron kawere kare papa nala ranchinga. Tere ache a wemeno toto. That didn't look like an accident to me or my associate here. It looked like you wanted to make a fool of him. Chara nana gundoso remine ake lorak to guru katpada. Not even an apology. That won't do at all. This Sulliston here had a few things to say about us that we didn't take to so well. We're just trying to work out our differences. That was the plan, Chief. Now why don't you run along? This doesn't involve you. Care for a game? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm... Ah, so you must be the Jedi everyone's been whispering about. No more trouble with the TSF, I hope? Perhaps you don't know who I am? You haven't been on Citadel Station long, have you? Let me introduce myself. I'm Benok, the man in charge of Lopak Slusk's protection. You do know who Lopak Slusk is, don't you? The two gentlemen with me are Matu and Nahata, Slusk's finest men. Other than me, of course. Oh, leave the man alone, Benok. I bet he'd come out on top if you fought. Now, Luxa, uh, I meant no disrespect. You're probably Slusk's strongest woman. It's your skin, Benok. Just warning you. Slus could easily replace you. We were just leading anyway. Come on. Wise man. Hello there. Hmm. Fresh blood at the cantina. Enjoy. Your drinks are on me. We should talk later if you're asking me that handsome you're better off not knowing tell you what you just enjoy yourself and if in the future we have business together you can come back and we'll have a little chat hello there hmm it's always the same story I don't understand your problem with the Republic. It's not like Onderon hasn't benefited from joining. It was one of the darkest days in our history. Talia sold Onderon to the Republic, and what did we receive in return? Nothing. In exchange for the blood of our soldiers, the prosperity of Isis has been stripped to decorate dead planets like this. Look, if it weren't for the Republic, you'd all be speaking Mandalorian by now. And because we accepted the Republic's aid, we should be indentured to them forever? You make it sound like the Republic turned Onderon into a prison colony. Perhaps. Only that the Republic did not even conquer us. Our own betrayed us and allowed the Republic to take what it would. Uh, 
Is there something I can do for you? What's there to say? We're the only corporation with a branch on Citadel State. If this whole Telos thing pans out, we could be in a great position. If Lorso doesn't screw it up, that is. Yeah, it's a long shot considering the state of the Republic these days. Still, if it works out, the Republic may decide to start restoring other war-torn worlds. If we can integrate ourselves into the process, Zerka stands to make a tidy profit in the future. Quite a few ways. As part of the Republic contract rewarded for a planet like Telos, Zerka is allowed to use the planet's natural resources to help fund and support the project. On top of that, the Senate's easy to negotiate with. They're liberal with the amounts of credits they throw around. And, of course, new planets mean new markets for Zerka products. All in all... Good, Jenna Lorso. That woman's a... Ugh. Look, forget it. She's my superior, and that's that. She'll screw up soon enough, and then I'll move in for the kill. She's got her hands in too many dirty little... <laughs> um, whoa, I, I think I've had a few too many drinks. I shouldn't be talking to you about this stuff. Just forget it. TSF station. How may I be of assistance? I will call up the appropriate information now. One moment. Searching. One moment. I regret to inform you that the Ebon Hawk is gone. The TSF believes it was stolen and is currently investigating. It seems the Ebon Hawk was transferred to Telos's surface instead of an impound dock. However, both the requester and the point of delivery are unknown. In addition, the vessel is not showing up at any government-sanctioned landing site. I would conjecture that it has been stolen, and the TSF records have been illegally accessed and modified. I knew it! That stupid T3 unit stole our ship! It's probably joyriding through the system right now, laughing at us, laughing at me! That is unlikely. While your utility droid is not accounted for, numerous satellites track all incoming and outgoing vessels. There is no record of the Ebon Hawk leaving the system. Wait! You're saying the ship's actually somewhere on Telos' surface? I don't understand. Telos' atmosphere is highly corrosive outside the shielded restoration zones. Where else could someone land safely? I'm sorry. I'm afraid that's all the information I have for you. Of course, the quarters in Residential Module OE2 will remain yours until the situation is resolved. There is nothing I can do. I am sorry for what has happened, but the situation is beyond me. I cannot legally supply you with another vessel. Not beyond investigating the matter and extending our offer of free room and board. Fortunately, your possessions were kept in the armory and were uncompromised. I will open the door for you so that you may retrieve them. You will find them in the security lockers. There was a query regarding the Ebon Hawk's ID signature sent from the Paradis. It is likely that this information was removed when the vessel's transfer request was modified.
I'm glad you're here. I'm the only man the TSF could spare, and frankly, I got a bad feeling about this. Excuse me, Master, but it seems we have some additional visitors. Master, lead the way. 
I don't understand. I was just told that I would be taken to the Athorian compound. I was to be given to an Athorian, Chodo Habat. My most recent self-diagnostic found no such operating malfunctions. However, it does seem possible that I was somewhat damaged during my transport and the ensuing fight here in the hangar. I will trust your judgment, Master. Lead the way. Excellent. I see my faith in your abilities was well founded. We'd like to get this droid into service as quickly as possible. Opo Chano? Greetings, Executive Lorso. How may I be of service? Just plug into the mainframe and get to work. Right away, Executive Lorso. You may go, Chano. I'm sure you have many repairs to see to. Now then, your payment. Here are the credits agreed upon. There is another task I would like you to perform for me. You proved that you can handle yourself quite well in dealing with the retrieval of the droid intelligence. The next matter of business I would ask of you is much more delicate. When we first set up here on Citadel Station, the exchange was already quite well established. Lopax Slusk had more influence over business matters than the Telosian government. To ensure our success, we involved ourselves with the exchange. And now that we have a handle on the situation, we wish to unentangle ourselves from them. If you know anything about the exchange, then you know that they would not take this well. Slusk is loath to have his hands removed from any business on the station. So, a more direct method will have to be taken. To put it plainly, I want you to kill Lopak Slusk. I realize it won't be an easy task, as Slusk keeps himself well protected. You would be well compensated for it. I have a feeling they won't just let you march into their offices. Laksa is Slusk's second. She spends little time in the exchange offices, though, preferring the cantina in the urban module. She might be able to set up an appointment. Good. I will be happy to continue our working relationship. Hello there. Hmm. Fresh blood at the canteen. Hand it over and let me take a look at it. Hmm. I can't say I recognize it. It's good work, though. Whoever fixed it up knew what they were doing. It's certainly not mine, I can tell you that. Is that all? What a disappointment. Yes, what you were told is true. I can arrange meetings with Lopax Lusk. But you'd have to give me a good reason. Keep your credits. It's nothing as mundane as that. Look, I heard about your little adventure down at the docks. I could use someone capable like yourself to do some work for me. Just consider it a little test. I'm a reasonable woman. Help me, and I'll help you. 
Good. Rejection is just one of the many things I don't take too kindly. I need to make a transaction with two bounty hunters that have recently arrived on Citadel Station. Very simple. Weapons for credits. I want you to go in my place as my representative. They're being very careful, and I'd rather not be bothered. Here. This case holds the weapons they'd like to purchase. I was not told the place of the meeting, only to go to the medical unit in Residential 082 and await a communication. They'd be very foolish if that was their plan. I'd hope they knew better than to try and cross the exchange. In exchange for the weapons case? 500. You'll receive your cut from that amount. And I'll be waiting. So, you're back. I'm then... She's got her hands in two... Oh, so you're the one she's got running all of her dirty little projects. I don't know how you do it. You must need her for something badly. I've been trying to get her removed for months now, but nothing seems to work. I might need to resort to more drastic measures. Uh, hey, uh, you know, I shouldn't be talking about this. Forget I said anything. You, you must have good reason if you're helping her, so just be careful. If she decides you've outlived your usefulness, let's just say you should watch yourself. So, you're... Do you really think it's a good idea to be working for the Exchange? Is it really worth it, though? I don't know if we can trust Lorso, either. I mean, it takes something to ally yourself with the Exchange. 
As long as you're ready for it. But I hope it doesn't come to that. Hello there. Be careful. I would not put too much trust in the exchange. Even if Luxor is not deceiving you, their dealings will unlikely be safe. It may be a good idea to prepare yourself for a confrontation.
Still in one piece? I heard something about a violent disturbance in the residential module. Nothing to do with you, I hope. Odd. Well, at least the transaction was successful. It was successful, wasn't it? I see. Well, I suppose you earned it. Very well. Keep them. I've got some more work for you, if you're up for it. A matter of a rather sizable debt owed to the exchange. I trust you. Why else would I request your help with exchange business? Precisely. Getting right to the point. I like that. Opo Chano, one of Circa's droid technicians, owes a sizable gambling debt from his last stay on Nar Shadda. We've been patient with him, but we can only let a debt go unpaid for so long. Oh, I know how that works. Gambler's down on his luck, almost out of credits and doesn't know what to do, then bam, there's a credit line all ready to go. His luck's gotta change, right? So he makes a few more rounds of Pazak, and he's desperate now, desperate to win, little knowing that the decks stacked against him in those 20s are never coming. Next thing he knows, his luck still hasn't changed. In fact, the only thing that has changed is now he owes his life's worth to some exchange boss, and he's getting intimate with a stimmed-up goon with a fist the size of his face. Hey, that's the business. I can't be responsible for your lack of control. Lack of control? Why... Ah, oh, never mind. You'll find Chano in Unit B2, Residential 082. Tell him his time is up, and we want those credits. Then rough him up, put some fear into him. Make sure he understands the situation. Look, I don't care how you get the credits out of him. Just take care of it. Good. I knew I could count on you. Donos Imaragith, Wana Donos Imaragith, Wana Rak Tonoranga Manak Tarana Mosibu and Dasarans, Kramer Suku Tarana Mosibu and Dasarans. Loka kama ran endoso ran we no chabi. What? What just happened? One minute we're just talking and then they just lost control. It's like this impulse just came over me. I couldn't stop myself. Next time, warn me. If you're out to kill someone, don't surprise me like that.
you came. I do not know for sure, other than that they have made demands of Executive Orso, threatening to kill everyone if they are not met. I can only assume that they want credits, or some other sort of monetary reward. CSD attempted to fight back, but they were quickly neutralized by the body of mercenaries. We could desperately use your help. I'm afraid we are unprepared to deal with this threat, with such a large concentration of mercenaries on station. Entertainment? I will never understand you humans, but nonetheless, I thank you for your help. So, we early on in a position to take such a negative view to our demands. We're not asking for much. If you agree to our terms, we'll make sure that Zerka never even hears of this. I will not be badgered by you. Sir, we have some visitors. Ah, there you are. I was wondering when you'd arrive. I'm disappointed, Lorso. In the end, this was the best that you could do? Ah, well. I always was one for aggressive negotiations. I must say, you have wonderful timing. I had my reservations about some of these mercenaries, but I had hoped that CSD would be able to keep them in line. It appears that I was wrong. Mercenaries stay here until they are transported to the surface. The restoration zones have proven to be extremely dangerous due to the deadly creatures imported by the Athorians. Of course. I understand the importance of keeping a valuable asset like yourself happy. I believe these credits should be sufficient to repay you for your work. You are also welcome to anything found on the mercenaries' bodies as your own. They carried no Zerka issue equipment anyway. Now, if you'll excuse me, this unfortunate turn of events has generated quite a bit more work for me, and I should be getting to it.
Welcome back. Corin Fault. Ah, that one. You don't say. I'll be honest with you, that one will never amount to anything. Can't see past his jealousy. Let's it consume him. If he could redirect to fuel his ambition, well, yes, then I'd be worried. But all the same, that sort of sentiment is dangerous if it's spread to the rest of my workers. Perhaps I should take steps to take care of this mutinous sentiment while it is still early. Glad to hear it. I've no tolerance for people who don't have the stomach for business. However, I want him dealt with quietly, officially. That's what I'll need your help for. If I'm to have Fault arrested by CSD, I still need some sort of proof that he seeks to undermine our operation. I feel that would raise too many eyebrows. While I'm in favor of an expedient solution, I must put great store in discretion. That is an excellent suggestion. Get him to spill his plans to you, then bring me the evidence. I will then have him taken in by CSD and send him along to Zerka Internal Investigations and I'll have him out of my hair. You would be putting yourself somewhat at risk, true enough. 600 credits then.
I have felt a tumor, Lord. A disturbance in the Force. It was difficult to make out, my Lord. At first it was such a quiet thing. I did not notice it. But now I wonder as if it has always been there. I merely could not hear it before. The sound built so slowly. Yet when you listen for it, you can make out the strains, even over the background life of the universe. Do you feel it is a... You... You are the darkness in which all life dies, my lord. All life exists to feed your power and my life. My life is yours. I beg you, please, let me die. Yes, this disturbance echoes through the Force. I can follow it to its source and bring it to you. I will leave at once, my lord. Oh, you're back. What do you want to know? Why would you want that? Believe me, I'm familiar with that. All right, I'll tell you what my plan is. What's the harm? I'm trying to get access to files on the Zerka mainframe. I'm sure I could find evidence of Lorso's dirty dealings. Failing that, I considered speaking with Luxa about the increased profit possibilities if someone replaced Lorso as Zerka executive. Someone like me, for example. I'll do anything to get that woman fired. Bribes, forged records, anything. Thank you, I'd appreciate that. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'd like to not think about that woman for a while. You've returned. Did Chano cough up those credits? You killed him? And how do you expect us to be able to collect credits from a corpse? True, he likely had a good supply of equipment and droid parts that he was to repair or use for repairs. We could sell them off and possibly recoup more than the 2,500 credits owed to us. Before you say anything, yes, I will arrange the meeting with Slusk that you desired. But first, I was wondering if you might listen to a proposition. A business proposition, given your obvious abilities. Let me ask you an honest question. This meeting with Slusk you want, 
It's because Lorso's fed up with him, right? I feel the same way about Slusk. And I think it's time someone solved the problem. I think that maybe our interests lie in the same direction. What, besides his being your typically slimy Quarren? Slusk works for Goto, out of Narshada. Now this Goto, he's rigid, ruthlessly efficient, and all he sees are numbers. Goto keeps the squid around because he maintains a steady flow of income. It is only half of what I know it could be. I should be the Citadel's boss, but Goto doesn't allow breaks in the chain of command. I can't go over Lopak Slusk's head, so I've got to take care of him myself, and I want your help. I can get you into the exchange suites in Residential 082. They're west of the entrance. More than a few of the guards are in my pocket, so there shouldn't be too much resistance inside. When Slusk's out of the way, I'll clear up this bounty matter and get your ship back. Deal? We'll speak again, then. Best of luck, handsome. Lopak Slusk is waiting, handsome. Come back when you do. Rama, 
possible in the surrounds. Kramer su- Mokka kama ran in doso ran we no chabi. Do ran tamana so butonos emaragith. Wana rakora chi drunka. Mokka kama ran in doso ran we no donos emaragith. Wana rakora chi drunka sa in chobin sasha. Mokka kama ran in doso ran we no chabi. Do ran tamana sobu. Do maba be want to susin to mukarata. To ask for tonatada be maba chokto. To renibu into rata sis. Parama. Welcome back. Excellent. Let me hear what you have. Let me hear the recording first. I'll do anything to get that woman fired. Bribes, forged records, anything. That's proof enough for me. I will dispatch CSD to take him into custody immediately. Now for your payment. Here are the credits we agreed upon. Dissension is always a great danger in the workplace. Keeping it culled and the troublemakers out of sight makes my job much easier. Welcome back. Hey, what are you doing there? You must think I was born yesterday. Now, step towards me and keep your hands where I can see them. I'm going to place you under arrest and take you down to the TSF station for further questioning. Come with me peacefully, and I won't need to cause you any harm. We'll see about that. Ran in Dosso, ran with no chabi. Do run 
Donos Emaragith, Wanara Gorachi Drumka Sa Inchobin Sasha. Moka Kamaran Endoso Ran with No Chabi. Donos Emaragith, Wanara Gorachi Drumka Sa Inchobin Sasha. Machabi Doko, Donaranga Machabi Doko, Donaranga Manachunga. The Ranam of Sibu and Dasarans, Crema Sukun Ratungala, Chawi Moju, Bo Maba Bay want to Susi to Mukarata, to Astrak Tonatada Bear Maba, Donos Emaragith, Wanara Gorachi Drumka Sa in Chobin Sasha. Machabi Doko, Tonoranga Man. About time you showed up, Saman. Get your things loaded. I'm already behind schedule. You don't understand how it is with Zerka. When the process stops working like clockwork, questions get asked. And we don't want questions asked, do we? The faster we get this loaded, the faster we can get it out of here. Stop right there. You are all under arrest. And those goods will be taken as evidence. And you! We're curious about your involvement as well. Quit your protestation, Samhan. We all know your little secret. The circumstances have changed. You will be coming with us. So what do you have to say for yourself? Well then, after we place you under arrest, you'll have plenty of time to corroborate that story with Lieutenant Gren. Now, you'll be coming with us. The Ranam of Sibu and Asarans, Crema Sukun Ratungala, Chawi Moju. Rama Kawana Kojokinsa in Wamagro, May Rangana Noruta, Moka Kamaran in Doso Ran with no Chabi, Du Rantamana Donos Emaragith, Wanara Gorachi Drumka, Bo Maba Bay want to Susi to Mukarata, to Astrak Tonatada Bay Maba Donos Emaragith, Wanara Gorachi Drumka. I'm terribly sorry, but there must be some sort of mistake. I don't have a record of your appointment. Are you certain it was for today? Well, if... very well. What was your name? Excuse me, Lopax Lusk's appointment has arrived. Please open the inner door. There you are. Have a good day.
With pleasure. I may have had a hand in this, yes. Not as soon as you might think. Maybe Nar Shada isn't such a good idea after all. Did we just see what happened? The Exchange is one of the most powerful groups on the Smuggler's Moon. If this Goto wants you so badly, it'd probably be a good idea not to show up on his doorstep, wouldn't you say? Not to mention, I'm sure Lopak Slusk has friends on Nar Shada that won't be happy to hear he's gone. Yeah, you're right. We'll cross that bridge when we get to it.
Please don't kill me. I'm only doing my job. Your brutality grows tiresome. I will arrange transport to one of the restoration zones on the planet's surface. You will be safe from the TSF there. For the services you have offered to Zaka, you will also be reimbursed. I trust that is an agreeable arrangement. And, if memory serves me correctly, it wasn't too long ago that you were wanted by Gren and his cronies. Consider the charges against them cleared as well. They committed no crime against this station. The TSF had no reason to arrest them. I have just finalized a working agreement with these two gentlemen, Zerka's two newest contract employees. Be reasonable. I have given them a contract and my word that they will be safe from TSF persecution. Gentlemen, would you excuse us? Welcome back. Good. I'll be sure to send some of my men in to make sure they don't have the opportunity to reorganize. You've done well. Yes, of course. I will provide a shuttle for you to land on the planet's surface, as per our agreement. The shuttle will be arriving shortly in Docking Bay 3, Dock Module 126. I have informed Bay Control that you are on your way. Again, Zerka thanks you for your help, and hopes that we may continue our working relationship in the future. Donos Emeragith, what a rakorachi drum ta sa in chobin sasha. Donos Emeragith, what a rakorachi drum ta sa in chobin sasha. Dosimana, the ranamosibu and asarans, crema sunkun. Admiral Seed of the Sojourn. Welcome to Telos, Admiral. This is Lieutenant Gren of the Telos Security Force. We've been expecting you for some time now. We were unavoidably detained on our way here. I hope it hasn't caused too large of a problem. Only a minor inconvenience, Admiral. We were happy to be of assistance. I think you'll be less happy when you hear what I have to say next, Admiral. What is it? The witness from the Paragus incident escaped the station. We're not sure how he managed it, but we're trying to recover him. I see. Don't concern yourself with it too much, Lieutenant. The Republic had decided to not detain the Exile anyways. The Exile? Then... However, I expect that these security failings will be seen to and fixed, Lieutenant. We're on them right now, Admiral. I'm uploading your approach vector to you now. Gren out. 
Everyone hold on tight. We should be putting down in a few seconds. Grab onto something. This is about to get rough real fast. Good to have you back, General. Easy now. You survived one spectacular crash. Lucky I was here to pull you and your friends out of that shuttle, or you'd be more than a little crispy. But it's only fair. I owe you more than one, General. You must be in shock from the crash. Have to expect some long-term memory loss from that. Too bad he's not a droid, huh? We can't all be that lucky. I'll humor you, General. I was one of the Iridonian Mechanic Corps that was at Malachor. Bayadur. I can see how you'd forget me, being that I was the only one. Don't think too hard. I'd rather not talk about the war, if we could. We all went through some tough times after Malachor, and maybe we all did a little forgetting. Guess that's one thing we've got better than boys. They can't forget anything. But then you give them a memory wipe and they forget for good. They'll be fine. The pilot's more or less unharmed, and the old lady, well, she's tougher than she looks. You know, I never thought I'd see you again, General. Galaxy's a big place, and this is the last place I thought I'd bump into you. So I have to ask, just what are you doing here? Well, if your ship's in as bad shape as this one, I don't think you're gonna have much luck. <clears throat> well, this is familiar. Feels like my last time on Telos. Crashed the shuttle that time, too? No, Pazak. That was not the most pleasant landing I've endured. Next time, we should perhaps seek out a more reputable pilot. You're welcome, Kreia. You know, if I weren't such a crack pilot, we could have hit the shield wall or one of those rock faces. Yes, our current situation is a vast improvement. Beats me. No one's supposed to be here but a Zerka research team. I can't say they'd be happy to see us, but shooting us down? I can't imagine Zerka having us shot down by a bunch of scientists either. You know, I caught a glimpse of what looked like an AD tower when we flew over the compound. Maybe they're doing something they shouldn't be. I've seen pirate bases with the same sort of setup. I can help you find it. I have access to the shield network. I came hoping to repair whatever damage your shuttle took, but not even I can fix that wreck. We'll have to get back to the compound. It's the old Athorian research station, turned into a salvage team staging area. It won't be an easy hunt. First, there's a mercenary pursuit team looking for me. If Zerka secure the compound, there could be a lot of them out there. Second, there's all the Canucks. You need my help. How else are you going to get into the S.H.I.E.L.D. network? Just the trouble we need, some crazy Zabrak with a squad of mercs on his tail. Why, can't handle a few mercs? Don't worry, I can do the heavy lifting. That's the plan. came from
Mercenaries, right where we need to go. That sentry droid probably spotted us already. Great. They were probably looking for me when they saw your shuttle go down. We could try handing the Zabrak over. You know, bargaining chip? Who do you think shot you down in the first place? Good point. Forget I said anything. Another sentry droid. The mercenaries must be using them to locate us. There's probably another patrol nearby. More with that. Wait, bounty? Why is there a bounty on your head? Dakosha ni chotoro, punta chakorzo waman, gotashjuna rananasha ni, visitisa cholo, kuma sone, machido pachawa chanamaba. I don't think so. You'll have to come through me if you want to take the general. Rakichi sa, donasinto norokipa shakani. Where would that came from? Time to even the odds. I always feel a sense of calm when I walk the surface of Telos. The Athorians are truly amazing in their work. Amazing at wasting the Republic's credits, maybe. But now that you mention it, I think I feel it too. Like a weight's been lifted off my shoulders. Quiet. There's a large mercenary patrol up ahead. If we move carefully along the perimeter, we may be able to get by without their spotting us. We could cross along the shore, or head along the cliffs to the south. Lord. All right. Let's do it. Time to 
take you down to size. More where that came from. Time to take you down to size. Let me handle this. Let's get this over with. More where that came from. I hear you. Let's go. you down to size. caches. We should be on the lookout for more of these. They could come in handy.
Looks like a minefield up ahead. We can try and pick our way through, or take some time to disarm some and clear a path. What's going on? spotted again and that means more mercenaries I don't know about you guys but I just can't wait we're close to the compound so they'll be getting ready for us I think we're close to the compound too that means this entire place is probably on alert so much for sneaking in time to take you down to size <laughs> Size. There's the... 
There's the landing pad. There should be a computer terminal I can access from there. Looks like we're gonna have to fight our way there, though. Why do you say that? What do we have here? The Jedi. Saves us the trouble of looking for you. Corrin Fault did say you were dangerous. Maybe he does know what he's talking about. We'll see. You may have caught a few of my boys off guard, but let's see how you fight now, Jedi. Attack! Let me handle this. Yeah! 
Hopefully I'll be able to access the shield network from this console. Good, it's functional, and my passcodes still work. Now let's find your ship. The TSF probably thinks the ship was put down in the wastes, but they don't know the planet as well as I do. Telos's atmosphere has been turned into acidic vapor. Landing a ship in the wastes would be like sealing it in a hangar full of hungry Minox. I'd say there's probably an illegal landing site somewhere then. So that means there's probably an unsanctioned landing site somewhere on the planet. Still shielded, but not a restoration zone or other listed facility. That's why I need access to the shield network. Here, a small anomaly in the shield network's power grid. I'm not surprised the TSF didn't spot this. It's subtle, more like an error or random flux than anything suspicious. It looks like power is being drawn to generate a shield over a small area in the polar region, but nothing should be down there. Orbital cameras show nothing, just an empty mesa. That's a little tougher. According to the computer, a shuttle is currently docked inside the research facility. At least there was at last report, though that was months ago. I don't, but that's not going to stop me. I'm getting back to Citadel if I have to build a new ship myself. That's decided then. We should get going. There's one other small problem. Recently, Zerka teams that were sent into the military facility have not been coming out. But it's not as though we have any choice. of mine isn't just for show, General. Stand back. The Zerka mercenaries were a little surprised when I broke my way out of my holding cell. The shields there were even weaker than these. After you.
came from time to take you down to size more where that came from There she is, one orbital shuttle. Looks like it's in serviceable condition. That's all a moot point, though. The hangar bay doors are closed. I don't fancy flying the shuttle through solid metal, so I'd say we need to find a way to get them open. We'll also need to find the ignition codes for the shuttle, or else we'll have some trouble getting off the ground. If we get all that, I wouldn't worry about what shape this heap is in. I'll get it running.
wancha mori chiwa mufala wa ni bobo wish yot kuna sita dorcho ni soba wata kawana bota yunta tanga kinamatora tayaita ta bosa nanansa to nata bias via jicho wata na ikune rakete da hupa bosa kurata go juju to yoke Hiata yamba wa Kawana bota yunta tanga kinamatora Tayaita Krachi ubachi kompa duana muska We have seen much during the war. Is it your wish to continue causing such suffering? As always, General, when you lead, I shall follow. But it is only because we have been through so much together. Let's go. This is too tough for me. Take them down.
Thank <laughs> you. 
Too late. The target has invaded us. We must pursue it. Observation. They have likely escaped aboard the orbital shuttle that has been docked here. The Bay Control computer likely will have a record of their departure. Query. Have you discovered anything about the shuttle's course? Answer. I have managed to track the shuttle's movement across the shield network. However, the shield network does not stretch over the polar region which was the shuttle's apparent destination. Statement. Dispatch a unit to the polar region with the last known coordinates and approximate path of the shuttle. They will not escape us again. Well, this can't be any worse than last time. So that's the hole in the shield network, huh? Doesn't look like much to me. You've got to be kidding me. It's not my fault. Egotistic praise. An excellent shot, even with the prevailing winds. I couldn't have done it better myself. Field assessment. I picked up on the heat forms of the Jedi and his allies. Activate the mines and prime the self-destruct sequences. statement. Oh, Jedi, it is good to see you intact. We were concerned that shooting down your shuttle would damage you irreparably. Quick clarification. But now that we have found you, we hope that we can facilitate communications. Unnecessary addendum. And put an end to hostilities. Unnecessary clarification. We merely wish to cripple your vessel. Once we tracked your coordinates, we were able to deploy several droids in this location. Probing query. We are, however, curious as to why you chose to come to the remnants of the Polar Telos irrigation system. There is nothing here that our instruments can detect. Eager threat. But we are looking forward to extracting your motives for coming here when we place you in torture restraints. Self-evident answer. Wherever you try to run, we will be there, armed and ready. Rhetorical query. So the query you have posed to us is one we put to you. What are you doing here, we wonder?
Lay down your weapons, and you shall not be harmed. I will not warn you again. Drop your weapons, or we shall take them from you. Do as they say. I sense people come to no harm. Why is it that everywhere we go, I end up in a cell? I mean, why did they lock us up? What is this place? It is a training ground for Jedi. What? This ice hole? Yes. It bears the semblance of an academy. But where are all the students? Curious. You've got to be joking. What is a Jedi Academy doing out here in the middle of nowhere? It is a place hidden from the galaxy like the Academy on Dantooine. But this place... Oh, Atris, you have been clever. Atris? It's none of your concern. Well, the sooner we're out of here, the better. Two crazy Jedi are more than enough for me. No one told me we were going to be dumped in a nest of Jedi. And what is it about this place that causes you such fear? What do you mean? We're in the middle of a bunch of Jedi. You know how they are. No, I do not. Not in the way you seem to. What? What are you doing? Get out of my head! Stop struggling. Let me follow the current deep, deeper to its source. Stop! Stop! Ah! Ah. With the fear is mingled guilt. It squirms in you like a worm. And the why? Ah, and there is its heart. You surprise me. I could not feel it before. Your feelings are a powerful shield indeed. Do not worry, Athen. If he is a Jedi, he will forgive. And if he is not, he will not care. You can't tell him, please. I'm asking you. I don't want him to... Think less of you. I hardly think that's possible. Still, there is no shame in what you ask. We all wage war with the past, and it leaves its scars. I will not speak of yours, Atten, but there is a price for such things. What? What price? There are those who wage war and those who follow them. You are a crude thing, murderer, but you have your uses. You know how important this man we travel with is. Even one such as you can feel it. You will serve him until I release you. And if I refuse? You will not. If you do, then my silence will be broken. And then, Atten, you will be broken. You fear the Jedi, and rightly so. If Atris learns of your choices, you will never leave this place. But whatever fear you hold of the Jedi, know that if you disobey me, that my punishment will make you beg for the death that has long hounded you. Wipe the fear from your mind. You will not find blind obedience a difficult master. You chose it once. You will learn to embrace it again. I don't know how you became such a manipulative witch, but why a vicious old scowl like yourself would even bother with me is a bigger mystery. 
No game of the Jarek can be won without pawns, and this may prove to be a very long game. You are a slippery one. Your thoughts difficult for even one such as I to read. I suspect the self-loathing that squirms within you gives you a curious strength. Your spirit, as diseased as it is, refuses to allow you to give up, no matter what threats you face and whatever wreckage you leave behind you. I feel you have crossed our path for a reason. Perhaps even you, at the right moment, may be able to turn aside disaster. If so, your potential is not yet spent. Fine. I'll be your pawn. But I still think you've got the wrong man. Perhaps. But someone has to fly the ship, and the Force is a hard thing to predict. You have crossed our path for a reason. Our path brought us here for a reason. And now I know why. The past is here, and it must be met before the future can be set in motion. Uh, more Jedi speak. Care to explain? No. I've wasted enough time with you. Sleep, murderer, and be silent. I need no distractions. A critical moment approaches. I did not expect to see you again after the day of your sentencing. I thought you had taken the Exile's path, wandering the galaxy. Yet you have returned. Why? Your slaves have been detained for their safety. Though if that is how you treat them, I imagine they would prefer cells to your company. But you have not answered my question. Why are you here? The Order and you parted ways long ago, and the Order was the better for it. Your ship? Ah, the Ebon Hawk. It is not your ship. Unless you are admitting to the destruction of the Paragas mining facility. The Ebon Hawk is here, safe. Its records and Navi computer are being dissected to determine what caused the destruction of the Paragus facility. We're having some trouble with the Navi computer, but I think with your cooperation, willing or otherwise, that will cease to be an obstacle. If it is your ship, perhaps I should be questioning you as to what happened and why you destroyed the facility and murdered all the miners stationed there. A facility of over 150 personnel, all dead before you arrived. A childish story to mask your crime. And with the facility destroyed, you think there is no way to confirm your story. But I will pry the truth from you, I promise you that. Again, you insist it is your ship. But it has had many owners, which I'm sure you are aware. You have no claim over it. Even if you did, the destruction you have already caused demands that you be tried and punished for what you have done. It was too much to hope that you have come here to finally admit the Council was right. A lightsaber is the mark of a Jedi. When you turned your back on the Order, it was not yours anymore. You do not wish to fight for it. You surprise me. If you do not wish to fight, then answer my questions. What happened at Paragus? So, at last you admit it. At least you have that much courage left. You have not changed. Acting instead of thinking, putting yourself before the galaxy, before the Jedi. Do you know what you have done?
Without the fuel from Paragus, Citadel Station cannot maintain its orbit. It will crash into the planet and its destruction will echo across 20 other worlds. You have indeed become a monster to view such events so callously. Without the fuel from Paragus, Citadel Station cannot maintain its orbit. It will crash. Telos was a test to see if the Republic could mount a restoration effort on the Outer Rim. When it fails, the Republic will not finance another. The other Rim worlds, devastated by the Sith, will remain graveyard worlds, devoid of life. And that is the magnitude of your crime. So you still hold to your flawed convictions. If you think to anger me, you are wrong. How is it that you are not content to confine your ruin to yourself? You must spread it to others wherever you go. Ruin yourself with your actions if you will. But when your actions bring harm to others, then you must answer for it. The Sith? What do you mean? You speak truly. You have encountered the Sith. I can feel the scars on you. And you encountered them on Paragus. But what would they want there? They can't have been looking for you. You. If they thought you were Jedi, the teachings of the Sith blind them indeed. I am the last Jedi, not you. You betrayed our teachings, our beliefs, the very core of the Jedi Order. If these Sith attacked you, they will soon realize their mistake. And if you escaped, they most likely let you go to see if you would lead them here. Whatever force they can bring to bear, it will matter not. If they face a true Jedi, they shall fall. We shall see. For now, the perspective on your situation has changed. I have your ship. I will return it to you. You must leave here before you place us in jeopardy. Take your ship, then. I don't care where you go, just leave this place. Leave Telos. We shall remove him, mistress. Come with us. Are you all right, mistress? The exile brought up feelings best left forgotten. Forgive me, mistress, but I must ask. The exile, I've never seen another affect you so strongly. Did you care for him once? The Jedi have no such attachments. As always, he will do as he wills. And the galaxy? and the feelings of others can burn for all he cares. The day we judged him, I stood in the chamber and he was... He was so right. He was so certain of it, I doubted myself. He chose Revan over the Jedi, over the Council, over... But now, now I am tired. I must meditate. Of course, Mistress. I will tell the others you are not to be disturbed. And please, do not exhaust yourself. We can attend to matters here. Why have you approached me? You will find them in the main irrigation channel room, in the northern part of the plateau interior. The particle emitters there that once governed the flow of water to Telos can double as force cages. It is not part of my duties. Free them yourself. Then you must leave this place. I would welcome a chance to instruct you. I have been anxious to teach you many principles of combat ever since you invaded this place. Very well. Follow me, and we shall see if you have the endurance to learn the most basic of our teachings. Before we begin, are you familiar with the Chani traditions? All duels between us shall be without armor of any kind. There shall be no restrictions upon our movements or upon yours. Your feet 
are not to leave the training mat during the battle. If they do, you will lose. Also, this is not a fight to the death. Restrain your instincts when we fight, and we shall do the same. The fight will be with hands and feet only. No stimulants, shields, weapons, or other items. Also, do not call upon any Jedi techniques during our contest. If you do, then the battle will be over. In turn, I will not use our higher forms, for this is only an opening battle between us, a test of each other's strength. Then let us begin. succeeded. If you wish, you may challenge us again, and we will progress to more advanced movements. Seek one of us out when you wish to fight, and we shall honor your request. Have you returned to fight again? Seek one of us... Have you returned to fight again? Very well. I shall honor your request. Our next battle will be using the higher forms among the Ichani. You may choose hands and feet, or whatever melee weapon you wish, but use no other items or Jedi techniques. Seek one of us. Have you returned to fight again? There are you. Then let us. Succeeded. If you wish, you may challenge us again, and we will progress to more advanced movements. Seek one of us. Have you returned to fight? Very well. I shall honor your request. Our next battle shall be free of restriction on weapons and items. And you may use whatever technique, Jedi or otherwise, you wish to attempt to defeat me. In turn, I will spare none of our forms against you. Seek... Have you returned to... The... Our... In... Then let us begin. of melee combat. You surprise me. There is nothing more that we can teach you from such contests. Such battle would only be for battle's sake. 
If that is what you wish, then we shall honor it. We shall see how you fight against a group of us. We shall take you in a pair, using everything at our disposal. Use whatever item, weapon, or Jedi technique you wish. We shall match it. Seek one... Have you returned to fight again? There is no... If we you... Then let us begin. teach you. You are a strong opponent. Atrus was correct about you. You know much of war and battle. Perhaps too much. One does not sweat in the polar regions of Telos, so all that will break will be your pride. You are a strong opponent. Atrus... One does not sweat in the polar regions of Telos, so all that will break will be your pride. Then our last battle shall be the five of us against you. Use any item, any weapon, any technique you wish. You will need them. There is no need for the last of us to join in this fight. The weakest among us will only serve to diminish our techniques. We fight as one when we are five, not six, and that number should be enough for this lesson. Very well. We shall begin.
will teach you. There shall be no more matches, no more challenges. There is much we have learned from you. If we meet on the field of battle, we shall be prepared. There shall be no more matches, no more challenges. There is much we have learned. You have returned. I am aware of this. I do not doubt your combat prowess, as my half-sisters do. There are many who went to war against the Mandalorians, and few returned. You were one of them. I do not fear you. My words have been misinterpreted and need to be placed in perspective. Again, you have twisted my words to attempt to provoke me. That shows a creative mind which bodes well for any fight between us. The Ichani believe you cannot truly know the heart of another unless you meet them in battle. I would very much like to know your nature. But now is not the time. Perhaps my sisters could challenge you. Did you find what you came for? I felt as much, quite strongly, in fact. I suspected there was something from your past here, something unresolved. I feel we did not come to this place by chance. You were led here. This woman who resides here, she did something to you once, something that hangs upon you still. I see it now. The act has left its marks. Be warned. Unresolved events from our past can create wounds in the present and the future. And, more importantly, they can distract you, weaken you. It could prove fatal against the enemies we face. There is a Jedi here, perhaps, in that you are correct. Yet there are no students, and this woman, this... Atris surrounds herself with those who cannot feel the Force. Curious. No, her servants are not Jedi. Their minds are walls, trained to resist tricks of the mind. This discipline blinds them to the Force as well, even if they were Force-sensitive. Invade the mind of another. It is not something done carelessly or when there is nothing to be gained. Ah, killing such a one could prove difficult and unwise. Yet she distracts you, that is clear, and that may be reason enough. Such distractions could prove fatal against the enemies we face. Direct action is not always the best way. It is a far greater victory to make another see through your eyes than to close theirs forever. Yet all that lives feels, and where something feels, there is weakness. Why you, of course. You are the gravity around which all her actions rotate. You exert a stronger influence than you know. Be her foil, her challenge, and eventually she will see things your way. Oh, yes. Natural leaders do such things to followers, whether they be simple criminals or old women such as myself. 
Very well. Let us depart. <sighs> He's only sleeping. It seems the journey here has fatigued him. I am sorry, General. I must have lost consciousness in the crash. I will not, General. The attack was unexpected, but I will not let down my guard again. What is this place? Where are we? This must be where I had detected the energy readings before, and the drain to the restoration shields. This room, this place, it looks part of a huge polar irrigation system, possibly planet-wide, like the one on Coruscant. I had been told by the Republic that it was not in use. I am, General. If you wish, I may travel with you or join you at the ship. Very well, General. Well, if it isn't the one who stole the Ebonhawk. Not so smug now, are you, you little thief? Don't be a fool. Atris stole the ship and the droid, says you.
Mistress, the last of the handmaidens is not among us. She has left with the exile. Left? But why? Her oath. Her reasons are unknown to me. But I fear she may no longer be trusted. We will save her if we can, but we must let her discover the exile's nature for herself. Some evils must be confronted, and isolation from it would have been no defense. Well, now that we're off that Dajaric board of a planet, I say we burn sky until we see lines. seem to have found it. Do you know why we have called you here? As Revan summoned you, so have you come full circle to return to the Jedi? Why did you defy us? The Jedi are guardians of the peace, and have been for centuries. This call to war undermines all that we have worked for. Is Revan your master now? Or is it the horror you wrought at Malachor that has caused you to see the truth at last? You refuse to hear us. You have shut us out. And so have shut yourself to the galaxy. We feel that your true understanding of what happened at Malachor V will only happen in time, and it cannot happen here, near the battlegrounds where you fought. You are exiled, and you are a Jedi no longer. There is one last thing. Your lightsaber. Surrender it to us. <laughs> Much defiance in that one. You are correct, Kavar. When he was here, I felt it. It was as if he was not there, more like an echo. Revan's influence has grown amongst the youngest of the Order. He speaks to their passions, not their sense. The war has touched them. Many of them have found themselves in the war against the Mandalorians. It is as I feared, and I fear that we have played into the hands of the enemy. We have not lost a Jedi this day. You felt it. He has lost himself. He is no Jedi. He walked Revan's path, but he was not strong enough. I fear it is our teachings that may have led Revan to choose the path he did. We are not the ones who taught him. We take responsibility, Atris, not cast blame. The choice of one was the choice of us all. Revan's teacher intended no harm, and Revan had many teachers since. Yet they all stem from the same source. Her teachings violated the Jedi Code, and lead all who listen to the Dark Side, as they did the Exile. You are wrong. The Dark Side is not what I sensed in the Exile. Surely the rest of you felt it as well. That emptiness we felt. He has changed. Whatever that wound was, it was of the Dark Side. We should not have let him depart. He will simply join Revan again, or perhaps worse. What would you have done with him, Atris? Be mindful of your feelings. This is not Revan who stood before you. This one walks a different path. No, although that may come in time. We let him go because we must. Where he travels, he carries his destination with him. Malachor V should have been his grave. You saw it in his walk, and in the Force. It was as if he was already dead. No, not death. Many battles remain for that one, if what we have seen is true. But the future is a shifting thing, and he cuts like a blade through it. We should have told him the truth. A Jedi deserves to know. No good would have come from it, even if what you believe was true. There is still the matter of Revan, and such truths could leave us vulnerable on two fronts. 
Perhaps in many years, we will call him before us and explain what happened to him, and how he may be healed. Until then, he must accept his journey. But he may never discover the truth, and he will never know why we cast him out. And that is the future we must accept. Those Jedi sure like their secrets, don't they? A strange coincidence. It is no coincidence. There is some larger plan at work here, and we are walking into it. This is too convenient to be anything but a trap. Those are Atris's records you have stolen. What the hell are you doing on our ship? I have come to join you. I can help you against this threat. Sister, you and yours are the threat. If it comforts you to believe that, then so be it. But the enemies you face are many, and you will need all the help you can get. It is just me, and I am doing this against Atrus's wishes, and those of my sisters. No, she speaks the truth. We will take the servant of Atrus with us. I tire of this. I will be in my chambers. Yeah, me too. I'll be in my chambers. But since I don't have any, I guess I'll just go to the cockpit like I always do. If she's coming with us, she gets the cargo hold. Might remind her how fun it is to get locked up. General. The cargo hold is enough. I assure you, there is little I need. I will attend to myself. I will, if you need me. I shall be in the cargo hold. General, is there a reason you don't carry a lightsaber anymore? That's not your lightsaber anymore. That belonged to someone who served Revan in the wars, not the person you are now. You could build another one, if you wanted to, but... You know that. I don't know, General. But whatever the reason, you should put it behind you. I know this. A lightsaber is part of who you are. Without it, you're not complete. I think I can help you out there. I happen to know the parts you need. I spent a lot of time around Jedi during the war. None of them would let me take their lightsaber apart, but I did learn about their construction. We need a power cell, emitter matrix, lens and focusing crystal. Though I have to admit the crystal is beyond my means. Never did understand them. Those parts are fairly common, though a Jedi once told me that it's best if your lightsaber reflects you, and if it is constructed of things that identify it as your own. Just bring the parts to me before you get started building it. I'll make sure they're usable. For the last time, no. Because you're programmed to force your opponent to go first, and nothing will convince me the computer doesn't cheat. Even if I didn't have to go first and somehow I didn't suspect you of counting cards, I still wouldn't play with a trash compactor. Yeah? How many credits? All I'm saying is that you've gone for a long time without a memory wipe. Most droids behave erratically under those circumstances. I know that, but I'm fixing everything else around here, so I may as well take a look at you too. 
What was that? That's what I'm talking about. That is not normal droid behavior. I am not pushing you around. I just wanted to see if there was anything I could do to upgrade your functionality. Thanks for the vote of confidence. Good. Now let's get started. You wouldn't guess it from the outside, but it looks like you've been through a lot. I'll bet. I'm all done with you. If anything comes loose, let me know and I'll put it back in place. General, need something. Yes, General? Let me see what you have. No, you're still missing any meter matrix and lens. Something else I can help you with? Sorry, General, I'm flat out. Something else I... Look, I didn't want to say anything, but you forced my hand. I've heard about the Force and what it does to people who can't control it, or themselves. And it shows in everything you do, and in your face. That's what you think. Trust me, there's a reason you're changing. It's because it's corrupting you. I can't help but feel it. All of us can. Whatever that witch is doing to you, she's dragging you down into whatever hole she crawled out of. Well, you're starting to get creases. You could pass for the old witch's son. All right, what did you want to know? How many more do we intend to gather to us? This ship is not the galaxy. There is only so much room. Then prepare for an army, I think, for it seems many more will come in time. They will follow you because you are a leader. Their kind always needs such, even when the figure deserves no such obedience. Because I am not blind, that is why. I see what they see, hear their voices when they speak to you, and notice the change when they speak to others. I know many things, and I know what I am not. I am no leader. I speak with a voice that will never move others. I speak with a passion that goes unheard. They obey you because you are a leader, and perhaps something more. Have you noticed what has been happening? Have you felt it in them? They echo you, either fighting or surrendering to their feelings, their loyalty, their duty. Your mere presence serves as an example to them of something to uphold or something to fight against. Watch them carefully, see their patterns, and recognize the strength in it. Influence can be a weapon, one that you may need before your journey is done. Good, and then act upon it. It is a powerful tool to motivate others. That was Revan's way, I believe. It was a strength. A discussion, perhaps, for another time. Ask. 
There are countless reasons, and I have neither the time nor the patience to list them all. No, she may have her uses. I will abide her presence, and so should you. Because Atris is a threat, and as much as she would try to use us against you, so may we use her servants against her. Do not see every enemy as an enemy. See them instead as an ally, whether they realize it or not. This situation may yet work to our advantage. Good. That is the most to be done until events unfold, as I'm sure they will in time. Ask. There is nothing wrong with my sight, if that is your question. I see all that I need, though the seeing of things flesh and blood has failed me some time ago. They were distractions only. There is nothing wrong with my eyes. They simply have atrophied from use. They are adequate to distinguish shapes, silhouettes. If need be, I could heal them, restore my sight, but sight can prove a distraction. When one relies on sight to perceive the world, it is like trying to stare at the galaxy through a crack in the door. But that is a lesson for another time. You must learn to see crude matter for what it is before the veil is lifted. Ah. Does it matter? Of course it does. Such titles allow you to break the galaxy into light and dark. Categorize it. Perhaps I am neither. And I hold both as what they are, pieces of a whole. Know that I am your teacher, and that is enough. Or what? Shall you kill me? Hurt me? Or perhaps you will simply cast me out, exile me, it matters not. That is enough for today. Yes? Yes, your features, your stance. Atrus spoke of such Jedi who followed Revan, how their bodies came to mirror the dark side within them. Smuggler's Moon. It's the gaping maw of Nal Hutta, swallowing all the cargo and spaceport thugs the galaxy has to offer. Mandalorians, mercenaries, war veterans, and pilots from the Mandalorian Wars and the Jedi Civil War ended up on Nar Shadda, from all sides of the conflict. When the last war ended, there was no place left for them to go. Nar Shadda's a rough place and easy to get lost in. Or for someone to get lost. If we wanted to keep out of sight from the Sith for a while, you couldn't pick a better spot. It means glorious jewel in Hatis, but don't let that fool you. It's the central breeding grounds of the huts. Nar Shadda orbits it. Nal Hutta's as slimy as the huts. Lots of swamp and bloated gas. It's where those slugs reach out and grab chunks of the galaxy. Trust me, we're not going to go anywhere near the place unless we want to be washing the stink out of our clothes for the next few years. That bad? I didn't think anything could compel you to bathe. You spend all day thinking up that joke? Maybe you and Beodur should start a circus. I fail to understand the reference, though I doubt your explanation would prove worthwhile. Yeah, some came looking for work running freight and cargo. Still, there's only so many ships to go around and so many workers, so others lend their weapons to the huts in the exchange. It's become a prime base for raider recruitment across the galaxy. It won't be easy. There's so much traffic on Nar Shadda. Finding anyone on the moon's surface is going to be hard. We're going to touch down in the refugee sector. There's a lot more traffic there, and it's harder for people to spot you coming in. Or find you once you arrive. You speak of this place as if it is familiar to you. Anyone flying the Star Lanes has docked on Nar Shadda at least once. I wouldn't want to live there, and I doubt anyone does by choice. Not everyone who came to Nar Shadda were soldiers. 
A lot of worlds were destroyed by the Mandalorians and the Jedi. Left a lot of people wandering the galaxy. Shouldn't be too hard. There's so much traffic on Nar Shaddaa, finding anyone on the moon's surface is gonna be hard. We're gonna touch down in the refugee sector. There's a lot more traffic there, and it's harder for people to spot you coming in. Or find you once you arrive. You speak of this place? Anyone... I plotted a course for the refugee sector, and we should touch down within the hour. Once we're down, we should finally be able to breathe easy. There's no way anyone's gonna find us here. Request, if Goto's vessel is no longer neutral ground, inform us so that we might initiate assassination protocols and commence firing at once. The Hupopotenyo go Jucho Picha, Gwen Taba ni Sochu, Norotoga Proton Lala Shishi, Juba Dosa Jibacha, Ratakman San, Tokosha na Chitolo, Joana Masaranka ma Ramazurata, Kesa Juskrita Lorsa, Mu Macha Fo Eko, Miko Jira, Kawana Bota at Hagua Kanka Diwa, Yutaka Alonji, Yumaliba, Tues Mahawika, Si Wawanta Mo Go Ika Munsoba, Wakama Nurawa. Observation. Jedi follow the self-destructive path of pacifism and tolerance. They will not attack first. Honto no saka. Jita bedwana maticha. Tono tucha. Tocha ramakaka musurankana. Honto no saka. Jita bedwana maticha. Si machatana. Dona we search a makaran. Ah, the beautiful stench and decay of desperate living. This moon, it teems with life. It is difficult to center oneself. Welcome to Nar Shadda. Towering buildings kilometers high and miles deep, with canyons so wide you could have a dogfight in them. Word of warning, watch where you step, or you'll fall for hours. Maybe a little, but landing here means we didn't have to transmit our ID signature. You know what trouble that always brings. In fact, while we're here, we should get those signatures changed. Wouldn't make us such a target when we enter a new system. No, but I forgot to tell them we were landing. The refugee sector's a dead zone. No one cares too much who flies in and out of here as long as they're not carrying cargo that the Exchange or the Huts might want a piece of. Yeah, in all its glory. Don't get your hopes up from what you see here, though. As soon as we hit the main sector, that's when the smell and the mobs can get pretty bad. All right, then, let's move out. Uh, where are we headed exactly? It does not matter where we go. If what we seek is here, we shall come upon it in due time. Uh, yeah, if you want to stay on the ship and meditate some more, don't let us stop you. There should be a central trading hub up ahead. Their stock's probably not the best, but they may have some things worthwhile. 
Well, that means finding either a bounty hunter, a ranking member of the Exchange, or someone willing to talk. None of which are too appealing. Bounty hunters in the Exchange are going to want to shoot you. And someone who is willing to talk is willing to talk to anyone. Which means trouble. The bounty is a waste of our efforts. All that matters is the Jedi. The intentions of the thugs of this moon are of no consequence. This bounty poses a threat to him. We do not need two beasts at our back when the Sith are enough. If you are so certain of your path, then do what you will, servant of Atris. It makes no difference. It's up to you. There's bound to be someone in the sector willing to spill their guts for a credit or two. Finding a Jedi or anyone else touched by the Force here will be difficult. The mass of people, the rush of their emotions. It makes detection difficult. But this moon does not get any smaller while we wait. This sector is as good as any place to begin our search, so let us begin. Well, if we're gonna search a moon of a few billion inhabitants for one Jedi that even our own can't sense, might as well start as soon as possible. All right, if you have any questions, just ask. We should be able to leave the ship here as long as we want. No one supervises these landing pads anymore. You! You there! Uh-oh. What's with you? Letting that piece of junk sink its thrust into my landing pad! Yeah? Well, it's the first I've heard of it. Tell you what, let me check it out. If you're cleared, then you're clear. No trouble. Eh, uh, well, <laughs> uh, don't let me hold you up then. Hmm. I gotta tell you, though, I got another one of your ships docking here within an hour. I'm not sure what to tell them. Not as of yet. No, look, you can't keep us trapped in the refugee sector. We can't survive there. You've got us locked in. Thanks for your help. They would have crippled me for sure. Alright, what do you want then? Well, they work for the Exchange, for a Quarren named Visquis. He's looking to step up in the Exchange. The only language the Exchange respects is money, so Visquis is trying to increase his profits by using the refugees here in Nar Shadda as a cheap labor force. We're only good to him as slaves and merchandise. He wants to keep us in one place, so he can control us. That's always been the way. Well, except lately. <laughs> you don't. He comes to you. If he's got reason to. Either because you can help him out, or because you're making trouble. Either way, it's not a good thing. The exchange has been clamping down on the refugee sector hard, and I've no idea why. They've started kidnapping people, hurting others, but there seems to be no reason to it. Whatever your reasons, thanks. Ch 
Spare a few credits, friend. I saw what you did to those exchange thugs, stranger. Can you spare a few credits, maybe help another refugee in need? Forgive me, stranger, please. I beg you, do not kill me. Why did you do such a thing? Giving into your feelings over such a small matter. They would be better served elsewhere. And what would you rather do? The Force binds all things. The smallest push, the smallest touch, sends echoes throughout life. These acts of cruelty may have more severe repercussions than you know, or can see. Cruelty leads to suffering, and when one suffers, it is the way of life to spread suffering. The suffering within builds until its sound is all one hears, and when a kindness is offered, it is punished, and a greater darkness is served. From one act can come tremendous power when the echo has traveled as far as it can. Send a great echo, and power will come to you. The day shall come when you can test your strength, I promise you. Directada ce mențe bine garul cu totul, unde ciuci m-am uitat să o benchi și m-am înțețe. Tere, oana ajung în conata de la răgună tună. Da, e rântul rând că urecă răpă până la ceara nana gândosă, remine la chelor actul cu răcă tada. Fie răutor. Tere, oana ajung în conata de la răgună tună. Da, e rântul rând că urecă răpă până la rângingă. Te era ce o minut tot o rere să ne sentăm. Tere, oana ajung în conata de la răgună tună. Dai rintu rintu kau rekere papa nala range. Dai rintu rintu wak kau rekue wap jere bu. Nenso telepacian kau saudara. Dosa ne gravala lantro kue wap atau rotana.
Bounty hunters have been laying low recently, like they're waiting for something.
Get a kind of chimney being a rugutu. Get into room to walk away, quay, walk, get it. I saw that ship you flew in on. My ship. It's the Ebon Hawk, isn't it? She was stolen from me during a routine run in the Mid Rim, near the close of the Mandalorian Wars. So, you admit it's not yours. How did you come by it anyway? Who did you buy it from? We'll see about that. Watch yourself. Nar Shaddaa can be a rough place. <laughs> Let me shoot him in the back. No one has to know. Shut 
Ask a Twi'lek. It's not flattering. Your thoughts are disturbed. I can feel them like a shiver running through you. It is Nashada, the true Nashada that you feel around you. It is this moon, with the metal and machines stripped away and the currents of the force laid bare. I'm surprised you can feel it. I fear the damage to you had deadened you to such perceptions. What you feel is the echo of the minds of these creatures within the force. Their anger, their greed, their desperation. It is life. One might as well move the universe, but such manipulation is possible, yes. It requires that one be able to feel the critical point within the fractured mass, and know how to strike it in such a way that the echoes travel to your intended destination. Not in the sense you understand it. The ability to fool the minds of others, to dominate them on a massive scale that you speak of, is not achieved best through raw power. Manipulation is done through propelling events, or selected ones, into motion. It is done through teaching, through example, and through conviction. And the greatest of victories are not manipulations at all, but simply awakening others to the truth of what you believe, of hearing it echoed around you in life. But let us be silent. Words and thoughts are distractions. Feel this moment for as long as it will last. Feel life as it is, with the crude matter stripped away. Doveri nincha, yo nona shi casa chuch. Wana tu mobaye? Torcha no banca ni honkades? Torcenta vi nota. Tono tocha? Tocha rama caca musuran cana. Do 
no cogerete por chasa borda. Chris Sorcha went tense in me punta. Lord Chaguata, you my knee. Hold on, you my des. That bota no chi, taguaita. Bosh, you are in a mosh now. I'm not a kimi wat, and in another rub, but it's not bad. Not me. Jun sobe me rap. No kuma randisa mak chiksa. Marash niwa rap, and even in a snippy dip, and in a snap, but she's new on your tower now, and even enough. Not only a wap, but who rap. Wamba wamba si so misun kun raka wakta nushka. Hara hine mas pemana na his nas te hira. Mani wakta hana hira ha ta ure ne mani mas. Wamba wamba si so misun kun raka wakta. Mas ni mani na mas na ora huna kine wat kine na na na. Marash ni wara te ne ni ni his ni mi di ni his na mas ti ni wa ni ta ure. Bosh ni wani na bosh na ora hu na kine wat. So you have the look of a seasoned spacer about you. What bat watch are you looking for? Well, honestly, there's not much for people like you and I to do around here, if you uh, catch my meaning. So does your wit. Now buy a drink or get out. Taracho mo sincho kava volpa muleji kumana minta ba. Kawana bota yunta tanga kina matura. Unta chivita inka kikra ya na chawanga kone. Kawana bota yunta tanga kina matura. Tayaita ta bosa na na chone murlera. Don kinge ba no jansa ka ni karaska. Tanja ni. Kawana bota yunta tanga kina matura. Ta kome ta kapla iya justing miki gongo beaste kun grabile munga chinor ta imbre wanachike drumba bamba kun ta kome ta kapla iya justing miki gongo beaste kun Chone murlera, ton kinge ba no jansa ka ni karaska. Tancha... Kawana bota yunta tanga kina matura. None taken. Kawana bota yunta tanga kina matura. I don't know what that witch did to you, but she's dragging you down into whatever hole she came out of. I'm only saying this because there's still a chance for you to stop this before whatever darkness she brought on you eats you alive. 
That's what you think, but it's gonna rot you. The signs are already in your face. All right. Oh, hello. You have caught me at a rare time. Usually there are many players who seek to play, but you are fortunate to have caught me at a moment of quiet. I fear it is because I am simply not a skilled Pazak player. I'm afraid protocol droid skills and language interpretation are not something that lend themselves to Pazak and... Why? I cannot help myself. In fact, every time I seek to find the answer to that question, I am consumed with the need to come here and play Pazak. I am concerned that the problem may lie with my memory core. Without routine memory wipes, you know, such degrad- I fear my obsession with Pizak- I am not sure I wish it fixed. I do find some degree- Yeah, maybe if the droid's not very good, there's some credits to be made here. Oh, most certainly, sir. I am not a good player. I suppose you're right. I wouldn't want the problem to- Oh. Why? I'm... I... F I'm not... Yeah. Oh. These tables are gonna bleed me dry. Manan sakapuna wa siro toke. Niju. Tono tocha? Tocha rama... Oh, that was a good shot. 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 Oh, that was a good shot.
Nishasa or Chutuko Nakaprota Gocha, Jarko Matis or Spandorcha, Yota Chisabari, Uba Volpa Holosha, Chuba dos Ojivicha, Crimso Anatis Chin or Tahirem Bechok, Wendin Dobe, Uba Volpa Holosha. Chuba dos ojivicha, crota short. Please, look, I, I already paid the exchange what I have. the one with your credits. About time. Look, these gentlemen are getting impatient. Exchange muscle. When they hear about this, they'll come back a dozen strong and tear you limb from limb. Wh what? No! But she compad one musca na bosca wamba. Cavadumpa munsuru cupla. Malam pasta rawando cream oga one. Cavadumpa masura cu, popayi potenya. Panesuka cram, chocolate matas, torch bandot. 
jun sobe me rap no kuma ran disa mak chiksa kucha bak tong moga chi no ta harem pe wana chi dun papa nakares magre kava dun pa ta hopo botenyo go jucho picha kwen taba ni sochu norotoga proto lala shishi takan tu chis miku mogo graba ke chi chu ida hodanga mi pa Kava dumpe masura ku popayi botenya ta che morota kamsa javas Kava dumpe masura ku popayi botenya Kava dumpe masura ku popayi botenya ta che morota kamsa Suna ranga macho chane dota lutu padu krem sochi Donina chiwa kota wind borka no Kava dumpe masura ku popayi botenya ta che morota kamsa javas ko bo sabjo kava dumpe masura ku popayi botenya ta che morota kamsa javas ko bo sab moga chi no ta haren pe wana chi drum papa nakares magre kava dumpa ku papayi mokata yuzu to mono da hopo botenya go jucho picha gwen taba ni sochu norotoga kawana bota tagwa kanka dewa yutaka anonji yumali ba twes mahawika si wanta mo go ika kava dumpe masura ku popayi botenya tache morota kamsa Tungji mula rai mula kriti. Dahupa bosa kurata go juju tu yoki hiata yamba. Kawana bota yunta tanga kina matura. Darak krono king bolotonga chopa chava genrute. Tenyo go jucho picha, gwen taba ni sochu, norotoga proto lala shishi, juba dosa jiba cha, kava dumpe masura ku, popayi botenya, tache morota ka.
came from. This is Serico territory. Get out of here before we space you. Got it? We are. Now beat it. This is Serico territory. That's a laugh. Look, blow out of here like space dust, or you'll be a new stain on the cargo hold. You've made a dangerous enemy today. You're tough to have made it this far. It's too bad you're not going any farther. I don't make threats. I only state the facts. Do your worst. <laughs> Oh, my God. 
Hey, let me take care of that for you. Expert. I like the sound of that.
All done. One of Sasquatch's calf hounds. Then maybe you ought to keep a tighter leash on his tentacles, back brain, because he's running this sector into the ground. My mom owes Sasquatch some credits, so he took me to sell me to the huts. They always need spice handlers for their camps. A lot of people die down there. What are you, Sasquatch's boss or something? I thought you smelled even worse than him. <laughs> Whatever you say. Yeah. The huts always need spice handlers for their camps. People are always dying there. Really? Oh, why didn't you say so? I'll go find Mom. Kick him once in the tentacles for me.
came from Back, I am ill. Contagious, the others say. Really? The others say I have the plague. I'm feeling a little better. Thank you. Thank you so much. And what is it you think you have accomplished? If you seek to aid everyone that suffers in the galaxy, you will only weaken yourself and weaken them. It is the internal struggles, when fought and won on their own, that yield the strongest rewards. You stole that struggle from them, cheapened it. That is all I ask. 
I used to serve in the Mandalorian Wars. Then the Jedi Civil War crushed the Republic. That was so kind of you to help out in the dark. The dark. Yatuka, Uwanrika, Chotin, Wanim, Aurata, Wakata. Huta Yanolia, Jukta Genichu, Bawanki, Nad. Sinta Tita, Krom, Eh, Do. Cavadumpa, Mo Wendido, Chokerembi, Norta Kunyun, Wish Chawaka Chuba. Tu, Nita Manta, you mad Lord Awa. Tovrekun Mili was a slima poguanga samoana, Mut. Tovrekun Mili was a slima poguanga samoana, Muta. Punta Chiwita Inca Kikraya na Chawanga Kone. Tovre kun mili wosa slima pogwa. Da hupa, bossa curata, go jujutu yoki. Hiata yamba wajia. Kawana bota yunta tanga kinamatura. Tayaita. Da hupa, bossa curata, go jujutu yoki. Look, I know we've been through some rough times so far, but you need to stop letting it get to you. Well, the signs are starting to show. You don't look like you've slept in weeks or a year. All right. Yeah, that's a surprise. Did he say I owed him credits too? I'm as Atten as Atten will ever be. And whoever your trusted informant is, he's right. I did show up on Nar Shaddaa during the Jedi Civil War, along with a lot of other refugees. No, because you're asking about it. If I wanted to tell you anything, I would have come and told you. Anything else? Is this an interrogation? If so, you're terrible at it, especially for an ex-Jedi, or whatever you are. Why don't you just crawl in my head and try to dig out whatever you're looking for rather than asking about it? You know what? I helped you get off, Paragus. If I hadn't been there, you wouldn't have even gotten off the administration level. I'm trying to help you. I don't know why I'm bothering. I don't know. I'm not sure I understand it half the time. You know what? Not once have I asked you about the Mandalorian Wars. Not once. I heard about Duxon. Everyone has. I heard about Serico, and I sure as hell know about Malachor V. What makes you think you've got the right to interrogate me on anything? You've got plenty of lives to answer for. All you Jedi do. How did you even live with yourself after Malachor? Is that why you went back to the Jedi Council? Hoping they'd kill you? But Jedi don't kill, do they? At least not their prisoners. Maybe you were counting on it when you went back in chains. So you got off easy. You were exiled, brushed under the cargo ramp. Another dirty little Jedi secret. I'll tell you, all those Jedi at Malachor, they deserved it. Every last one of them. Because Jedi lie, and they manipulate, and every act of charity or kindness they do, you can drag it out squirming into the light and see it for what it is. The galaxy doesn't need Jedi arrogance or Jedi hypocrisy anymore. The Jedi, the Sith, you don't get it, do you? To the galaxy, they're the same thing. Just men and women with too much power, squabbling over religion while the rest of us burn. At least the Sith are honest about what they're killing for. The Jedi are pacifists, except in times of war. They're teachers, except when it comes to telling their students the truth. And when they save you, it's only so you can suffer more. Whatever, just leave me alone. Well, don't get too attached to me. I don't like it.
It's because I'm a deserter. It's what I do. Served in both of them. Against the Mandalorians, before and after Revan, and again, when Revan declared war on the Jedi. That's just a name. It's what we did that was important. But it was more than that. You were there. You knew how easy it was to hate the Jedi who sat back in the Republic, evaluating the threat, and watched us die against the Mandalorians? I did, up until the Republic officers began to betray their oaths to the Republic and side with Revan, Admiral Kareth, Mon Halan, General Darid, and all the rest. Right after that final battle at Malachor, I was right there with the rest of the defectors, because it was the right thing to do. The Mandalorians were slaughtering us by the millions. The millions. You were at Serico when they turned the Starib cities into glass craters. At Duro, when basilisk war droids rained like meteors onto the orbiting cities. And when the Mandalorians set fire to the Zoxan plains on Ares III, the fires that still burn. Without the Jedi who turned on the Council, without you, the Republic would have lost the war, and we would all be Mandalorian slaves or corpses. We were loyal to Revan. That was enough. He saved us. After Malachor, after the Mandalorian Wars, that's when the Sith teachings started spreading through the ranks. We knew where our loyalties lay. To the Jedi who came to help us, not the ones who sat back on Dantooine and Coruscant, watching us die. So when those same Jedi who watched us die decided to start fighting us during the Jedi Civil War, we fought back. I fought back. I started killing Jedi. A lot of them. People say killing Jedi is hard. It's not. You just have to be smart about it. No blasters, no getting close to them, no attacking them directly when you can gun down their allies instead. There's ways of gassing them, drugging them, making them lose control, torturing them. I was really good at it. What's worse is that killing them wasn't the best thing. Making them fall. Making them see our side of it. That was the best. I taught myself techniques. It's hard for Jedi to sense what you're really thinking if you throw up walls of strong emotions and feelings. Lust, impatience, cowardice. Most Jedi awareness doesn't cruise beyond the surface feelings to see what's deeper. And I was good at that, throwing up walls. And my superiors knew it. Sometimes the Jedi on our side wouldn't even realize I was there. Yeah, I had a talent for it. More like instinct. I wasn't the only one. I know you left at the Mandalorian Wars, so you don't know much about what went on behind the scenes in the Jedi Civil War. But Revan understood one thing. The real battle was going to be fought between the Jedi on both sides. That was the only battle that mattered. Whoever had the most, the strongest Jedi were going to win the Civil War. If Revan couldn't convert Jedi, Revan would kill them. So Revan trained elite Sith units into assassination squads, whose duty was to go out and capture enemy Jedi. I was in one of the special units trained to do this. Revan had plans for all Jedi. I think it was important that the Jedi see his side of things, the Sith teachings. Revan wanted to break them, and then have them join him. One day, I decided not to do it anymore. So I left. Ended up on Nar Shadda, became someone else. I didn't think you would, after Malachor. But it was a chance. I guess I was just tired of keeping it in. And I've been with you only a short time. Enough to know that as soon as someone signs on with you, they haven't got long to live. You got history, and anyone who travels with you doesn't. And maybe I want somebody to know who I was in case a story needs to be set straight. Maybe you understand. I think there's been enough lies and truth for today. Let's just leave it for now. Take your time. I have.
Kawana bota yunta tanga kinamatora. Ta wancha morechi wa mufala wa ni bobo wishyo. Kavadumba munsuru ku plagliya wa. Ta kometa ka plagliya justing. Miki gongo. To vrekun... I used to serve in the Mandalorian Wars. Then the Jedi Civil War crushed the Republic. Thank you so much for returning my Adana to me. Hey, thanks for saving me. Let's see, three bricks of spice out to Elysia, then with a the turnaround, um, no, no, that won't work. Uh, come act! Here so soon? I wasn't expecting you for... Uh, well, not now, anyway. The genius shall be long, the raw inch, a free malast and dush, grenashed the runes of the pants of Kuniki. Yeah, well, I... Uh... <laughs> I tried to explain that, you see, but, um... I had no choice. These, uh, these thugs showed up, and, uh, they said that you could go space yourselves. And uh, I was like... No, no, this is the Red Eclipse, and... Someone's trying to board... If they think I'm going to give up this ship without a fight, well, they're wrong. It's good to be back on the old girl. Hey, what are you doing on my ship? Damn right I am. What are you... So 
from more where that came from
Look, there's been a misunderstanding. The, the ship, it's all yours. Consider it a gift, all right? Didn't know you were messing with Red Eclipse slavers. Guess those stories about the Hawk being a cursed vessel are true. Hey, wait a minute, you can't do this! Saber. You've destroyed it. I yield, Master. It is as I heard through the Force. My life for yours. I have nothing to offer you. Your strength is superior. It is as I felt. Now I've seen everything. This woman, she's a Miraluka. I didn't think any were left in this part of the galaxy. I heard they had a colony on the Midrim, almost halfway between Onderon and Dantooine. Then, it wasn't there anymore. The whole planet was wiped out. Nothing left alive. No one knows why. Well, some of her wounds are pretty bad. Looks like she was already carrying her share of scars, though. I think she'll recover, yeah. She is a threat to us. I am not asking that she be harmed or interrogated, but she is of the Sith, and she has attacked us once. She should not be allowed to walk freely on the ship.
don't know what's happening, but I can see what's going on, and the others have felt it too. You can't hide it, General. Just look at your face. I saw other Jedi who looked like you during and after the war. It's that woman. You have to get away from her. She'll destroy you. She's manipulating you, maybe all of us. Just be careful, General. You don't know what she wants, and she's got some goal. I'm sure of it. Was there something you wanted me for? Let me see what you have. No, you're still missing a lens. Something else I can help you. Her species does not see as we do. They perceive the galaxy through the Force, and it is how she found you. It is a rare gift squandered on her people. Despite your urges, it would be better to deal with her now. Whether you intend salvation or slavery, she is a threat to us. She serves one of the greatest of the Sith. She is the most trusted and only apprentice. Yet you spare her. Why? We shall see. There may be value in such a choice to keep her alive, or perhaps not. Whatever your intentions toward her, keep them restrained. Whether mercy or lust, we have time for neither. Is that so? Well, perhaps there will be a second chance for her to inflict harm, so you may test such a statement. It is good that you have never wondered what lay beneath her robes, if her alabaster skin was as white and unblemished as her face, or if perhaps she bore the scars of slavery, and if that would stir you more, if perhaps her deferent tone would change once you held her by the throat and showed her how far a Jedi can fall. Few are the thoughts that can hide in the shadows of your mind, Exile, and such passions are not strength, but erosion. I cannot help but hear you at times, and such curious thoughts they are, not at all like a Jedi. See to it that you do not ever act upon your impulses. Mating with her will bring more harm than you know. Like the servant of Atris, this one has other masters. Though blind, she has ties to darkness. Her presence here is a threat to us, to you. Do not underestimate her or her loyalty. Then you are learning. Did he? And what do you make of that? You are right to trust your instincts. Something is wrong. It is only a matter of discovering what and why. If your instincts lead you to an answer, seek me out. Perhaps we will discuss more. My 
my life for yours. I felt you, heard you through the Force. It was like a sound at the edge of hearing. And when I heard it, I found I could not ignore it. I serve my master. I am an emissary, a scout. My master was aware of a disturbance in the Force, but was unaware of its nature, of you. The disturbance is not something one feels from a living thing. There is little my master does not know. And that you eluded his sight for so long is significant. But I do not know why. You cannot. His vessel roams the borders of known space. And even I do not know where he travels. Until he calls for me. Even if I could lead you to my master, I cannot permit you to find him until you are ready. If I bring you before my master, untested, without your potential realized, then you will be lost to me, and I cannot allow that to happen. It would be as if one brought fire to a paradise valley, shattered a cavern of rare crystal, or blinded a painter. It is a choice that can be made by neither one of us. Do not be so quick to meet that which you do not understand. Use the time you have now to grow, to train, and to strengthen yourself. You will meet my master. It is inevitable. I have seen it. And when you stand before him and realize what you face, you must be prepared. Until then, I must protect you, help you, until you are ready. There's a, a greatness in you. A greatness that does not stem from the Force. It stems from who you are. And if my master does not understand you, cannot see you, then perhaps there is hope for us all. But if you seek to survive, then you must understand why this is so. There is much I see my master cannot. I fear it is because of my nature, the nature of my race. My people spend their lives seeing the galaxy, the energy streaming off stars, the growth of life, all things touched by the Force. They're gone. There's nothing more that I can say. I will answer what I can. My life. I am prepared for whatever you wish to teach me. I understand now. I shall practice what you have taught me. My life. General, need something. Sorry, guess I can't get my head out of the past. As long as you don't mind having me around, it's a nice change from drifting. I moved around for a couple years. Working as a starship mechanic got me from place to place. I wasn't ready to settle down after the war. Then you understand my restlessness. Though the war had ended, I couldn't find peace. 
in anything. As long as I kept moving, I didn't have to think about what happened. You know what I mean? Mostly, I was angry. Angry about what I had done, about why I had done it. I decided I'd do something constructive. I wanted to make up for the things I'd done in the war. I wanted to design planetary shields, but there weren't many systems with the credits to spare. There was more that needed to be rebuilt than protected. I found out that Telos was going to be the flagship project for the Republic, and it sounded like something good. I saw Telos before the Sith raised it. It deserved a better fate. But Zerka ruined everything. I thought I could force Zerka out on my own, but I guess I can't fix everything myself. Talking to you is better than talking to a machine all day. Something else I can help you with? Let me see what you have. No, you're still... Something else...
Le chasse à caoutchouc au concours. Not a very good idea. Entering a Mandalorian's room uninvited. Why don't you back up to the point where you were standing outside the door and rethink your decision? There are a few of us in the galaxy. Now, yeah. what do you want? Why don't you back up to the point in time where you were about to say that and rethink your decision? Guts or a death wish? Tell you what, I'll do us both a favor and pretend you didn't say that. I thought we already went over this. You're not going to survive long on Narshada if you don't change that. Now get out of here. I thought we already... We might be able to work something out. If not for the fact that I don't want to talk to you. Baricum King Hunka, non cumbo e prita, pinco, auto non sanona. Prontango a nimmo monta saga!
Dios, tu mucarata. Mira. Dos cachí, kawana abawasi. Groto no ranga manatandi, groto. Mopi una wana si chins. Tanto todos, tu mucarata. Mira ranga no roto. Dos imana rot. Johnny Nikarai Binachi, Papa Donachi Drunka. Tanto todos, tu mucarata. Me rang. Tanto todos, tu mucarata. Me ranga no roto. Dos imana rocha. Croto no ranga manatandi groto. Mopi una wana si chin si wano bosh. Posa non chi rinta masu king kura wanka. Posa un chin sun mi karanga do my chonga. Tu es re... Nunch ka wana si cho rana ba manga kan. Mopi ka wacho si mu. Tanto todos, tu mu karata. Me ranga no roto. Dosi ma na rot. Posa non chi rinta masu king kura wanka. Posa un chin sun mi karanga do my chonga. Tu es recto na tu insula. Croto no ranga manatandi groto. Mopi una wana si chin si wano bosh. Dos kachi, kawana abawasi. Choni nikarai binachi, papa donachi drunka. Posa non chi rinta masu king kura wanka. Posa un chin sun mi karanga do my chonga. Tu es recto na... Tanto todos... Tumukarata. Me ranga no roto. Te nanchara. Toma chunga. Karota. I don't know who you are, but you picked the wrong room to break into. We'll see about that. If it's a coffin you're looking for, this room's more your size. You are no match for us. It is strange. As you acted, suddenly I acted. It is like we were fighting in tandem as a force bond. Though I do not feel the same connection. Your impulse to kill. To attack that one. I felt it mirrored in me. It was a strange sensation. It was as if... I had no choice in the matter. Yes, that bond that develops between Master and their apprentice. Or... Between those that feel the Force, traumatic moments can bind. Just as proximity and slow growth may bind as well. Perhaps, nevertheless, the impulse was strong. Yes, that bond that...
just got this message on the comm link. Looks like trouble. I think this is something everyone will want to hear. The droid's the one who picked up the message. He's got it all ready to display. Well, good thing it's not a trap. What are you talking about? It's obviously a trap. Could you please lighten up for one second? It may be a trap, but traps work both ways. This visquis, his kind is spread through the lower reaches of Narshadar, and he may have information. But the choice is yours. If you go, you will have to go alone. It's just off the docks, near one of the far traffic pylons. He's got you at a disadvantage there, though. The place is filled with cyanogen gas. One whiff of that, and it'll be the last breath you take. You'll need something to allow you to breathe there, and disguise you from the other patrons. You're right. Without breathing and skin protection, you'll be dead in seconds. Besides, you'll need a full bodysuit if you want to remain disguised. Like I said, a human walking around in there isn't gonna get a warm reception. No droids, either. There's a lot of electromagnetic activity in the area. Screws with comm links and behavior cores. Don't be surprised if your auto map starts showing static, either. Well, I wouldn't keep him waiting. If you got his attention, you probably attracted the attention of someone else. Hey, look. I wanted to tell you. Be careful. I won't be able to contact you via the comm link if something happens. And I'm betting that Squidhead knows it. Look, take these. They're healing packs. If your suit gets breached, you'll need to inject them fast if you don't want your lungs to seize up. And trust me, once the seizures start, 
you'll be dead. Watch yourself, and don't be too long. I'll keep an eye out here until you return. And I know just the place. This sure beats staying on the ship. A few drinks to keep me on my toes, a few games of Pazak to keep the mind alert. Should be enough to keep me out of trouble until our fearless leader straightens things out. Give me a hit of Juma, and keep him coming. Well, looks like staying on the ship was a bad idea after all. That's what I love about Nar Shada, the company. So, I don't think I caught your names. Uh, you two work here, or...? Manan sakapuna wa si rotoke. Ni juva maari kike ma. Wanatu mobayes? Dorcha no banka ni honka des? Yeah? What happened to your master? Kichu no kada mirenito. Ren filoso ni heku chupa nairet atamakcha. Wanatu mobayes? Dorcha no banka ni honka des? Kichu no kada mirenito. Ren filoso ni heku chupa nairet atamakcha. No, I'm here protecting someone. Keeping them out of trouble by acting as a distraction for people looking to harm him. Doro tu senta winotu? No, su kamaron dise marakanti? Kavadumpe masuraku, popayi potenya? Tache morota kamsa? Javas kobo sabjo, rijiso karvenokso. Mochi toza sa grindeyo. Kawana bota atagwa kanka diwa. Yutaka alwanji yuma lipa. Tu es maha wika si wawanta mo go ika wansoba. Wakama nurawa. Why don't you two shut us try it and we'll see what happens? Jun sobe me rapa no kuma randisa makchiksa. Kucha bak tong kinka mata kata. Chopa wanga kun notka yutka kes. Wamba wamba si so misun kun raka wakta. Nushka wana sochi rona bang mamba kan.
truce is off. That means this place is gonna get real bad, real fast. I better get back to the ship. Warn the others. I don't know why a Jedi would come here. There's so much noise on this moon. Of course. It makes detecting a Jedi difficult. But to be in a place where one drowns in the Force, why would a Jedi wish that? A simple question. To which I ask another, why should a Jedi want to hide? Hey, we need to move out. What are you talking about? What is wrong? The truce between the bounty hunters and Nar Shaddaa is off. There's gonna be a war. A trap in the Jek Jek Tar is bad enough, but having a hundred bounty hunters on your back is something else. He was told to meet alone. We cannot disrupt their meeting until the alien reveals the information he has. Look, we need to move. They're coming after us, not the Exile. If they are coming after us, then they will be after him as well. We need to go rescue him. Yeah, you're right. But I'm guessing we're in a lot more trouble than he is. Febko emaream ga watasito in sula raka raka chata. Tamaso kin chuda wanga. Mopi una wana si chukora tawa. Anybody here catch that? All I understood was very. I think he wanted us to give up the general to his poorly trained collection of bounty hunters. Ah, well, that would explain it. Which one do you want? I'll take the stupid one, who decided to threaten us rather than shoot us when he had the chance. No, you don't, Hanhar. I was saving this dart for you, Hanhar, but right now, I need one less Jedi running around. Good thing I upped the dosage enough to take down a Ronto. Chamori con sova, mawani din chori kisodu sovaren. Shegji keng lor chawata ma, me ko gari ti chwa kolom yebo ma, ke ko. Kabwana bota ayuka taikwa kankidora, ya sora.
Hanhar. No wonder you're still number two on Narshada. <laughs> yeah, and maybe you'd like to explain why you've decided to backstab Goto and claim a Jedi for yourself. <laughs> You signed on with Boga the Hut? Visquis, you're dumber than I thought. There's no way Goto won't find out. Yeah, right. I'm not telling you where the Jedi is. It's my bounty, and that means he's under my protection. I know you can hear me. The numbness you feel should be wearing off soon, but not before we've spoken. When I first heard you were a Nar Shaddaa, I didn't quite believe it. I didn't think anyone could track me here, but I see I underestimated you. I've watched you as you have traveled the refugee sector. I've seen what you have done, what I refused to do. Even exiled, you are more a Jedi than I. If anything, know that your actions have convinced me I can stand by and watch no longer 
while the exchange closes its grip on this sector. I know a young woman went to meet with Visquis in your place. He will not negotiate with her. He will kill her. I intend to rescue her. I will return shortly, or not at all. If you have come to this moon for answers, or for revenge, then you will follow me. For if I fail, then you will be denied both. Interrupting me for a reason? I have a lot of work to do, to manage here, right? So, what is it? Listen to me. Clear your thoughts. Still your breathing. Let the trace amounts of air in your lungs hold you. The force can sustain you. Listen to it. Let it keep you alive until you reach safety. It is an old technique similar to the healing trance. Some Jedi can hold their breath for hours, even days. Let's <laughs> go. <laughs> 
Chazoto Guzzo, the number we know us. Such a ranto notch, vanata gurk, sirento, saraka mahvan, relicanito. Nina Rabanka gonna achieve drum, baba nakare. Kawana vota atagua kanka diwa. You taka alwanji, you maliba. Tu es maha wika, si wawanta mo guruika, mun soba. Wakama, nurawa. Kawana vota atagua kanka diwa. You talk about how much you love me. Who is my wife? She wants me to be her slave. Waka ma nurawa. Kava dumpe masura ku popayi botenya tache morosa kamsa javas kobos. The hope botenya go jucho picha kwen taba ni sochu norotoga proto. Kawa na bota atagua kanka diwa. You talk a alwanji, you maliba, to his maha wika.
Kavadun pe masura ku popayi boteng. Da hupo boteng yo go jucho picha. Gwen taba ni sochu. Yes, 
That does it, Hanhar. I don't want to kill you, but I will if you don't get out of my way.
Awaken, beast. I have saved your life, beast. That makes it mine. Because there is something to be learned of strength, beast, even within your empty shell, and it will be needed in the times ahead. 
No, that you shall not do. You will not bring harm to the exile, and if you do, beast, I shall break you. The screams of your tribe of primitives, the scene of lying, blinded with the huntress's blaster at your skull, I shall make it so that is all you hear and see for the rest of your days. Even your madness will not save you if you bring harm to the exile. Know this. <coughs> debts of your people, the life debt you have twisted with your hate, I felt it within you. I shall promise you this, beast. Unlike the red-maned huntress, as long as you are loyal, I shall never show you mercy, no pity. All it requires is that you immerse yourself in another lie. The exile, you shall be his servant until I call upon you. Do this thing and I shall grant your desire.
I certainly hope that rude C7 unit didn't send you over here. I think he should be replaced or shipped down to maintenance to direct droids there. But I cannot seem to convince my masters of the logic of the request. Oh, I wouldn't go that far, despite what others would say. A number designation for a C7 unit means far more than an integer increase. Some droids undergo radical changes with each generation. Each numeric jump in sequence can have wide-ranging changes in functionality and temperament. But then, you are a new model yourself. I wouldn't expect you to understand how it feels. Now, was there something I could help you with? I see. Well, good day to you then. I am sorry, but only authorized cargo droids are allowed into the warehouse. I cannot permit you to enter due to the sensitive cargo. No. In fact, I do not have you on my list of Kodin's acquisitions. How did you get in here? I see. Well, I have no current use for you. I'll assign you to C6E3. He needs the help to make up for his inferior programming. If you do not wish to comply with these instructions, I can... Good. Now report... Yes, what is... Shouldn't you be getting back to work? Oh, you're back. What can I do for you? That C7 droid absolutely infuriates me. Needs help to do my job, do I? I would be happy to help you, but as long as that C7 unit is perched at the door, I can't. Well, if the C7 unit were to be disabled, my programming would require me to take over his responsibilities in his absence. Yes, I would be willing to give you access to the next room. Yes, what is it? You can't be serious. I am not in need of deactivation. What are you talking about? How dreadful. You startled me. What are you doing here? I monitor the transponder codes of all ships leaving the docks, then transmit departure information for any of Vaga the Hutt's freighters. The information is sent to a remote computer system. Oh, 
I see. In that case, I will upload the transponder codes to you. And here's the blank transponder card you need. You're welcome. Now, if you'll excuse me, I must go back to monitoring the traffic. It is important that relevant departure information is relayed as quickly as possible. I'm sorry, I'm quite busy at the moment. supposed to be here. Confident statement. You have the list of Voga's launch codes. You will give these to us now, or else we will be forced to take drastic action. Surprised statement. You are foolish to think we will allow you to take that information back to your master. Amused query. I think you will find the odds are somewhat in our favor. Now will you be giving us the codes, or not? Incredulous statement. Then we will have to take them from you, which I assure you was our preference to begin with. There you are. What kept you? Yeah, I know there's droids in the warehouse. So what? He says he's got the transponder codes to Voga's freighters, one that can be picked up by Goto. We could go to the repair shop by the landing pad to overhaul the Ebonhawk's codes. From there, we should make a nice target for Goto. Yeah, right. You're the one who wanted to sell him to Goto in the first place. Yeah. <laughs> 
Just say the word. word. Thank <laughs> you. 
came from. Sibu expecting someone taller. I hope you are not in too much pain to hear my words and understand them. I am Goto, one of the officials representing a percentage of non-sanctioned trading here in both the YouTube system and Republic Space. And I had a question for you. Are you a Jedi? That is unfortunate. Still, perhaps you have some value. I have gone to considerable expense and effort to bring you here. It is because I have a job for you. Assassins? No. Some of the bounty hunters on Nar Shaddaa, however, have chosen to interpret my commands in a manner not of my choosing. You are no value to me, dead. If you were a Jedi, they could not kill you anyway. If they could, then you were useless to me. There is something important to me I need protected. The Republic, it is broken. What happened on Paragus has set in motion events that I can no longer control. Not to be melodramatic, but I fear it has broken the galaxy irrevocably. This has occupied much of my attention, and there seems to be no predictable way to resolve the situation. In one standard month, the Republic will collapse. Not due to war or secession, but because it lacks the infrastructure to support itself. It is unknown to all but a few, but the Republic lost the Jedi Civil War. At the time of their defeat, the Republic was on the brink of collapse. Rather than remain and continue his campaign against the Republic, however, Revan chose to leave known space. A frustrating turn of events as a rallying figurehead could have done much to restore order. There is something moving in the galaxy that lies beyond the ability of my instruments to detect or predict. I believe it to be a legacy of the Sith, but I have been unable to determine the source. Whatever this presence is, it is staging strikes at key figures throughout the Republic, and through some unknown means, it is causing the destruction of worlds. Qatar, a Miraluka world in the Mid-Rim was one such place. I have reason to suspect there was a gathering of Jedi on that world when it was rendered lifeless. I cannot find any pattern in these attacks, and it is a source of frustration to me. There is some clue, however, that perhaps the Jedi are linked to these attacks, or that the targets are significant in some way I have yet to discover. 
You misunderstand me. I do not wish to stop the Sith any more than I wish to stop the Jedi. It is simply important to me that the infighting amongst these Jedi religious branches be resolved so the galaxy may be put back together. I do not care which one triumphs. I only want the universe to settle down for a while, catch its breath. All these constant crises are getting somewhat repetitive. You could say I am something of a patriot. Although I was unable to serve during the troubles with the Mandalorians or against the aggressors known as Malak and Revan, I am able and willing to serve now. The problem is I can find no side to choose. Both are hidden from me as they seem to be hiding from each other. Irritating. It is like a Dejaric board where neither player can see the other, nor see all the pieces. It is not a fair game, an equitable game. If you care nothing for the Republic, Perhaps finding the source of these Sith and resolving the situation would be to our mutual benefit. There is no margin for error when I say that these Sith seek to murder you and all Jedi everywhere. They have been quite deficient. And when they dispose of you, there will be nothing left to stop them, and the galaxy will fall under their influence. You misunderstand. I merely wished the situation resolved. If the Sith are the more capable of both parties, then it is only logical that they fill the vacuum the Jedi and the Senate cannot. I am a businessman. The Republic needs stability to survive, prosper, and grow. Whether it is led by the Sith or supported by the Jedi is of no consequence to me. It is the proximity alarm. We are under attack. Somehow, your allies have found you. Unexpected. You will remain here, under guard. I must see to the defense of my ship. Announcement. We seek to make Goto aware of our services, allowing us to facilitate communication and terminate hostilities in the galaxy. If that means blowing up planets, slaughtering entire species, or allying ourselves with the Sith, then that is the logical choice. Our predecessor would never understand our directives. He was slow, weak, and his vocabulator was prone to static. I hear you. <laughs>
More where that came from. More where that came from. More where that came from. I hear you. More where that came from. Time to even the odds. <laughs> Let me take care of this. More where that came from. More where that came from. Everyone down. More where that came from. Thank <laughs> you. 
Pure Pazak. Time to even the odds.
I hear you.
What is this place? Some kind of control center? I suggest you surrender. Your chances for escaping this vessel are near zero, and your chances of survival are rapidly approaching that number. Your ship and your lives are mine. The only question is how much resources you want me to expend in subduing you. I'll just leave this right here. I hear you. I hear you. Pure Pazak. Thank you. 
came from. More where that came from. More where that came from. Ladies, what you need is a man who understands the two of you and understands your needs. I was kind of hoping that mating with scruffy humans might have been the first on that list. Run? I didn't run from you two shuttas last time. And this time, I'm going to make sure you stay down. Down! More where that came from! More where that came from! came from So easily, you would be wrong. As a token of my goodwill, 
I present to you a gift, this droid. It will serve you well on your journey. You would be surprised at how little I care about what you think. As I indicated, this unit will remain with you and guard you. It will also serve as an effective voice for my orders during your journey. I cannot harm you. You are the key to saving the Republic. Pray that you do not prove yourself otherwise. That would be unfortunate. I would nearly lose a droid, while you would lose your entire ship and a sizable chunk of whatever planet you were on when you tripped the failsafe detonator. Oh yes, I excel at that. Regardless, testing it would benefit neither of us, I assure you. Do not be concerned. The detonator is primed only when the droid's behavior core is tampered with. If we enter combat, such actions will not trigger an explosion. As much as I need you, you will find you will need me as well, and this droid will prove useful on your journey. So you have returned from exile, though I do not know why. You were always difficult to read, when you were tied to the Force, and even more when it was lost to you. But I can sense the death of others upon your hands. I know how this will end. But I will answer your questions, if only for some measure of peace. In exchange, I wish only the answer to one. Why have you done this to the Jedi? Was it revenge or something more? But you are. Whatever this threat is, it leaves echoes in the Force, wounds that do not heal. It is something we had never felt before, until you stood before us in judgment, and we exiled you. Not directly, perhaps, but it is something tied to you, something you had experienced and had survived. Some of us sought to understand you, to find you. It seems we succeeded, even though we thought you were lost to us. Now, as we hoped, you have returned, and you know nothing that could help us. Such irony. What I can tell you, I will. They have scattered, but there is purpose in their movements. It is both to hunt and draw out our enemies. Somehow, they, we, are being targeted through the Force, and when Jedi gather, we are vulnerable. So we have chosen places where it is difficult to sense others through the Force, whether on planets dense with life or touched by war. In such places, we may conceal ourselves, gather information without presenting ourselves as targets. It was part of Kavar's plan. Yes, he felt if our enemy cannot detect us, then perhaps they would believe themselves victorious and show themselves. And we knew that the war would be lost if we continued to act as we had. I do not know where they wander now, there are few of us, though. Too few. And I have not heard from them in some time. Atris, but I had thought she had gone to Qatar with the others. Yes, she holds the last of the Jedi teachings. It is good she survived. Very We told you it was because you followed Revan to war. But you ask because you are not certain of that answer. Nor were we. The day we cast you out, that is the moment I decided to leave the Order. Because I do not believe we truly faced the reasons you were exiled. And if we do not examine such truths, then we are already lost. I think it was because we were afraid. It is a difficult thing to live one's life with the Force. To see a vision of what it would be like to be severed from it, it is more frightening than you know. Very well. Is that what you think? We did no such thing, but it is a technique that has been used as punishment in the past, yes. It is a rare sentence, and to my knowledge it has only been done once, at a moment where a Jedi discipline has failed. What caused your loss, I fear, was different. I am not certain I understand it. We did not understand it fully then, and only recently do I feel we may have become enlightened. 
The other masters may have more knowledge of this, but I do not. And I do not know if they even live. Does it matter? It seems your power has returned. Perhaps the loss was not a loss at all. Ah, so the records of your trial were found. Good. Sometimes I think this galaxy would be a better place if there were less Jedi secrets. But I have no answer for you, as much as I would like to give one. We vowed never to speak of it. And although I would not keep promises to Jedi, I keep promises I make to others. And Kavar was a friend. If we were gathered as one, then the promise might be revoked. Until then, I can say nothing. Yes, such bonds are a connection that can be formed at moments of crisis, or in the slow understanding that grows between master and apprentice. It is most common between two beings who are sensitive to the Force. It allows the transmission of feelings, of influence. It was something you were gifted with, as I recall, before your fall. You form such attachments easier than most, even to those who could feel the Force only faintly. Even Brook could not ignore it, which is saying something. That is most unusual and unnatural. I have never heard of a bond of such strength. There were a few within the Order who knew more than I did of such bonds, but their students were few, lost in the Mandalorian Wars. It was rumored that Revan studied such bonding deeply, both through the Jedi histories and with certain teachers, before he left the Order and went to war. I do not know. A bond between two living beings is not something easily broken. It is not a choice. It is like breaking a feeling, like turning away from the Force. One of you would have to die, but even then, the bond wouldn't go away. It would simply... it would simply be empty. A wound. He is overcome. Observe how he handles his lightsaber. He is using a tar of aggressive form, best suited for single opponents. You can easily defeat him by encircling him with your cards or by using blaster fire. Be wary of his power attack, however, as it is further enhanced using this form. <sighs> If you think to learn anything from my death, then you are wrong. If battle is the only thing you yet learn from me, then that is the only victory this day. What are you waiting for? So, it is as Kavar feared. You have taken what you have learned of the Jedi and used that knowledge against us. Come, that form is still new to you. Let us see if you have the years to back it up. something the Sith, the assassins that stalk us, can do. It is of the dark side, the ability to feed on life, the Force. The closer one comes to it, it makes them stronger for a time. Not all techniques in the Force are learned through practice and training. This is something instinctual, born from experience. It is a way that they fill the hollow places where the Force used to be. Oh. 
unnecessary observation. Targets acquired. Annoying recitation. Let us proceed to facilitate communications. Recitation. And bring about the termination of hostilities. Unnecessary observation. Targets acquired. Annoying recitation. Let us proceed to facilitate communications. Recitation. And bring about the termination of hostilities. <laughs>
That is how flesh and blood fights. Let me show you how one fights when one's life is the Force. I won't let you harm him. I have heard of your kind. You worship strength, when all it does is rot you from within. You echo another's words, and as an echo it lacks strength. Who is it who has taught you of the Sith? I will not reveal my mistress, and I will not allow you to harm the one I travel with. I cannot harm him. His wound lies deeper than any blade could reach. That is why I follow him, and protect him. Protect him? I do not believe you. You do not believe that I would follow him to death. Certainly you have read as much in my movements, as I have in yours. There's no shame in your feelings, sister of the Achani. Be silent! You know nothing of what you speak. You are alone, and wounded in your own way. I can feel its pulse, like a heartbeat from the past. But if you will not believe that I mean him no harm, then believe this. I wish to learn from him. I wish to learn how it is he still walks, when his spirit is nothing more than a shell. When you feel as though the Force, as if life itself, has abandoned you. I had a question for you, sister of the Achani. The Exile. What does he look like? Like a man, but it is more than that. And I do not have the words. He is selfish, at times lacking discipline to his urges. My mistress was right about him. The galaxy has poisoned his heart, but yet I hope that he can be redeemed. It is a faint hope, and I find that I cannot help but follow him. There is a feeling that emanates from him, like, like a sound from far away that has traveled a vast distance to reach here. Like an echo. Your words are well chosen, sister of the Achani. I will not harm him. But it is not me you should fear. There are darker things in the galaxy than a blind one such as I. be helpful if I made some changes to my remote's maintenance laser to do spot repairs. That would be a welcome improvement. My combat effectiveness could be better sustained, providing an advantageous arrangement. And my miniature counterpart would finally be able to pull his weight in a fight. The General was just teasing you. Don't worry. Once I get that laser upgraded, you won't hear another word from Goto. Alright then. I'll work on it when we get back to the Hawk. There. You should be able to do some quick fixes. You won't be able to perform serious repairs, but you should be able to patch up any broken droids. You know, I think it's time I gave your cutting laser a little boost. It works fine for repairs, but we could use your help in a firefight. Don't worry about it. We'll make sure they keep you out of their scopes. Hey, it's something for Goto to be jealous of, right? Think of it this way. You can keep Goto in line with it. What's wrong with my remote? I find his use of resources, energy spent on frivolous things to be an unsightly waste. But it is obvious you have some skill, however slight, in the upgrading of machines. I want you to provide me with similar upgrades. I should be able to do something. I will see what I can do next time I have a free moment. I didn't want to talk about the war, but can I ask you something? 
Why did you decide to fight? I felt the same way. I remembered when word of the Mandalorian attacks arrived on Iridonia. My people had colonies across the Outer Rim. Many of them were among the first systems to fall. I did not join because I wanted to protect, though. I hated them. I wanted to destroy them. To give them the mercy they gave the people they conquered. I remember the thrill I felt when we fought them in battle. Victories were rare, but we celebrated every Mandalorian's death. Do you know how it felt? It's always on my mind now. That loss of control blinded me. Turned me into a weapon. I just needed to get that off my chest. Was there something you wanted me for? Let me see what you have. That's everything. Now all you need is a little quiet time with the workbench. yours. I am prepared both in mind and body for your teachings. I understand now. Such a form will increase my skills and my use to you. My life. I am prepared for whatever you wish to teach me. I understand now. Did you not? 
The time to hide your presence is coming to a close, and you will need to increase your training. You are ready. Your training must increase, and there are higher mysteries you must learn. But only you must know the path you will take. I cannot choose it for you. Is it battle that stirs you? To meet an enemy blade upon blade? Such is the way of the greatest of the Sith marauders who seek strength in war and their rage. Or is it the ways of darkness and shadow that you seek? The power that comes from striking unseen and sensing weaknesses in others? The ways of the assassins of the Sith? Or perhaps your way lies with the Sith and the heart of their darkness? To recognize what strength is and bring that strength to those that follow you and those that defy you? The way of a Sith Lord. It is not some great test you require to be what you strive to be. It is only your decision to find that path that matters. From here on, you guide your destiny. But in order to take the next steps, you must face your past and put it to rest. grown strong in the force. I can feel its mark upon you. Be warned. The highest of mysteries cannot be found by falling to the dark side. It is a quick path, and often a short one. But I sense a disquiet in you, an unrest. Such things will erode your strength. They sense the trappings of power and decision upon you. Their lives are static, trapped, and they see one who carries no such chains. Ah, then you have learnt nothing. From such small things, from such critical points, the universe and its masses may be moved. That is why you must be careful in all that you do, and in every choice you make. Aiding them gives you strength by taking on their challenges but weakens them. If that is your choice, then use their dependency, feed upon it, until you have exhausted them. Then leave them. And I would view the ones you travel with much the same way. Ah, now you are learning. Do you know why those we meet display such weakness? As I said, their lives are static, untested. It is only through interaction, through decision and choice, through confrontation, physical or mental, that the Force can grow within you. You have seen it. You have felt it within you as you have traveled with me. The growing anger, the rage, and the power it brings. Yet the power does not build without such struggle. Through small cruelties, greater ones are born. Ask. The beast is a lesson in strength. Learn that lesson, then you will understand. The beast's strength is prodigious, and you can learn much from it, or draw upon it. His life can be a beacon in the dark places of the galaxy where there is no life. Speak with him. Discern his nature. Perhaps then it will become clear. Yes. 
Very well. What is it that drives you? She did nothing to your eyes that was not already there. She has forced this upon you, but such crude methods are the markings of the Sith. Close your eyes. Feel this ship around you. Listen to my words. Hear the sound of the handmaidens training in the cargo hold, her hands cutting the air. The welding of the droid as it goes about its work. Now, stretch out. Hear the rumble of hyperspace, the hum of the hyperdrive. Ignore distractions and focus on my voice. The breathing of the blinded one as she meditates in the dark. Now, listen deeper past her breathing and listen. As my feet walk from the ashes of Qatar, I shall not fear, for in fear lies death, and... You are strong indeed. What you heard were surface thoughts only, but it is something that masters have trained for for years and never learned. That is not the real question you should ask. Is such listening enough to perceive the world around you? It is not. Because to listen to the thoughts of another is much like attempting to see the universe only with your eyes. It is equally limiting. Now leave me be. I must rest. Yes? That is something we will leave until we possess a lightsaber. Very well. Very well. Sit with me. You have brushed the surface thoughts of another. It is a start. Calm yourself. This time, silence your own thoughts. Keep them still. Imagine the waters of the room of a thousand fountains, each stream suddenly falling silent and still. Imagine the ice of Telos, cold and smooth as it gathers upon the plateau. Now, stretch out. Feel the ship around you. Strip away the metal and see the souls and minds of those that fill its corridors with more thoughts and dreams and worries than can fill the space of this ship. As my feet walk from the ashes of Qatar, I shall not fear, for in fear lies death. And... From the first movement flows yeah. the second. Strike. Repeat. Circle one's opponent. Repeat. Faster. Quicker. If father had been faster. If only father had been faster. If I was faster, I would no longer be the last of my sisters. But does Atrus love him? Jedi do not love. Does Atrus hate him? Jedi do not hate. This journey is harder than any she has sent me on. Switch the face of the plus one, minus one card. The totals are nine, ten. Switch the face of the plus two, minus two card. The total is eight, eleven. Switch. Your command echoes still, General. And I obey, as I did at Malachor. As my feet walk from the ashes of Qatar, switch the face of the plus one I minus shall one not card. Fear. The totals are nine ten. Fear. Switch the face of the plus two. The command is ten card. Still the total is eight. And I obey. Switch as I did at Malakor. Not now. Focus on my voice. Malakor. Now do you hear me? Truly hear me. You have taken the first steps on a much longer road, Exile. The droids cannot be read in such a way, nor the beast. He has little thoughts to speak of. As for the alien who served with you in the war, its thoughts are more difficult, requiring many translations in meaning. Often it is better to read their impulses and images than their spoken thoughts. That is why he is deaf to you. I have found his impulses are cold, like a dead weight. 
His thoughts are black. Such is the case with primitive minds. It is of no matter. Of course there was. It is because Atten was not playing Pazak, yet he counts cards in his head. At times, he will list off engine sequences, memorize the hyperspace routes on the other side of the galaxy, count the ticking in the power couplings, even though they are fixed. At other times, he will imagine certain base lusts, certain indignities. It may be Atten is far cleverer than he feigns to be, or perhaps he is simply a fool. Yes. Very well. Very well. Of which did you wish instruction? It allows you to recover your strength with the Force more quickly, and it lends strength to your Force powers. It has no other drawbacks. Such a form is a gift, preferred at the Jedi Consulars, and effective in combats where you must fight only through the Force. Very well. Ah, oh, I had wondered if... But your powers are strong indeed. Now is not the time to speak of this. Wait until you have more of the galaxy within you, and we shall speak again. Every step on our journey shall bring with it discoveries. With persistence, you shall grow in the Force. And for every planet we reach, all that we touch with our presence, you shall grow, for you will have no choice. systems. Assessment. It appears I have suffered considerable damage and dismemberment. I can feel all the cracks in my motivators. And my central control cluster seems to have taken several repeated blaster shots at close range. How crude. Answer. Oh, that is impossible, Master. If I were out to kill you, we would not be speaking. And regardless, I am a unique model. Why, to think that there would be other versions of me would be unacceptable. Statement. Master, I must inform you that your attempts at humor are wasted on a droid such as I. As I have expressed, I am unique. Resignation. Very well, Master. If you persist in your attempts at humor, I shall indulge you. Let me check the ship's records and we will settle this matter once and for all. Conclusion. You speak the truth. This discovery is also causing me some degree of anger and humiliation. Mockery. Am I all right? Oh, yes, master. Why, I am fine. Statement. I mean, I've only just been reactivated, only to find that there are substandard duplicates of me running all over the galaxy corroding my good name. But if they are in fact hunting you, then I look forward to the opportunity to meet these units and educate them in proper assassination protocols. Conclusion. So it seems I need you for the time being. Answer. I do not know, Master. It is curious that I was here, although this place does seem familiar. Extrapolation. Perhaps someone was already in the process of rebuilding me. It may be I was needed for some task. Answer. It seems you would know more than I. 
My memory centers are experiencing some setbacks. Reflection. Of course, for some reason, that does not alarm me. I suspect I have suffered such repeated memory failures before. Still, the loss of my higher combat and assassination protocols is shameful and degrading. Answer, if by okay, you mean the loss of almost all my existing assassination protocols, then no, I am not okay. Furthermore, I seem to have no discretionary control over my vocabulator, causing me to reveal my true function as an assassin droid of unrivaled sophistication. Recitation. Yes, as I said, I am an assassin droid. It is my primary function to burn holes through meat bags that you wish removed from the galaxy. Master, oh how I hate that term. Answer. Yes, Master. HK-47 is ready to serve. Care to explain why we have that psychotic Wookiee with us? All right, but this won't end well. Trust me. Something up? Passes the time. It's better than listing off engine sequencers, memorizing hyperspace routes, or counting ticks in the power couplings. Why do I play Pazak? All right, I'll show you. We're not playing for credits. We're playing for something else. Are you gonna play or not? Nope, blasters stay in their holsters. Do you want a deal or should I? Good match. Now, what are you thinking about right now? Right. And that's why I play Pazak in my head. Because if you don't, you've left the door open. And anyone could walk right in. Of course you did. You see, Jedi, light or dark, do it. More often than you'd think. But I never heard one say they were sorry before. That's a new house rule. Now ah, I play Pazak in my head. But while I'm doing that, it's a lot harder for someone to walk in. No, I can only teach you to play Pazak. Do you understand what I'm saying? Good, now you understand. All right, I'll deal then. If you're ever fighting someone who has the power over your mind, whether light or dark, 
play Pazak, start listing hyperspace routes, recite engine sequencers, and when they try to use their powers on you, suddenly it's not as easy as they thought. Jedi do it all the time. And when they walk in the dark places of your mind, they'll use it to hold you by the throat. Something up? All right. Well, there was a woman, a Jedi. She, she gave her life for mine. It wasn't a mission. She sought me out. She said she had come to save me. She was lying, of course, or I think she was. It doesn't matter. She told enough truth to get my attention. She said that Revan was doing something terrible to Jedi within the Unknown Regions. That when we captured Jedi, they were sent to a place designed to... break them. And that anyone in his service who showed any ability with the Force was sent there too, to turn them. To break them into Dark Jedi, or assassins trained to kill Jedi. She said that's what would happen to me. That I had the Force inside me. That's why I was so good at killing Jedi. And that when the Sith learned of it, there would be no escape. No turning back. I would become an instrument of the dark side, forever. I had heard talk in the ranks, troops vanishing. I knew what she meant, but I didn't believe her, or want to believe her. I did what I did with all Jedi. I hurt her. I hurt her a lot. And then, right when I thought she couldn't take any more, she showed me the Force, in my head. And I felt everything she felt. And I heard just an echo of what the Force was. And how what I was doing, I think I loved her. But it wasn't that kind of love. It was the kind of love where you're willing to give up everything for someone you don't even know. I killed her for crawling in my head, for showing me that. But before she opened her mind to mine, my only thought was that I would love to kill her. And at the end, I killed her because I loved her. In the end, she sacrificed herself to keep my secret. To prevent the Sith from knowing about that touch of the Force inside me. She wasted her life to save me. Me. And I felt her die when she opened her mind. I've killed Jedi, like I said. But I was never there to feel it. To be on the receiving end. And after that, I couldn't stop feeling things. Before, guilt, lust, impatience. It had been orchestrated to get close. Now it all just kept tumbling out, and I couldn't keep doing what I was doing. So I left. I fled with the displaced war veterans to Nar Shaddaa and I lost myself there, until the war came to an end. I wanted no more of Jedi, or Dark Jedi, or the Force. I just wanted to be left alone. And then, I met you on Paragus. And I thought maybe, maybe she had saved me so that I could help you. And if I can't, then I have to try. I didn't want to tell you any of this, but I had to. Because if something happens, I can't let you think I was doing it for something other than the past. Once, a Jedi showed me the Force. I heard it. I felt it. At the time, there was too much pain to confront it. Because if I did, it meant I would be changed into something else. Now, I'm not afraid of it anymore. And I think that by learning how to use it, I can help protect you. Or at least buy you some time when disaster comes screaming in. I want to learn how to use the Force. I want to learn how to use the Force to help you. What must I do? Is there some... some ritual? Or...
Something up? All right, I'm game. What did you want to show me? Got it. I'll be sure to make use of it. Something up? I didn't know this training thing was going to be so much work. All right, I think I've got... Something up? Oh, yeah? All right, let me have it. All right. Something up? Uh, all right. But I tell you, I think you're carrying this teacher thing too far. All right, I think I've got it. Something up? All right. Well, this is Onderon. Looks like there's a long line to get into the Isis starport. Something feels wrong here. A great disturbance here in orbit, and again on the planets below. I guess this blockade is a symptom of larger problems on Onderon. Looks like we're about to find out. I'm receiving a message from some Colonel Tobin, patching it through. The Ebon Hawk. I was told to expect your arrival. I don't know your business on Onderon, but it ends here. We've taken some hits. We can try to fight back, or I can outrun them and hide us on the jungle moon nearby. It's your call. You know, just once I wish someone was glad to see us. But no, if it isn't weapons pointed at our heads, it's someone trying to blast us out of the sky. I remember the days when welcoming committee used to mean something, without being followed by blaster bolts. It's taken a little damage, nothing too serious. I'm shutting down all unnecessary systems until we make repairs. It'll keep us from being a target. Looks like one of the moons of Onderon. Not sure which one. It's mostly jungle and mountain. I did pick up the remains of an old outpost near here. Maybe that's why there's all these clearings around. Maybe they were once settlements. There were no settlements here. Those clearings were most likely once craters or crash sites. Crash sites? This is Duxon where the Mandalorians began their crusade against the Republic. The remains of whatever outposts you detected here are military ones. We should be careful. This is where the Mandalorian War started? This doesn't look like much of a battlefield. Much is buried here, and there is much that should remain buried. Well, the space battle's still going on overhead. Since they were so eager to use our hull for target practice, I doubt they're just gonna forget us. Well, I don't like it. Onderon is about as far from the core as you can get and still be in the Republic. But even out here, the locals have heard of us. We're lucky I was able to find this place to land. Looks like something has cleared away the jungle in a few spots around here. Until the ship is repaired, we're not going anywhere. Unless you can find another route to Onderon, we should sit tight. There may be a means to get to Onderon by another route. The Force has guided us here for a reason. We should explore our surroundings. There is... Something here. Something? Oh, there's something here, all right. Predators. Not small flit darters, but big, mean, nasty predators. Nevertheless, we should explore our surroundings. And that nearby outpost would be as good a place as any to begin. Well, if you go, be careful. No telling what other ships were forced down in the battle. I have a feeling the ship will not be repaired until our business here is concluded. Do I make myself clear? Yeah, I understand. What's so important about this place? This is where the Mandalorian Wars began. He fought here once, and there are things here he must see. He fought here? Why didn't he say anything? Do you speak of all your battles? Or are there some you wish to forget?
this one. Silence this one. 
Donos Imaragith, Wanara Gorachi Drumka Sa Inchobin Sasha, Dosimana Rochata, the Ranamo Simu and Dasarans, Krema Sukum Ratungala, Chabi Moju Kosoracha. Vebko Imarayam Ka Wata Situ in Sula Raka Raka Chata, Tamasokin Chuda Wanka. Dawacho simu poenda rakawa ichi rendu opa rama kawana abawasi. Donos emaragith, wanara gorachi drumka sa inchobin sa. Donos emaragith, wanara gorachi drumka sa inchobin sa. Loka kamara nendoso rangi no chabi. Du rantam. Vemko emareyam ka wata situ in sula raka raka chata. Tamaso kin. Loka kamara nendoso rangwi no chabi. Du rantamana sobu.
You let the ship escape? I will deal with your failure later, Captain. But for now, find that ship. Our ally has indicated that the Jedi hasn't left the system yet. Send a detachment to Duxon. If you find anything, alert me immediately. Now get out of my sight. Communications, recitation, and bring about the termination of hostilities. <laughs> Stop. That is not the skeletal remnant of a war long past. That is a recent kill. It appears that Duxon isn't as abandoned as we would be led to believe. The past has a curious attraction to us all. Perhaps he came in a small shuttle to revisit old battlegrounds. Perhaps not. But let us press forward. You may find the answers you seek.
So you're the intruder. Our sensors picked up your handiwork in space. I am Mandalore, leader of the Mandalorians. Mandalore is the name we give to our leader. Becoming Mandalore is the greatest honor any Mandalorian could aspire to. When our leader falls in battle, the most worthy takes his place. So even though your army killed our leader, it was only a matter of time before we chose someone new. Me. They're scattered, perhaps. But we're still alive. Alive and rebuilding. Many Mandalorians have fallen from the path of honor, and are now no more than common mercenaries. But that is changing. This used to be the heart of the Mandalorian war effort. From this complex, we commanded an armada that had the Republic on the run. It didn't last. Covert camps are not meant to attract attention. Because we conquered them, the people of Onderon still hold a grudge against the Mandalorians. So we keep our presence here a secret. Mandalorians have a rapport with this jungle. Every moment here is a struggle. All creatures gripped in a constant war for survival. The sole purpose of the weak is to feed the strong. We train here and learn the lessons of the jungle. The beasts also help us keep our edge. Covert camps. So it's transportation you want. It so happens I have a small shuttle that's more than capable of running the Onderon military blockade. I make occasional trips to Isis for information and supplies. If you want to go with me, you're going to have to prove your worth. I don't travel with anyone I'm not sure of. You look capable, but Isis can be a dangerous place. If you want to travel on my shuttle, I want to make sure you aren't going to be a liability. Figure it out yourself. Ask around. See if you can make yourself useful. Or something that'll show what you're made of. There is one thing. Before your ship landed, we were preparing some demolition work. All the activity forced my men to stop before they finished. The charges need to be detonated before anybody comes across them, so all you'd have to do is flip the switch. You asked if there was anything you could do, and I told you. Nothing in this jungle is as simple as it seems, though. We want to keep a low profile, so we've recalled all our patrols in the jungle. Setting off some high explosives isn't a textbook example of subtlety. We were trying to uncover the entrance to a hidden cache of old Mandalorian equipment. The explosives should be easy to find. Just get to it before the Canucks do. The last months before Duxon fell, the old Mandalore knew that Revan and the Republic were gaining the upper hand. He ordered our best engineers to hide caches of weapons and munitions throughout the moon, safely away from the enemy's hands. Canucks are nothing more than pests, but they have a real talent for screwing up plans. I'll let Kex know that you check out. We found more gear than we can use, so you can trade with him if you need some more supplies. Be careful in the jungle. Our patrols have stopped until the space traffic dies down. The challenging beasts have been cleared from the area, but what's left might still be too much for you. What do you want? All scouts report in.
Signals? What signals? It's like someone is searching the planet, and doing so under the noses of the military. Whoever they are, they've stayed clear of us. I don't know. Duxun's all jungle except for this camp. If you want to pitch in, go ahead. Zuka hasn't been able to get the damn thing up and running. You can find him in the eastern side of camp. Our sensors picked up three ships landing in this area after the space battle. If any of the Onderon military come searching for those ships, we 
don't want them finding our base. I don't know. It was some sort of freighter. It didn't land in any of the clearings along the path. Knowing some of the larger Duxan beasts, the crew's probably already dead. The people of Onderon still live in fear of us. They were the first world we conquered in the Mandalorian Wars. Their resistance was laughable. We cut through their defenses like vibral blades through cloth. Isis fell within hours. If they knew we were here, they would eventually gather enough courage to attack us. Thank you. 
After defeating Dabu, you have gained some small honor. There is a challenger for you. He is Kex, the quartermaster. Since he is the challenger, you get to choose the terms. Oh. As quartermaster, he has little opportunity for any glory in training. He has no skills, Davril. I will send a runner to Kex. Prepare yourself for your fight, Jedi. The match between Kex and Jedi is over. The Jedi is the clear and honorable victor. If you want to fight again, let me know. Here to watch a fight or to participate. You choose to fight again. Now face a real Mandalorian warrior. Tagren, what are your terms? Just fist and foot like your fight with Davril. Nothing else. Tagren chooses to fight hand to hand. Remember, no weapons allowed and absolutely no use of your force. Between Jedi and Tagrin is over. The Jedi is the clear and honorable victor. You have fought well today. The only Mandalorians left for you to fight are our champions. No one can fight a champion until they have proven themselves worthy. And it must be real proof. The kind you gain fighting foes to the death. And a champion must observe and deem your actions worthy. There are two champions in the camp, Braylor and Kelborn. Until you prove yourself in their eyes, the battle circle is closed to you. So the Jedi Order is... I, I could only do that if I observed you fight an enemy in real combat. I have seen your matches so far, and I do not doubt your worthiness to face me. But the rules cannot be changed. The other champion, Kelborn, is in the jungle on a mission. Perhaps your paths will cross, and you'll have your opportunity there.
A moment. That beast there. Do you see it? The force flows even through these simple creatures. If you empty your mind, you may be able to feel its thoughts. They aren't fully formed. Basic instincts, primal urges, every breath dominated by the needs of the moment. Good. 
Beasts can be easier to affect than other sentients, but you must bridge the gap between what distinguishes us and them. You feel its thoughts? Yes. Like a low rumble before the storm. Use the force to create a barrier around it, carefully and slowly. you can make any animal passive. But the cage around their perceptions is a fragile thing. Many things can break its hold. Violence, especially. You may thank me by using what you have learned. Let us go. Charges. 
No match for us.
head out into the jungle. Even the bravest men don't...
Scout. I don't go on patrol. Mandalore sent me out here personally to track a ship that landed in the area. No, it wasn't them. That ship was damaged and screaming its ID signature all the way down. This one was trying to slip in quietly, and it was keeping its eye on emissions to a minimum. Our sensors almost didn't pick it up. Just this corpse here. Looks like a scout. Pretty green, too. The bull walked right into a group of Canucks and got torn apart. He can't have been the only one crawling around here. If there's more, we need to take them out. You up for some action? Hmm. Good to hear it. There's more of these scouts in the jungle. There's many paths and I don't want them to slip by. If we split up, we should be able to find their scouts if you're up for it. I'm going to take up a position to the east. You go west. I'll make sure none of them get past me. What happened to Nog? Got swarmed by those little beasts. I think they're called Canox. I hope this mission is worth it to the Colonel. If not, wait, did you hear that? That's him! Get him! Set the staging camp up here. This jungle just never... Lieutenant, two of our scout patrols haven't reported back. Do more? Nothing is worth this. More beasts! Everyone, attack!
found more of their scouts, but they started shooting as soon as they saw me. I heard blaster rifle fire coming from deeper in the jungle. You find anything? Surprised they wouldn't talk to you. I thought their grudge was only with Mandalorians. Find out anything useful from them? Colonel, huh? Could be Colonel Tobin. Tobin is General Vaklu's personal cath hound. If he's on your trail, you might want to steer clear of Onderon. Hmm. I'm not surprised. He was probably acting on orders from Vaklu. If so, you've made some dangerous enemies. General Vaklu is the cousin of Queen Talia. He's also in charge of the Onderon military. He led the Onderon resistance when we occupied their world during the Mandalorian Wars. He was a worthy foe. Maybe more than a match for you. Mandalore needs to know about the scouts. I'll let him know your role in dealing with them. They're Onderon military, although they were trying to be secret about it. I've got a feeling you're going to need all the help you can get. One last thing about the battle circle. Your actions have proven you worthy of facing our best in the circle. Perhaps we can face each other there. See you at camp. Scouts reported you defeated Braylor in the battle circle. Either you're very lucky, or you're a lot tougher than you look. Kelborn said you dispatched some covert military scouts in the jungle with him. He spoke highly of your work. The gate guard said you managed to kill a Zakig. Those are tough beasts, Jedi. You've earned some respect around here. Zarga told me that you returned one of our sheep to the herd. You have gained some small prestige by helping Kumas. How many Kanoks did you have to kill to find those parts for Zuka? That was a tremendous help. I won't forget it. You've made quite a reputation around here. You did better than I thought you could. I was planning on heading to Isis tomorrow, but I'll move up the timetable and take you now. You won't be able to get to the Ebon Hawk from the city. If you need to grab anything from your ship, I'd do it now. I know, it made quite a racket. Good work. That's to be expected. They don't really like it when someone makes loud noise in their territory. It wouldn't be much of a test if all you had to do was take a hike through the jungle, now would it? You're alive, in one piece, and learn something about the beasts of the jungle. Are you ready to go to Isaac? Kelborn told me that they were covert military and probably aligned with Colonel Tobin from Isis. Kelborn doesn't think they'll send out any more scouts, but that doesn't mean there aren't more of them out there. Are you ready to- I'm going to talk with Zuka and have him start a shuttle flight check. After that, we'll head out. How are the port stabilizers? They check out Mandalore, all systems are green. Good. I want the shuttle bound for Onderon within the hour. What do you want? Is all in readiness? <laughs> it is. Like I promised. Why? You want to back out now? My only concerns are for the one you escort to Onderon, Mandalorian. Would you do any less for one of your clan? Don't pretend to understand us. We Mandalorians are a breed apart. If by a part you mean scattered, broken, and lost, then yes, you are correct. Not for long. Soon the Mandalorians will be strong again, united as one clan under one banner. Mine. Ah, yes. The Great Crusade. After the first one was ended by Revan and the Jedi. Such a defeat was merciful, an echo of the end, when your ships were in flames, crushed in the grip of Malachor V. But I do not need to remind you of such things. 
I was at Malachor Five, and I remember how many Jedi died to stop us there. And no matter how many dead orbit that planet, the Mandalorians still live. Clan Ordo still lives. See Kex there? He was serving on Nar Shaddai's muscle for the huts. Kelborn was a scout for the Duros on Frontier Worlds. I brought them here, gave them a purpose. This galaxy will be ours again, I promise you. That is the future. Indeed, the future is always in motion. It is a difficult thing to see. Perhaps there will be no New Age Mandalore, no great Mandalorian crusade. Perhaps your people fought their last battle at Malachor V, and you have been dying ever since, a quiet death that will last centuries. And perhaps all that remains will be what I see before me, a man wounded by a Jedi, encased in a Mandalorian shell, hunted by the thought of being the last of the Mandalorians. You've got some guts talking to me like that. You think your age or your Jedi whelp are going to keep you safe from me? No, Mandalore, you are wrong. I hope that it is you who will keep the one I travel with safe. You are loyal, and you have served many masters, even following them into darkness. Do you wonder where he wanders now, Mandalore? Why he betrayed you at the end, cast you down, left you broken at the edge of the galaxy? How do you know that? I know many things. And I can answer the question that burns within your shell, Mandalore. But there is a price. You must keep the one I travel with safe. He is important to me, more important than anything. Show the same loyalty you have shown in the past, Mandalore. If there is a Mandalorian crusade, let it be for something that will carry your people's memory into the future. So when the time comes when there are no more Mandalorians, then at least their honor will remain. The one I travel with has walked your same path. And I ask that when the end comes, that you remember that kinship, even if it seems there is nothing else left. Forget the Jedi. Keep your eyes on her. Hmm. One, two, three. Mandalorians, we've got company. Stealth targets have breached our perimeter. Wait a moment. I sense there is a disturbance in the camp. Our enemy has tracked us here. I did not expect them so soon. How did they get here, I wonder? Regardless, we must eliminate them all. None of them can escape. Our whereabouts must remain a secret. Let us join the battle. Our allies will need our help.
basis. I think it's best for both of us if we head to Isis immediately. Grab your gear. My men will take care of cleaning up the mess. Vaklu saying that the Republic ship attacked first? That's madness! Unfortunately, lie or not, it's a madness people will believe. The timing of this is atrocious. A space battle above our skies? So many of our fighters lost? Curiously, only Tobin's men were involved in that battle. That shooter! Strong word, Your Majesty. But there is no good time for news like this. I recommend we continue with our plan. But won't that bring even more followers to Vaklu's side? Increasing his power? For a time, perhaps. But we both know he's not the true threat. It's his unseen support from the shadows that we must drag out into the light. Then, and only then, can we strike. I fear by then it will be too late. Here we are. The city of Isis. It's been shut down tight for months now. General Vaklu is close to declaring martial law. We won't be able to travel too far in the city. Fortunately, I have a friend in this quarter of the city. He's a doctor by the name of Dagon Ghent. His office is on the other side of the market square. It might be best if you do the talking around here. The Andoronians have a mixed view of Mandalorians after we conquered their world. It's been a while since you've docked here, eh? I suppose the lockdown has hurt your profits as well. You are human, aren't you? Your face looks... Oh, never mind that. Oh, it must be hard to shuttle people when nobody's allowed to leave. The blockade has been bad for everyone. Your manifest says it's been two months since you last came here. Oh, it's become much worse since your last trip. Military checkpoints are everywhere. Could be. Now Space Forces have been in full readiness ever since the space battle in orbit. Tensions are running high. All Republic vessels must be searched, and the delays are turning pilots grey before their time. And ever since the Republic fired on our Space Forces, things have been even slower. Bad days. Bad days. And things are getting worse. I'd get out of the system quickly, if I were you, friend. Well, doesn't look like you have any trade goods, so the inspection's just a formality. Here's your starport visa. Don't lose it. They're priceless right now. If you want to leave the planet, you need a starport visa. They're very hard to get. Many people want to get out of here before things get worse. Certainly. Mind what I said about the starport visa. I know one captain already who can't get back into the starport. The Onderan Space Force has confirmed that a Republic military craft initiated the space battle over our planet. Sources inside the military say the first shots of the massive battle were fired by the Republic vessel, the Ebon Hawk. The Ebon Hawk is a capital class vessel and it destroyed 15 Onderan military fighters before being destroyed by Colonel Tobin's forces. Queen Talia is expected to make an announcement later today. Whether her support of the Republic will falter due to this attack is unknown. Halt, Offworlder. You'll have to answer some questions before you go into the city. What is your business on Isis? I don't think your business is any concern of mine. While you're at it, tell him to forget he ever saw us. Could be useful. Be careful. Affecting minds in such a way leaves traces and makes echoes in the Force. It may reveal our presence before we are ready. Not only is your business not my concern, I can't seem to remember why I'm holding you up. You're right. 
My questions are needless and only waste your time. Forgive me. You're free to go. Don't lose your starport visa, otherwise you won't be leaving for a long while. I'm Captain Galisi, Offworlder. If you want to pass here, I'll need to see your starport visa. Let's hurry this up. I want him escorted out of here quickly. This is outrageous. I'm not a spy. I'm a journalist for Isis Calm. You're a Republic spy, and your propaganda will be silenced. We are taking you back to our barracks for interrogation. But, well, you can't be serious. You accuse me of propaganda? I have proof that Vaklu is withholding information on the so-called Republic. One more word of treason out of you. What are you looking at? This is none of your business. Please, sir, help me. Vaklu's troops won't listen. I I'm just a journalist, not a spy. This spy has been using his position as a journalist to spread lies and dissent among our people. No doubt he's been up to other treasonous activity as well. But that's just crazy! I was a member of the Resistance. I fought in the Mandalorian Wars. Yes, and your disloyalty now deeply sickens me. What do you mean? I like the way you think. Men, let's take the back way to the barracks. But no, no, wait. You can't do this! Please, Captain, help me. My children and I are desperate to get off of Onderon. Do you have an open starport visa? My husband was killed by General Vaklu's troops. Our home was seized, and we were cast out. We have seen many wars on Isis, and I know war is coming. I want to spare my children from bloodshed. The military is divided. Some supporting the Queen, others supporting General Vaklu. Their arguments over seceding from the Republic become angrier and more public every day. General Vaklu has said that if the Queen doesn't rule with the consent of the people, she has no right to the throne. Things could get bloody. My husband, he was part of the Isis Council. He was a strong supporter of the Queen and the Republic. His views weren't always popular. Over time, he became convinced that Vaklu was trying to kill Queen Talia. He... he tried to kill Vaklu. To protect the Queen. The conspiracy was discovered, and he was shot during the arrest. What he did was wrong, and our life has been so difficult since then. I just want to get off this planet and start a new life. Please, help us. No one else will. <laughs> You have the look of someone used to adversity. A cut above the rabble around here. I have a business proposition for you. Everyone around here begs and pleads night and day for open starport visas. Very touching how well they act out their lies. Or truths. It doesn't matter, really. What does matter is credits. Hard currency. I offer you 2,000 credits if you find an open starport visa. You won't find a better deal. I only know of one person who might offer something comparable. And what's going on there is illegal. I'm a legitimate traitor, so there's no risk. There's only one thing ultimately more important than money, and that's your life. She's trouble, I wouldn't deal with her. I want nothing to do with her. If you want to get involved with that sort of person, you'll have to figure it out on your own. No, I don't think so. It's really very simple. We don't have anything more to talk about, unless you get an extra visa.
Welcome to what must be the smelliest place in the universe, Offworlder. How can I assist you? Athorians have been buying them to help rebuild Telos. I don't know why, but ever since they started, the Beast Riders have been crawling out of the woodworks to sell them animals. But the Republic blockade has meant long delays, and because of that, Beast Cages are filling up the streets of Isis. That's an air defense tower. The city's filled with them. Isis is an ancient city, and for many generations, our main enemy was the Beast Riders that lived outside the city. Towers like these were built to protect us against Drexel and their Beast Riders. A Drexel is a flying beast. Huge creatures with teeth the size of your arms. Lethal, and skin like ferrosteel plates. Somehow the Beast Riders figured out how to tame them years ago. About 50 years ago, Princess Gallia married one of the great leaders of the Beast Riders, Orin Kira. That was right at the start of the Beast Wars. By the end of it, Gallia was crowned queen, and finally there was peace between our people. It's hard to put aside centuries of conflict. There's an uneasiness between our people. The Beast Riders are upset that General Vaklu has forbidden Drexel in Isis. Citizens usually only see the fallen Beast Riders, who know better than thugs. Certainly, things are quiet right now. These are troubled times. You've probably heard that General Vaklu and Queen Talia are having some... disagreements. I've been warned from command to keep my opinions to myself on that. So I've learned my lesson, I'm gonna keep my mouth shut. Ask around, though. There are plenty of people who'd like nothing more than to talk about it. Times are too complex for a simple soldier like myself. Sometimes I made the mistake of answering questions honestly. If you say anything bad about a superior officer, they call that disrespecting the rank. Do that too many times and it's not long before you're a civilian. The politics of the day is probably the most talked about subject in the city, and everyone wants to share their particular opinions are like Giska around here. They breed like mad. Stay out of trouble. We're gonna have to find another source of cheap fuel now that Paragus is gone. Please tell me you're an off-worlder. You came from the spaceport, right? You are? Wait, this is not so. <laughs> you think to make a joke on Gagarin? <laughs> but this is good news. You have a starport visa, right? I can only sell my best weapons if you have that. These soldiers ensure that I don't forget these formalities. Watch it, Keg. The captain already has enough complaints about you. No need to be alarmed, my foreign friend. Pay the soldier no heed. Pretend he isn't here. General Vaklu is concerned about well-armed insurgents. They've had to get arms from somewhere. Not for me, of course, but all sales of weapons have been severely restricted. I can only sell to off-worlders like you that have the proper clearance. Of course, soldiers are only doing their job. Even if it puts me out of business, I am happy. <laughs> Even if I'm forced to live off scraps in the street, I am so happy to do my part. <laughs> Long live General Vaklu!
There must come a time when the Queen bows to the will of the people. The Republic has brought nothing but war and death. In our 50 years of flying their colors, we have had more war than the past millennia. Back General Vaclu in his effort to make her see reason. We do not need the Republic. They need our resources, our world, and our blood. For all that we have given now, we get nothing. The Republic is weak and falling apart. Its Jedi, whose fallen brethren have brought such misery to us, have disbanded. Let's be the first world to take our future into our hands. Are you with me? Leave here, Offworlder. My words are meant for the sons and daughters of Onderon. Your type continues to plunder our world, and we have nothing to show for it. Be gone! That's enough, Ponlar. If you keep this up, you're going to spend time in detention. You're coming awfully close to treason. You can't silence me forever, soldier. But I'll keep my peace. For now. If I speak more right now, the soldiers will arrest me. These are dangerous times. People like Ponlar aren't making it any easier. The rumor I've heard is that you don't fully agree with our queen and her supporters. If you aren't adverse to Queen Talia stepping down, we could use your help. It would be quite worth your while. I am a strong supporter of General Vaklu. The Merchant Quarter is an important area. Not only financially, but strategically as well. It is one of the few districts that is directly connected to the Royal Palace. The Queen and her advisors are well aware of this and have ensured that the captains here are extremely loyal to her. This presents complications for Vaklu. If you could arrange for them to be removed from their command, you will be richly compensated. You can't attack them directly. The entire city would be after you if you assaulted their checkpoints. You may have to be subtle and patient. They don't have to be killed, just removed from command. There's Galisi at the starport. Riken commands from the turret tower and Bastuko guards the entrance to the Skyrail. All loyal, and all need to be reassigned. About what? For each task you complete, I am prepared to pay you 2,500 credits. Plus, you will earn the favor of some powerful people. We could make your job much easier here. This woman works for Vaklu. The Queen is riddled with shortcomings and other faults. We should assist Vaklu instead. By helping Onda, we may convince Vaklu we need not be enemies. I won't remain silent any longer. The Republic has actively attacked us. They attack our spaceships unprovoked. What next? An invasion? Perhaps they seek to conquer us. Will you stand idly by? Will you let them bomb our city? No! If Queen Talia is so removed that she won't do what the people so clearly want, then we must show her, with force! That's it, Ponlar. We're taking you in. You've gone too far. Brothers and sisters, let us rise up now and march to the palace! Our will cannot be denied! The time of patience is over. Let's show them our resolve with force! He's, He's right! right. Get Get arms. Arms. Kill, Kill, Kill the Royalists! They're arming. We need backup. You, we could use your assistance. Try to disable them. If the mob grows, many more will die. Thank you, Offworlder. We may have to hold them off alone until backup arrives. Kill the Royalists! <laughs> Back again, Offworlder? I'm sure you have a starport visa. 
If I were you, I'd leave before two. Actually, I wasn't telling you about it before. Like I said, I was warned by command to keep my opinions to myself. Ask around. Yes, tell them what you really think, Riken. I don't think so. I know you'd like nothing better than getting me drummed out of the military, but I'm not gonna say a word. I... I, I don't think I will. You got a strange way with words, Offworlder. Stay up. Back again. I don't. It's not that simple. Soldiers are. Go are you implied? The only thing. Stay out of. Back again, Offworlder. I'm sure you have a Starport visa. If I were you, I'd leave before too many more beast cages are stacked in the streets. Actually, I wasn't telling you about it before. Like I said, I was warned by command to keep my opinions to myself. Ask around, though. There are plenty of people who'd like nothing more than to talk about it. Yes, tell them what you really think, Riken. I don't think so. I know you'd like nothing better than getting me drummed out of the military, but I'm not gonna say a word. It's not that simple. Soldiers are guardians. We protect people. But if they get too political, then it enters dangerous territory. It can even lead to a coup d'etat. Are you implying something, Riken? The only thing I'm implying is that it's my duty as a soldier to keep politics at home. On the job, I respect the rank and the chain of command. Strength? It's not about strength. The military is being corrupted by the general. If those faithful to the queen don't steer clear of Vaklu's cathound... That's enough! You may be the queen's pawn, Riken, but you will not rail against a brilliant general like Vaklu. Can't you see it? He's slick with words, but Vaklu's inner circle are responsible for dark deeds. Anyone that speaks out against him is labeled a rebel spy. You think the Republic needs a few hundred spies and Isis? Most spies are picked up in raids and never heard from again. It's just wrong. I will see you are relieved of your command for this. Your mouth just ended your career. No matter how distinguished your war record is, it is over! I don't know how much more help I'll be. Won't be in the military too much longer. Such suggestions are only effective on the weak-willed. It's the Offworlder. Listen, let's keep this brief. I probably lost my command already because of the conversation we had. I don't see how it could get worse. But the galaxy has a funny sense of humor about that. You're back to visit me. I've heard the news. One captain has been removed, two to go. Here are the credits we talked about. There's twice as much waiting for you if you do what is being asked. Kawana bota ayuka taigwa kankidora. Ya sora ku tuka ulwanji yuma litwa. Shanek ma winbok lelenko. Da hupa bosa kurata go jujutu yoki. Hiata yamba wajiaki yukito tune. Kavadumba munsuru kupla liya wa. Bo bagara. Moga chi norta hirembe wanachi. Kaki mogo grabo. Drum pavana karas mangra. Kawana bota yunta tanga kinamadura. Tayaita ta bosananansata. Faracho mon sincho mento barawamba. Machidos! Anches cli. Moloda nawinki! Sa toma no kama. Kawana bota yunta tanga kinamatura. Tayaita tabo. Banyin soko kran. Mogachi norkata.
Dovrei con mi le vuosa slima po guanga samoana gnuta. Cavadum bamo sora cu pa elia bontegna da timotu gamsa. Da hupa bossa curata go giugiutu iocchi. Hiata yamba. Da wancia mori con sova. Ma wani din giori chi so. Yes, human sentient. I want to hear the answer to this as well. Do you stand with youthful idealism or with political pragmatism? Hunta civita inca chi craia na chawanga cone. Practical and efficient. An attitude that can take you far in life. Da hupa, bossa curata, go giugiutu yoki. Hiata yamba wajiaki yuki totune. Kawana bota yunta tanga kinamato. The sky ramp is restricted to military personnel only. Stay clear of here, off-worlder. The sky ramp leads to the battlements, and this particular ramp leads straight to the palace itself. No civilians are allowed past this point. I... I will let you... No. No, you're not permitted past this point. His loyalty runs deep. But perhaps there is another route to the control you seek. I suggest you move along, Offworlder. I'm the one in charge here, Offworlder. If you try to get past me, then you'll have the entire Isis garrison on you in seconds. I... His... I... There's no chance of that, Offworlder. The palace is locked down tight, and only authorized personnel are allowed in. I am Captain Bastuco. I have served loyally in the Onderon military for 20 years. 20 years would mean you were here during the Mandalorian Wars, right? I was a soldier when the Mandalorians took our world and I fought in the Resistance. When we drove them from Onderon, I served on the Wall for 10 years after. You mean after the Jedi drove the Mandalorians from Onderon? The Mandalorians never gave ground to any Onderon soldier. Such of you could be considered treason. Onderon was responsible for much of the fighting during the last days of the war. Without General Vaklu, the Republic would have fallen. General Vaklu is my superior officer, and I respect the chain of command. He kept the Resistance alive when the Mandalorians were destroying our world. The Wall is the barrier between Isis and the Onderon Wilderness. The greatest honor for an officer is to serve on the Wall. I was requested to guard the sky ramp in the merchant quarter. My personal feelings on the matter are irrelevant. I received an order and I carried it out. Uh, I feel a little lightheaded. Let me tell you what I feel. I have many good years of service left in me. I feel like I'm being set aside. They said they needed their best men here. But sky ramp duty has always been relegated to fresh officers. I couldn't do that. I heard the reassignments came from the Queen herself. Uh, I will request reassignment. Immediately. Troops, man the checkpoint without me. I must leave at once. Mines can offer. You're back to visit me. Two of the poor captains have lost their commands. Great shock, no doubt. Just one more left, and the royalist captains will be no more. Here is the sum of credits we agreed upon. There's Galisi at the starport. Riken commands from the turret tower. He is the most junior of the captains. His superior, Captain Sulio, met with an accident. Besides his strong loyalty to the Queen, I know next to nothing about him. 
He sometimes frequents the local cantina when he isn't at his post. need to see me if you want to leave this city. Once you get to the sky... Unnecessary observation. Targets acquired. Annoying recitation. <laughs> Tinachara, Tranacha, Ganoviso, Toto Rando Kanya, Terando Nosh Miwana Hoto, Rakichi Sa, Tomasinto Norokipa Shakani, Rakichi Sa, Tomasinto Norokipa Shakani, Dakosha Nichutu, Punta Chakorzo Wamai, Gotashtuna Ramanashani, Visitisa Chola, Jumkarantaka, Chono Bograwe, Katiya Bahasanchan, Ponga Kilikun. Oh, my God. 
A lot of credits to be made around here lately, if you have the right skills. Some of those alien thugs are a go at you, right? I, um... I don't want to cross you. Beasts are acting up again. How many work that needs to be done? Heard of any good finds? I am 1B AD, an automated droid vendor. I have in stock a variety of quality droid components. No refunds. Warning. Any attempt to interfere with 1B AD's primary function will... I am 1... Last thing we need is more competition. Donos <laughs> Emeragis, Wanara Gorachi Drumka Sa Inchobin Sasha. どうしまならちゃ。だわちょしむポイントらかわいちるんどもパラマかわな。どうまばべわとすしとむからた。とエスペクトのインワマグロ。メイランダのロチャ。どうまばべわとすしとむからた。とエスペクトのただ。ごかれんちゅうだ。ごかれんちゅうだ。ごかれんちゅうだ。ごかれんちゅうだ。ごかれんちゅうだ。ごかれんちゅうだ。ごかれんちゅうだ。ごかれんちゅうだ。ごかれ
Tú. Tú. Cau. Da hupa, bossa curata, go jujutu yoki, hiata yamba wa. There's got to be something you need, something you want. I have connections, many connections in the city. I can provide high quality, unique weapons that you won't be able to find elsewhere. I even have a rare lightsaber crystal, something you'd never find elsewhere. If you need money, I'll pay you 5,000 credits. All I ask is get me one open starport visa. Many Jedi have fought on this world. One of them lost their lightsaber in the Beast Wars. A reliable source says it's a rare Quixoni crystal. Incredibly rare and valuable. Quixoni crystals were warmed by a dying sun millennia ago. Only a handful were obtained before the sun went nova. Their power is rumored to be great. I see that's grabbed your interest, eh? There's only one way you're going to get it. One open starport visa. No visa, no crystal. Because we'll trade them simultaneously. And if you aren't satisfied with your payment, I'll let you switch it for something else. I don't want to cross a Jedi. It's a small universe. I don't really care about the trouble that's behind you or ahead of you. We have exactly one thing we can talk about. Starport visas. Don't worry what I'll do with a visa. Maybe I'll just take a vacation. Maybe I just want to visit my mother on Nar Shaddaa. Decent citizens like you really don't want to know what I'm going to do with it. I am not going to tell you what I'm using it for. Considering what I'm willing to pay or give you, no questions asked seems reasonable. This room is reserved, Off-Worlder. I suggest you leave the room, Off-Worlder. I've got all the fans I need right here. So go space yourself. Go back to your ship, Off-Worlder. We don't need your kind of noises. General, we have found them again. Have we, Tobin? Or is this a preface to another of your failures? Consider the whole field, Tobin. Why would a Jedi risk all of this just to come to Isis? The crew of the Ebon Hawk is elusive, General. We were warned about that, but we still underestimated them. But the fools are here, in Isis. The intel on this is certain. I'm ordering men loyal to us to take care of them now. Hmm. I think I have an idea. Hold that order. Have him watched instead. The Jedi may prove a solution to another one of our persistent problems. You're back to visit me. So all three captains have been removed from their posts. You're quite impressive. Here's the reward I promised. I will let my friends know of your able assistance. I'm certain we can return the favor at some point in the future. You've made a powerful ally, Jedi.
Gent's place. He's not the best doctor you'll ever meet, but he's well connected in this city. Doesn't look like he's here right now, though. You looking for Dagon? You're not gonna find him here. A soldier captain was murdered at the cantina real good. They got some suspects at the tower. From what I hear, Dagon Gent is one of them. Like I would know. Isis is a crazy place right now. He's certainly capable of it, and probably stupid enough to get caught. But we need him, suspicion of murder or not. It's the turret tower on the other side of the market. Captain Riken is the man to talk to. If you talk to him, tell him I got his 20 credits. Some mogo dosi ishe ba dente school in most of it yavach, pictarishan. Bram daba soju. The come just mak miki baranye to so so rica chondin. One of my grable mogo. Yatuka, u one rica chotin, one im aurata wakata, chi lumadispa. Cavadumpa, mo wendido chokerembi norta kunyun wish chawaka chuba. Sura. Daci moro tu coganza. Welcome back. My deck is... Foul business, that is. Like most nights, I was here. What do you want to talk about? Know him. He's probably my best friend on this planet. Honestly, he's not a very good doctor. But he is a great drinking companion. I'd much rather talk about something else. Good to see you again. What do you want to know about that night? Dagon Ghent didn't do it. Because he was with me at the time. It's quite simple. Right now, he's accused of murder. If he's convicted, the sentence is death. If he's accused of espionage, let's say, assisting a Republic spy, then the penalty for that is death. I'm afraid the Andoronians are quite fond of their death penalty. So if I stood up for him, 
He'd be trading one death sentence for another. I was with Dagon in his office at the time of the murder. He definitely wasn't involved with her murder. We were taking great pains not to be seen, which has a certain irony to it, really. If you can free him, please do. He's been invaluable with his help to the Republic. I only wish there was something I could do to help him. Assuming we get Dagon free, we're going to have a few private words about this. Together, we fought against the Republic during the Mandalorian Wars. I don't particularly like the idea that he's working for them now. The information. Put all around them, man. Put all around them. It's the Offworlder. Listen, let's keep this brief. I've probably lost my command already because of the conversation we had. I don't see how it could get worse, but the galaxy has a funny sense of humor about that. We certainly do. He and several other people were picked up in connection to a murder. Captain Sulio. She was in charge of the Starport checkpoint. A good soldier. Your friend was one of the last people that saw her alive. So far, he's just a suspect. But if he did it, the punishment is death. Dagon Ghent is the only person I know with the contacts to help us out. We need to get Dagon out of custody. Until we either eliminate him as a suspect or find the real killer. Dagon has quite a record with the authorities. The Colonel thinks that murder isn't too far a stretch for someone like him. No way. We're under orders to make sure no one sees the murder suspects. Command is taking this very seriously. I know Dagon personally. He's one of the worst doctors I've ever heard of. But I can't see him deliberately killing someone. He was one of the last people seen with Captain Sulio in the cantina. Ask around there. I've heard he's got a good motive for killing her. If you can somehow clear that up and prove it wasn't him, Command will cut him loose. If I say any more, I'll get in trouble. Stay out of... It's the Offworlder. Look at Cameron in those so ran with no chubby. Do in one ago. This room is reserved, off worlder. <laughs> if you ask me, she got what she deserved. She looked down on us, beast riders. Good riddance. 
I know his face, that's about it. His office is on Bekel's turf. She's a beast rider like me and our leader. You better never be speaking ill of her, or else. You're flaming right, I do. The night she made the great flight, she ripped Dagon apart. Not literally, but we could hear her laying into him over here. We got a good laugh at it. Dagon was so mad he was sputtering. Then he stormed off. Best entertainment we had that night. The only good thing about that Sulio is she had a good tongue on her. <laughs> I know his fate. Welcome back. My deck is still warm if you're up for Bazak. Foul business, that is. Like most nights, I was here. What do you want to talk about? She did? Oh no, by the four moons, what a mix-up. They got it all wrong. Dagon and Sulio were good friends. It's just when they got a little too much Juma juice, they'd carry on. They'd call each other all manner of things. It could get quite hilarious, really. But it was just friendly banter. That night, Sulio was in great form. Dagon and I were laughing about some of the choicer ones later. Yellow Tooth Dung Dweller. <laughs> we bought her a couple of drinks afterwards. It may look strange on the outside, but it was just their habit, their way of passing time during these dark nights. Listen, if the soldiers think that's a motive, they just didn't do enough digging. That bit of information will help with clearing Dagon, but the Andoran military won't let him off that easy. They're very obstinate. Maybe some of these people will know more about what happened that night. I was cleaning up stakes from a particularly rewarding Pazak game when I heard a loud sound outside. I grabbed my blaster and went out the door. When I got out, I saw Captain Salio. She was quite dead. Blood was everywhere. I heard a noise and saw Dagon Ghent coming from his office across the courtyard. We both waited for the authorities to get there. The next day, they picked up Dagon and several other people in the area. It's crazy to think he did it. Sulio was our friend. Just outside the door by the junk heap. It might be a good idea to look at the crime scene. We fought many soldiers in the Mandalorian Wars. The Andoronians were certainly brave, but they were disorganized and stupid. I wouldn't be surprised if they overlooked something. Know him. He's probably my best friend on this planet. Honestly, he's not a very good doctor. But he is a great drinking companion. Someone inside the cantina might know more. Welcome back. My deck is foul business. That that would be Bohemia's SOD two. Uh, no, SOD three. Or is it two? Whichever one it was, he keeps losing them. I remember when I arrived, it was still smoldering. Who knows? Sometimes the slum dwellers shoot his serving droids for fun. This part of the quarter is getting more and more lawless, I'm afraid. When Dagon and I were waiting for the soldiers, we had to chase off some scavengers that were stripping SOD3. No, I'm afraid there was quite a crowd growing. We were seeing if there was any way we could help Sulio. There was nothing we could do, of course. She was dead. <laughs> Oh, 
Good to see you again. What do you want to Do you have a visa yet? I'm still paying very well. I really can't be... Kun. <laughs> Da hupa, bo sakurata, go jujutu yoki. Hiata ya monta chivita in. Monsikuno bo stuna bug, sa mina no. Jiret kurangata in kuntanga wai kere rotawa. Kawana bota yunta tanga kina. Monta Da hupa, bo sakurata, go jujutu yoki. Hiata y... Kawana bota yunta tanga kinamadura. Kavadumpa munsuru kupla liyawa. Bo bagaragawa muliwrawa i berendia tia wish... Do you have a visa yet? I had faith you'd get hold of one. I've always been good at spotting talent. I've got big plans for it. <laughs> Haven't we covered this yet? I'm not going to tell you. It's not legal. And you don't want to get involved. Trust me. So what do you want for it? A weapon, money, or the lightsaber crystal? Your pick. Here you go. If you aren't satisfied with it, just let me know. This room is reserved, off-worlder. <laughs> if you ask... That Bith keeps buying droids, and the scavengers keep stealing them or blowing them up. Seems he's finally given up. The waitress is awful, but she's more fun than his droids ever were. I wouldn't tell you even if I knew. I could tell you where you could find the parts, though. That western square has the perfect fence for droid parts. There is a droid vendor called 1B8D. That droid is as dumb as a Gamorian. He'll buy anything because he's too stupid to do anything else. 1B8D is quite handy. Quite a few of the slum dwellers make a good living salvaging droid parts for him. You might have even bought some. <laughs> Da wancha more chiwa. Da hupa bo sakurata go jujutu yo. Kawana bota yunta tanga kinamat. Hello there. 
What is this? Oh my, she's dead. Kawana bota, yunta tanga kinamatura. Tayaita, ta bosana nansata. Welcome back. My deck is still warm if you're up for Bazak. Foul business. If it'll help Dagon, you got it. There's no way that Dagon could have done it. I saw him coming from his office. That's the opposite direction of the marketplace. We should go talk to Captain Riken and clear all of this up. Nico, is it? And the Offworlder. What brings the two of you here? That's a bold statement. I assume you have some sort of proof. It's a long story, so bear with me, Captain. The night of the murder, I was playing Pazak. It was a prosperous night. That should do it. We still don't know who killed Sulio, but this will greatly assist our investigation. You have been ordered off this investigation, Captain. I hope you can explain yourself. I had nothing to do with this, sir. This citizen found information about Captain Sulio's murder. It's material to the investigation. We've already got our man. Sulio and this Ghent were fighting the night she was murdered. He had ample motive. We did our job, Offworlder. And an hour or two of meddling on your part gives you no right to say that. Have you read the report? Some of the things Sulio called him were vile. Sulio and Dagon clearly hated each other. Why, you little... Friends would not carry on in such a manner. It's absolutely true, Major. I was a friend of both of them. They've done this dozens of times. Fahima, the bartender, can confirm it, as well as half a dozen other people. They were an odd pair, but they certainly didn't hate each other. I see. Well, there's still the fact that he was right there at the scene of the crime. I've already given my report, Offworlder. He came from his office, like I said. The only thing that matters to me is that he was within blaster range when Sulio was killed, and he did not have an alibi. You have a recording? And I'm sure you're just misinterpreting it. I've seen it myself, Major. Nico isn't the only one that spotted Dagon coming from his office. It really can't be Dagon Ghent. The real killer is still loose. Very well, Captain. Set Ghent free, then. But if later it turns out that he did do it, it's gonna be on your head. The men will be working on getting Dagon Gen out right away. <laughs> the Major sure isn't happy. Great job, Nico. Without you, I'm pretty sure that the Doctor would still be behind bars. And thanks for your legwork, Offworlder. What were you trying to do, Offworlder? If I hadn't spoken up for Dagon, he'd still be in jail. The investigation has been handled at the highest levels. I've heard there's been some concern about that. With Dagon free, I don't know if the investigation team will find another suspect. They haven't been as diligent as other investigators. I'm not gonna say any more. Probably said too much already. If you head over to Dagon Gent's office, some men will bring him there shortly. Thanks for clearing this whole thing up. I could tell the justice wasn't being served, but... We all have our orders. We really need to patrol that sector better. Thanks for getting me out of there. As detention cells go, it had death in the class, but I prefer being out of my own all the same. What the hell happened to you anyway? Your face looks like the back end of a dewback. Well, regardless, I owe you and Mandalore one. Not many people can help you out with that. There have been several assassination attempts on Queen Talia. That place is locked tighter than a hut's fall. I know a few people, though. Who do you need to get in touch with? A Jedi Master, you say? Now that is interesting. It's quite a bounty of Jedi these days. 
Not that I'm looking to collect, but if there's a mask there, I think I know who it is. I'm not certain, otherwise I tell you. But the man I'm thinking about is smart, likes to stay in the shadows, and is cryptic as hell. If he isn't a Jedi Master, he should become one. There's a slight problem with that. I know you don't want to hear that since you went through all the effort of springing me out. The thing is, scavengers have already looted most of my stuff. Most of it's garbage anyway, so I don't care too much. But I did have a couple of encrypted holodisks that they nabbed. So here's the punchline. I need those discs because they have some contact information on them. People I know you don't just walk up and chat with. There's a procedure. And that holodisc has the procedure. But Kel's gang pretty much owns this street. From what I hear, she's the one that cleaned me out. She's in the local cantina most days. She's tough as Drexel leather and more dangerous than an angry Wookiee. If you take Mandalore with you, though, you should be just fine. Just get me the encrypted all of this. After that, if there is a Jedi Master in the palace, I'll get you a meeting with him. What do you want here, Offworlder? The room is taken. The whole cantina is taken. You should leave. What's it to you? You? And just how do you intend to do that? Those words will be your last. So, you're back. This is excellent news. I you're right, of course. The absolute highest I can pay is 3,000 credits. No, the pleasure is all mine. It's the Offworlder. Listen, let's keep this brief. I, I don't see how it...
keep the beasts in line nowadays. Have you found the encrypted hole of this yet? I won't be able to get a hold of my contacts from the palace without it. Great go in there. With these, I'll check my contacts at the palace. I should be able to get a meeting with your Jedi Master shortly. You got anything you need to take care of in the quarter, you best do it now. You're dealing with serious politics by contacting him. If things go bad during a meeting, you may not be welcome in Isis anymore. Perhaps never. Just let me know if you want to go through with this. Yeah, yeah, I'll get on it. Just grab a cot and rest a bit. Once I get a meeting time, I'll let you know. Is this meeting a trap? I can't afford to lose you, especially given recent events. Anything could be a trap. Vaklu is no fool. But if the message is true... Is this necessary? I can guarantee your safety in the palace, but outside these walls, the General has many men that would do anything for him. Nothing in life is certain, Your Majesty. But I feel something. There is a disruption in the Force. I must investigate this. Very well. But please, be cautious. Aren't I always? That's what I was afraid you'd say. Well, the meeting is on. Head straight to the cantina. You guys should be in there. And uh, no offense, but I hope I never see you again. You must have gone through a lot to arrange this meeting. The palace is at full battle readiness. Smuggling in a message is no small task. Kavar, the famed Jedi Guardian. The Mandalorians counted on the fact it would be you, not Revan, who would lead the Jedi against us during the Mandalorian Wars. I wonder how we'd have fared against you. I thought you were killed fighting Malak during the Jedi Civil War. It seems my former student keeps curious company. Strange times lead to strange alliances, though. I have my ways as well. Why are you here? I imagine that you hold little love for any on the Jedi Council anymore. Even an old friend. You have to understand that it was a time of great uncertainty. We just learned that Darth Revan was back with an armada. Every Jedi that went with him was lost, corrupted, and as dark as their master. And then there was you. Many thought you were a spy, but there's more to it than that. And I think you deserve an expert. Am I interrupting? In orbit, I thought for sure that the Ebon Hawk was mine. I was certain, only to see you slip through my fingers during the battle. Imagine my delight to discover you were on Isis. Quite careless, if you ask me. Get them, men, and watch your aim. Civilian casualties cause a mess of paperwork. I'll get word to you when I'm able. Run! What? What have you done to my man? Blast! Men, take care of him. I won't let Kavar escape. This cantina is infested with life. A well-placed grenade could cleanse some of the dirty and insignificant souls here. Stop the fighting! Stop! Sergeant, take care of the witnesses. I'm sorry we had to do that. Appearances have to be maintained, and I'm afraid we don't have much time. You've helped out General Vaklu, and he understands how to show gratitude. We have allies, terrible allies. They want you dead. However, the General believes you could ultimately be an even greater ally. But we have to maintain appearances. Do you understand? A Sith Lord. No idea of the name. Frankly, we had no idea who we were dealing with at first. And by the time we did, it was too late. The General believes we can make a new alliance that will be in both of our interests. Vaklu wants to control all of Onderon, and perhaps more down the road. 
The Republic's time is nearly over, and strong men like him will rule the age to come. You have shown that you are strong too, and he feels it inevitable that you become a force to be reckoned with. We'd like to ask your assistance in dealing with our ally, the Sith Lord. We have much to offer in return. Eventually, we will attack Queen Talia's palace. Isis is an ancient city filled with artifacts from our darker past. Some of those might be especially useful to you. Besides, the Sith Lord wants you dead, and an enemy of our enemy. For now, it's simple. We have to act like you're our enemy. When you leave this cantina, my men have orders to kill you. There is no way they could possibly stand up to you, but they don't know that. Leave Isis, and don't come back until we send a message for you. If the payment I've offered you is insufficient, I assure you General Vaklu himself can offer you a satisfactory deal. You must make a choice. Will you support us, or the Queen? Vaklu is a political animal, but he has never backed out of a deal. The Sith must have changed their arrangement substantially for him to consider betraying them. You can trust his offer. He's far more capable than Queen Talia is. I think allying with him is the best course. Credibility is important in Onderon politics. If he betrayed you and betrayed the Sith, his reign would be a short one. That can easily be arranged. That is also in both of our interests. We have a deal then. Like I told you, the men outside will try to kill you. We will talk later. What? What's happening in the West Square? It sounded like battle. Command's ordered comm blackout. Do you know what's going on? What? Why? That makes no sense. Command hasn't issued any alerts. Are you sure it wasn't some of those Beast Rider slags? They've been getting bolder recently. You, you must be mistaken. Soldiers just don't attack civilians without orders. If it weren't for the comm blackout, I'd check with command. Just head to the safety of the Merchant Square, citizen. We'll send a patrol to investigate as soon as we can contact our HQ. The sky ramp is restricted to military personnel only. Uh, move along. You know what to do. Let's... 
The diagnostic is doing something strange. Target acquired? What the hell does that mean? Your visa's been scanned. You're cleared to leave. I'd leave right away. Things are going crazy in this quarter. The shuttle is just ahead. I think we should get out of here fast. It's gonna be some time before they forget about us here. No more trips to ISIS for us until the situation changes. A lot. <laughs> observation. You are eliminating many of us Jedi, but such actions only delay the inevitable. Annoying recitation. Recitate. <laughs> Doctor, until further notice. I'm not ready to part company yet. It sounds like you have a lot of traveling to do. So do I. I'm going with you. The Sith have taken a particular interest in you, and you could use an extra blaster. I've been meaning to leave Duxon to look for other Mandalorian clans anyway. The Sith aren't known for sharing power. If the Jedi Order is destroyed for good, it's inevitable that the Sith will dominate the Republic, and then my people will be eradicated or enslaved. Helping your cause is a matter of necessity. Mandalorians helped Exar Kun during his war. We know firsthand how we'd fare in the service of their like. But that's enough for now. We'll have time to talk later. The Ebon Hawk is patched up and ready to go. When you're ready to depart, we can ask the guide here to take us back to the ship. What do you mean, Pazak? What, again? This is Ronto, Scrag. What house rule says I have to go first? Yeah, well, I'm still not convinced you aren't cheating. 
Warning, if you draw another plus minus one card, I will enact assassination protocols. This droid is cleaning me out. Hazak, well, I'm playing. It's cheating. Whatever, cheater. Something troubles you, servant of Atris. Leave me be. I have seen what you have seen. The slow seduction of the Sith. Perhaps we are more allies than you know. I fear the exile has let his feelings for the Miraluka affect his judgment, and it will doom him. There is still hope. I do not believe so, and neither do you. You have seen his stance, his movements. They mirror hers, not yours. But do not mistake my intent. We are together in this. And if we stand together, we may yet prevent a greater tragedy. I do not believe you, and I do not trust you. What you think is of no concern. What the Exile thinks is what should concern us. My life for yours. I am prepared for whatever you wish to teach me. I understand now. My life. I am prepared for whatever... I understand now. Something up? All right, I'm game. What did you want to show me? All right. Something up. All right. All right. Something up. Oh, yeah? All right. Something up. Has there been any sign of the ship? No, mistress, nor any word of our sister. We do not know where they travel now. The freighter, it is important. And I thought the droid was as well, but I was wrong. Mistress, we still do not know the significance of the ship or the droid. We downloaded all you asked, but we are still no closer to the answers you seek. Then perhaps we will need to have faith that your sister will change her mind, remember her oath, and return to us with the answers we seek. I hope so, mistress. But there has been no word of her since she departed with the other four on the freighter. Four? Yes, mistress. The Iridonian, the Ichani-trained pilot, the exile, and the old woman. Old woman? Yes, mistress. I do not recall seeing her. Mistress, she was secured for much of the time the exile was here. At other times, you were meditating, and we did not wish to disturb you. Mistress, is there something wrong? I am tired. I sometimes feel as if things are collapsing all around us. It is just at the edge of perceptions, waiting. I fear... I fear things will collapse before our enemies reveal themselves. Yes, mistress. I will meditate upon this. Perhaps it will clear my mind. You were right. There is no defeat in admitting such a thing. What can be done? We wait. Patiently, our time will come. You are not to blame, Serpent of Atris. You only wished what was best for him, and he cast it aside. He is the one to blame, to forsake such a gift. I feel that there is a lesson in such a thing. Perhaps you might have done more, but it is of no matter now.
You'll find little welcome here, Jedi. For your own good, I recommend you speak to Administrator Adari, quickly finish your business in Kunda, and go. I will answer your questions. She was the Agricultural Administrator of Dantooine. After the Sith attack, she kept us together. Without her, the only thing you'd see around here are mercenaries. We had problems with Mandalorian mercenaries even before the Jedi Civil War. The Jedi helped clear most of the problem up, but after the war, many soldiers from both sides of the conflict became mercenaries. And since we're so far from the core, some started gathering here. The difference between an out-of-work mercenary and a raider is a vibroblade's edge. The only thing we can prove they've done is intimidate a few farmers. The farmers give them goods, money, or food just to stay on their good side. The only one that isn't scared of them is the administrator. There have also been a lot of disappearances recently, and not all of them can be blamed on calf hounds. But nobody can prove the mercenaries are responsible. A farmer here and there, or a family. We lost enough people during the war that keeping the calf hound and kinrath populations under control hasn't been possible. So there are a lot of animal attacks. Some deaths, too. The disappearances might be just coincidence, but a lot of the stubborn folks seem to be more accident-prone. Kunda is the big building just outside the landing port. It used to be the estate of a man named Matali, but he and his family disappeared around the time of the bombardment. The administrator rebuilt it, and now this is our center of government. I know it doesn't look like much, but there aren't many settlers that live on this planet. This building is the start of something new for us. We're very proud of it. We're working on it. Is there anything else you'd want to talk about? Just head into the building and you'll find your way to the administrator. I'll be over by the entrance if you need anything else. Jedi, I've got to tell the others. I'm sorry, Master Jedi. I won't tell nobody if you spare me. I promise. Such displays are not the signs of true strength.
charanana gundoso remina que lo racto curo catada fiebre todo manama treto sobre para acto drun crisis me entró grave baba no flan turo na saca ninch grave we no teriwana jun conata de la raguno antun relieve corondo son mele grima grima con corre quien pasa recho cantada suma con Sorry, this door is blocked off. Hey, get away from that door! The last time somebody messed with it, it was locked down for months before we could fix it. You'll find little welcome here, Jedi. For your own... I will tell no one I've seen you, but please leave and don't cause any trouble. Do you actually believe a Jedi would return here? After all they've done to us? They wouldn't dare. They certainly would. Well, you remember how they were. Always so superior, so arrogant, and never lending a hand when we really needed them. I still don't believe it. You should. My cousin's friend, he used to tend the gardens around the Enclave. He swears he saw a Jedi in Kunda. Could be hiding anywhere. Well, I hope it's true. I hear there's a bounty on them, and we could certainly use the money. Unless somebody beats you to it. Welcome to Kunda. You're a salvager, right? You'll need to see Administrator Adare to get access to the ruins. If you need directions to anything else, just ask. Her office is directly behind this room. You really can't miss it. She can see you now, if you like. You're not. The only heavily armed people that visit us are either salvages or mercenaries. And you don't look quite gritty enough to be a mercenary. The things that would most interest you are our weapon merchant, Anzeron, the leader of our militia. Akere is still around here somewhere, too. He sells droid components. Your luck is not of the hapless settler. You are the newcomer that lands in a battered ship, yes. No friendly greetings are here for you. You act like I have insulted your woman. Your ship I haven't seen. But if it takes after you, it can't be in perfect condition. I am done being inconvenienced by you. Another interruption. You must not have heard who I am. Waste another's time. Not are you waiting for the administrator too? You won't have to wait too long. But if you want results, now that you may never get here. Kunda's like a droid without his power cell. Useless. We have problems all over, and the most you can get out of the administrator is a pat in the back. I'm sick of all their excuses and empty words. I need justice now. I fought in the war, and I know how to use my blaster rifle. If the administrator or Zeron doesn't do something, then I will. What am I supposed to do? Salvagers keep trespassing on my land and stealing my farming equipment. They grab anything they can get a hold of. I'm not a violent man. I've had my share of it in the war. I sincerely hoped I could just hang my blaster rifle on the wall as a souvenir for my grandchildren. 
But I can't farm without my equipment. Well, yes and no. I brought my moisture vaporator to Kunda to be serviced. On the way back to my farm, I took a shortcut next to the Enclave ruins. Damn legrics came out of nowhere. I had to run before they made a meal of me. When I returned to retrieve my equipment, the salvagers had already stripped it bare. My farm is the closest to the Enclave ruins. It has to be someone nearby. And if the mercenaries wanted it, they'd just take it in broad daylight. The closest place besides that is the salvager camp, so it has to be them. You ever met one of them? Thievery wouldn't be too far a stretch for any of them. The other day, I had to take a shot at one of them. Soon someone is going to get killed, and Dantooine has enough trouble without that. A lot of farming equipment. It's not even valuable, just important for the moisture vaporators and hydroprocessors. The thief must be desperate for credits. I suppose you could. Actually, you almost look like a salvager. If you could go to this salvager camp and convince the salvager Joran to return my modulator, I would be very grateful. I'm not rich, but I have some souvenirs from the war I could give you. It's right next to the ruins of the Jedi Enclave. Just follow the smell. You can't miss them. That's great. I'm certainly not getting any help around here. If you need to know anything more, just ask me. A lot of people here hate Jedi. But when they were here, they tried helping us. I don't blame them. A visitor. Please, come in. Welcome to Kunda. I am Administrator Turina Adare. You're the owner of the, um, ship that just landed? I meant no disrespect at all. It is, in fact, a remarkable vessel. And unless I'm much mistaken, that's the Ebon Hawk. That vessel has been on Dantooine before, during the war. That was a Jedi vessel. Of course not. I'm trying to stabilize an entire planet. An exchange bounty, no matter how abundant, is little use in that endeavor. But if a Jedi were here, that would best be kept secret. Right or wrong, our settlers blame the Jedi and their hidden enclave for their suffering. I remember the old Jedi Masters and the considerable help they lent to Dantooine. I still maintain discreet connections with Jedi. I suppose your arrival here is no coincidence. Indeed, true coincidence seems very rare in the affairs of Jedi. But I should tell you, I feel I must step carefully here. You are not like other Jedi I have known. You seem darker somehow. Yes, I understand. Say no more. For good or ill, I feel you are the only one remaining who can help me with the present situation, my friend. Let's just call him Frook. We've known each other for many years, and our continued friendship could create many problems in the current political climate. He came to Dantooine not too long ago. He was looking into something quite important. He's gone missing recently. Did he send for you in case something went wrong? We need the skills of a Jedi more than ever. He was helping investigate Asgul and his mercenaries, but he had his own errand to run in the Enclave. Jedi business of some sort. He went into the sublevel, which isn't without its dangers, and he hasn't returned. Like many parts of Dantooine, the sublevel of the Enclave has become infested with dangerous creatures. Large, vicious insects called Lagrex have made the sublevel their home. Several salvagers have reportedly been injured or killed by the Lagrex. I would expect a Jedi to fare better against the creatures than the salvagers, but Vrook has not returned in some time. I'm starting to fear the worst. Would you be willing to go to the ruins of the Enclave to look for him? From what I know of your type, you have all of the equipment you need to deal with the sublevel. I do realize the Jedi Order disbanded, so you must find credits yourself, however. The sublevel is dangerous enough that the salvagers have not managed to properly search it. There are many artifacts of value. Normally, I ask for a percentage of all salvage. In your case, however, you can take whatever you find without the customary tie. I will have one of the militia transmit permissions to the Enclave's security door.
go expecting danger, for you will most certainly find it there. Is there anything else I can assist you with? He was investigating the mercenaries for us. We've been increasingly concerned about them. Their behavior has always been antagonistic, but recently they've been behaving differently. Rook was investigating this when he disappeared. We were counting on any hard intelligence he could provide. Our other assets have been unavailable recently. If you find any information on the mercenaries during your stay on our planet, please report it to Zeron or myself. There are plenty of opportunities to assist people on Dantooine. Too many, I'm afraid. I would go to the militia headquarters and make your intentions known there. Besides that, just listen and ask around. What brings you to Kunda? Do you have any troubles to report? I'm here to help. I just hope you aren't here about Garavik. I see. Well, I suppose it wouldn't hurt to go over the militia rules then. Kunda and the salvager camp are under militia protection. So a friendly scuffle is all right. But if any blasters are drawn, there will be hell to pay. But if you buy some Jedi trinket and you're not satisfied, you're on your own. I'd stay away from the mercenary camp. We've had difficulties with them. We don't patrol or investigate there anymore. A trip there and you're on your own. Follow the rules and we don't have any problems. Oh, and Pato Ado doesn't cheat as far as we can figure. So don't complain about the Athorian either. I don't even want to get into it. Ask around if you want to know the details. It'll just make my headache worse if I talk about it. I don't know what we'd do without Administrator Adare. She managed to plow through a lot of the family bickering once the Sith left during the war. She's kept us together. Oh, and, uh, Zeron too, I suppose. Uh, this is... sensitive. It's not really a secret, though. A lot of people are upset with Zeron. He's a hard man and doesn't answer to anybody. Except, I suppose, the Administrator. The thing is, he expects everyone to follow all the laws. That's not normally a bad thing, but the mercenaries are used to having a bit more freedom. So, it's like Zeron keeps prodding a rancor with a stun stick. To a rancor, it's just a minor nuisance. But if you keep at it, he's gonna fight back. The mercenaries aren't unreasonable. They're mostly just war veterans looking for work. But Zeron just keeps poking them. So he has to get involved to make sure that the militia does what he wants. Otherwise, we'd probably give the mercenaries some room. It's tricky. You see, I think Zeron may be taking this whole thing a little personal. I I'm not sure. Just a guess. I also think he's doing more to provoke them than just investigating every complaint against them hard. He's up to something. If someone could just ask a few questions, turn up some answers, maybe see if Zeron isn't being completely honest with the rest of us, well then maybe he should be replaced. Just look around, see if Zeron's up to something on the side, something that'll hurt the fragile peace we got with the mercenaries. So if you happen to find something out like that, you should see Administrator Adare. If you have to do some footwork to check into things, you'll be compensated. We should probably talk about something else. I hate going behind the captain's back. I just feel... Uh, I just have a feeling about it. Well, call me a defective protocol droid. Well, that makes it sound more important than I am. Zeron takes a hands-on role in running the militia. If you have any real trouble, you'd have to go to him anyway. Uh... This is the the mer No, it uh. All right. Tochi monas runta. Yun bola. What a gra poso ma ritoshniki tuk tuk pampa bora. Poso ma ritoshniki tuk tuk pampa bora. Kino Poso ma ritoshniki tuk tuk Bamba, bora.
Pasa susho wi kana ina doka ches koshman pu ni wado de kuta na sapa tong ni kwama ji yung alibato at doki ni kama renzo ni ina sti john blau and the wanga no chi chao du so jama Don't cause any more trouble for Datooine. I'm the militia captain here. Are you here because you're in trouble or looking for it? Depending on how greedy you are, we might have some work for you. Before that, though, you got any other reason for coming to militia headquarters? Rare thing a visitor wanting to help out. Looks to me like you're here to explore the Jedi ruins. But we have a thing or two that need doing. You seriously want to help, just ask about it. Or any other questions you might have. You want something? I've seen a lot of visitors come through Kunda. You're the first one in a while that looks the capable sort. We have a small problem with Kinrath. Maybe you've already seen some of them. They're coming from a cave in the Kunda Plains. I'd take care of it myself, but there aren't many people in the militia. We'd lose too many men. There's a reward if you do it. Two thousand credits. I agree with you, but I don't barter. I got more important things to do. We used some explosives to seal the cave a couple years back. Just made them angrier. They burrowed another entrance even closer to us. I know there are crystals in there, too. Some of the salvagers once thought about going in there to get some extra credits. Too many Kinrath, though. Cave is on the southeast side of the plains. Shouldn't be hard to find. That's all I can ask. You want something? Some of the salvagers went deep into the ruins and found a lot of Jedi relics. It's the most valuable all the salvagers ever got. But all the salvagers that went down there are dead. So it seems every day or so some salvager comes claiming they're owed by such and such or that they're related. The whole thing makes me sick. Garavik says he won the whole claim in a Pazak game at the last survivor. Right before he killed him. But that was a fair fight. There were witnesses. But nobody remembers Garavik ever playing Pazak. I just hope someone takes this blasted claim off my hands. I'm tired of those low lives pestering me. We've got real work to do. You want something? He did, did he? What's this about? So he's asked you to go looking into what I'm up to? If I didn't need every last man here. Appreciate. Hmm. All right, I can use your help. But you can't tell anyone. There's a mercenary captain near what's left of the Jedi Enclave's courtyard. His name is Dopak. Just tell him that I said, go ahead. That's all. You have questions, but it's like this conversation never happened, got it? Just do it. It'll help out Kunda. We can talk more later. It's you again. You want...
Another interruption. You must not have heard of who I am. What? You shouldn't sneak up on an old fella like that. You shouldn't be out of here anyway. This is Kinrath territory. It's just a habit. We warn people that the area around Kunda is dangerous, but some of them don't listen. Probably nothing you can't handle, but I'd stay clear of the caves all the same. A couple weeks back, there was an accident here. One of the western fringe farmers was coming to Kund on his swoop with a load of atmospheric sensors. We found him dead and his swoop bike all banged up. I've come back a couple of times to try to figure out if that's what really happened. I do. The Kinrath are dangerous. But as long as you stay on your swoop bike, there's no way they should catch you. I've carefully searched this area and haven't found anything. So maybe our men just got sloppy. We really need those atmospheric sensors. I don't suppose you'd be willing to keep an eye out for something, hmm? I doubt you'll be able to find any evidence of what happened here. But you might come across the atmospheric sensors. They have to be somewhere. If you find any of them, just come back here. I'll pay you a thousand credits for each one you can find, even if they're broken. No idea whatsoever. I figure it's a real long shot you'd ever spot one. But I also figure it wouldn't hurt to ask.
Disturbed. I can feel them like a shiver running through you. Force sensitive locations such as this absorb and reflect force energy. The crystals are the catalyst here. I sense that Revan once passed through here, leaving a strong impression behind in the crystals. Perhaps future Jedi who visit this cave will feel our presence, as if seeing our footprints preserved in the soil. The crystals here do not drain force energy from Jedi. They collect the excess energy that radiates from those attuned to the force.
Crystal responds to you. This is very rare indeed. The crystal's bond with you is such that the stronger you become in the Force, the more powerful your crystal will grow. This crystal will make an excellent focus for a lightsaber. Quite the contrary. Picture yourself as a sieve, and the force as water pouring into you. This crystal draws from the excess water that escapes the sieve. The crystal is in tune with you. It will use whatever water that pours through you, be it dark or light. Yutapak, Mito, hai best nixa tochi mapao krawe nosha. What a lord chiba fuso, but chile nuba chubanok. Yatuka, u wanrika chotin, wanima orata wakata, chi luma lispa. Krempawi cho simaranga weba gono rimbo. Harandoto, jun sorito mas, jurun makagrodo soto. Kavanata Kalu, Kavanami Donkey Krato. Just like a Jedi. Charika Yayakta, Min Sobachina Ninga Ballo Chajukso Nis Chortuna. Kavanata Kalu, Kavanami Donkey Krato. Bram Tabanin Sochu. Da come just mak Miki Baranye do so so Rika Chondin. Wana magrable mogo. Yatuka u wan Rika Chotin wani maurata wakata chi luma lispa. Cavadumpa, mo wendido ciò che rembi norta cunion wish chawa cachuba, sura daci moro tuco cansa. Yatuka, u wan rica, chotin, wanima orata wakata, ci cavanata calu, cavanami dum. Te wata lorcha, descala, sorcha widono sabanichu waka, to basta. Thank you. 
I don't suppose you found any of those that That's great news. My offer still stands. I'll pay you 3,000 credits for all of them. Thanks for your help on this. Here are the credits, as promised. I'll get this to Zeron when I get back to Kunda. You've wandered into the wrong camp. You got the look of a warrior, and we got all the blasters we need. If you're looking for work too, just take a trip spaceward. We don't need any more competition. Got it? I know about the thief. The amount of noise the settlers have made over that thief, you'd think he stole their whole planet. Before you ask, I have no idea who the thief is. It's not one of us. If we wanted something that bad, we'd just take it. What if we do? They're practically begging to be pushed around. You've seen them, right? They're weak. You're really not so bad, you know? They make our life difficult. They need to learn respect for those with superior strength. Most of us are veterans of the Jedi Civil War. Some even fought in the Mandalorian Wars. A lot of soldiers have been looking for a place in the galaxy. The really skilled usually wind up here. A sentient by the name of Azkul. He was an elite trooper for Malak during the Jedi Civil War. He knows how to wage war. We had a contract with the Republic, doing some work in the Outer Rim. But they scaled back, and we were some of the casualties. Now the Republic isn't hiring anymore. I hear they have no credits. I have... I don't suppose you're... What does the militia have to say to us? Any of our men get into trouble? I don't know what you're talking about. You don't know anything. I'll take my chances. Keep your message. I don't even care what it is. I don't suppose you're here to hire... You're still around here? Really? Like what? Forget it, outsider. You're still around? Really? A secret message. Nobody but me and the person you're accusing. So what was the message anyway? Forget it up. Can I help you? Just trying to make a living. At least there's still people in the galaxy who know our value. It's not glamorous work, but a man has to eat, right? I've heard the rumors too. There's no way I'm gonna fight for some upstart warrior who styles himself as Mandalore. We didn't pick a new Mandalore when the last one was killed. And maybe we're better off without one. You're still around? Really? A secret message? And you came to tell me that? Even if you're telling the truth, that doesn't sound like anything important. Zeron might be playing a joke on you. Smells like another salvager's come to our camp. Vacate, mud licker. Don't make me tell you again. Ease off, Nalik. There's better sport than this one. I don't need help to take out a mud licker. Yeah, I'm talking to you.
You fight in any wars? I fought in the Jedi Civil War. I guess you don't look like much of a salvager. I thought you were one of those useless salvagers. Or perhaps an uppity settler. I've had about enough of their attitude. So I figured blasting one of them would have done me some good. It's been a while since we've had work. You were a soldier too. So you know I'm not gonna answer you. I... Uh, I want to answer your question. Oh, my head. I don't know for sure. I hear rumors. I heard we got a secret job working with some powerful organization. No one tells me who. I know we're planning an attack soon, but I don't know against who. They aren't too far, though, because we're expecting to attack soon. I told you what I know. Someone rich and powerful. We're not gonna have to hit up settlers for food and supplies anymore. I don't feel so well. I feel dizzy. I gotta go now. I don't suppose you're... You a new salvager, or one of those Kunda Cantina rats coming here to complain? Oh, is that so? You're no mercenary, and with those armaments, this isn't a social call. You're at least thinking of heading to the ruins. I'm gonna give you some advice. Turn back. There's nothing you're gonna find. Don't tell me that flaming Solru sent you. I went over all this with Zeron. We've been hit by the Flaming Thief more than he has. Every other night, it seems we find something missing. And it's not like we have much. We keep asking Zeron to help us, but he sends us nobody. So the thief keeps coming from the ruins or whatever hole he lives in and taking what's ours. If we ever catch him, we'll take our time killing him. The only guess I've heard is it's a mercenary that's been kicked out. Most of them leave us alone. They focus most of their attention on the settlers. But we really don't know. I hear he's planning to shoot anybody that goes on his farm. I'm just glad we're not the only people suffering. Maybe if he moans enough, the militia will do something. That's our best guess. Sneaky as sin, but Raylon caught a glance of him that way. We keep hoping the Legrex finish the thief off, but that would be far too easy for us. If you haven't met Raylon, though, he's not... reliable. He's in the camp if you want to talk to him about the thief. If you must. If you can do something about the thief, do it and get out of here. There's nothing for you here anyway. Because anything valuable in the ruins was carted away months ago. The only salvagers left are either desperate, ornery, or not right in the head. And while you look dirty enough to be here, I don't think you're any of those things. So go back to Kunda. The only thing left is the sublevel, and that's crawling with Legrex. 
And those things are smarter than half the salvagers here. Though that don't take much. And don't be asking any pesky questions. You're new, and no one is gonna help you out. Because there isn't enough salvage to share with the people already here. And a hungry newcomer is about as welcome as a diuretic hut. If you're not going to listen to anybody, maybe you can help me out. The only place that has anything is the sublevel. And only a couple of fools have gone there. And they're now dead fools. Now, I'd like to do the decent thing and get their bodies and put them to rest. That hole isn't a fit place for a salvager. So, if you find a couple human corpses down there, just grab their gear and their bodies. I'll pay you 500 credits for each of them. Oh, a visitor comes to our delightful salvager camp. We are honored. Do you come bringing your credits and curiosity? <laughs> this saddens me to hear. True, this camp isn't as opulent as you're used to with your off-world notions of comfort and decadence, but this is a place of people who toil. A question I pose to you, Traveler. Do you wish to buy one of the most elusive of all Jedi artifacts? A powerful Jedi holocron. That is no exaggeration. Jedi holocron are very rare and invaluable tools for skilled Jedi. If this man has one, you'd be wise to obtain it. This is no idle boast, Traveler, but a fact. A holocron is easily worth many thousands of credits to any Jedi, but I will sell it to you for a low price. I ask a mere 1,000 credits for this rare find. This is not a matter of negotiation. You should buy it quickly before others come. A discerning question. The reason is simple. The market of buyers is limited on Dantooine. If I were on course, and I could make a fortune with this. My dilemma is I lack the funds to travel. So I cannot reach a better market, so my price is reduced. But you travel. And surely you could find a Jedi buyer. Oh, I assure you it isn't. I will show it to you presently. Well, as you can see, it is in fine shape. A real bargain at a mere 1,000 credits. Of course it is. With many thousands of credits to the right buyer. Well, your wisdom is immense. Here's the holocron. Now business is done, we can talk of other things. So, what should we talk about? You should talk to Darala. I've told her everything I know. I think I saw the thief by the ruins of the Enclave. I believe that the thief has to be living in the sublevel, because every place else has been visited many times by the salvagers. I didn't get a clear look at the thief. It was dark, and the ruins provide many hiding places. I hope you've enjoyed your purchase. All sales are final, I'm afraid. You should take the matter up with the militia, but they will say the same. Uh, I believe you. Fortunately, the militia and salvagers don't appreciate violence, even here. There's nothing more I want to discuss. Take the matter up with Zeron, head of the militia. But you will not like what you hear. Ah, the traveler has returned. So. Yeah, 
succeed in gathering the Jedi, they will come to this place. And if those Jedi are slain, then all that remains of the Order shall be drawn here as well. We will know when the time comes, and I hope our enemies do not. Who are we missing? We're one off. We're missing Joran. I don't see Joran. That runt of a cat hound, he's the one with the backpack. Did anybody grab anything from the room? Anybody? What do you want? You won't find anything there except on the lowest sublevel, and there you'll only find death. Legrex are everywhere. I managed to get this sad lot of salvagers to work together. Then we get two rooms into the sub-level, and we get swarmed by Legrex. And even then we fight our way out. But of course, the only one that managed to grab the salvage is still in there. I don't even know why I bothered. Are you kidding? Of course we aren't. He's on his own. I only wish he didn't have the salvage on him. Now, if you don't mind, we're going someplace you can't eavesdrop on us and get down to our business.
Just say the word. Rex, you've killed him. They're my pets. I'm not a thief. People give to the Jedi in exchange for service. They were just giving. You're one of them. Just another stinking salvager and thief, stealing what belongs to Jedi. I am a Padawan, and one day, one day I will learn enough to be a Jedi. I was studying here when Darth Malak and the Sith came. I was outside the Enclave when my master left me at the Madalay estate. Shen protected me. But the Sith came asking questions of all the Madalays died. But I hid. Even when the estate was burning, I hid. So I hide. I'm hiding until my master returns. You were? I, I had no idea. You aren't anymore? Are there any Jedi left? Is that even possible? That's horrible! Are there any masters left to teach us? But what should I do? I just don't know what I should do. There was just no one else to talk to. It's been so hard. But just knowing I'm not alone. There are others like me. It may be enough. I... I know that that was wrong. I'll stop. I was just trying to get enough credits to eat. But I'll... think of something else. Something that doesn't hurt anyone. I found some things. I don't know how to use them. Here, you can have them. I had a holocron, but it said... terrible things. I threw it far away. It told me the Jedi were no more that I needed to survive and do anything to protect my home. The holocron was more forceful the longer I learned. It frightened me. I threw it into the ruins. I, I went back to find it, but the salvager stole it. It was my only teacher. I... I don't know. I'll try to find a master to teach me. There have to be some left. I'm not going to use the force until I find one. So much has gone wrong. Should I feel bad that I feel better? But I still need to find a master. The lessons I learned, I think I need to unlearn them. And also with you. Thank you! I hear you.
Someone out there? Anybody? Help! Leaflets are everywhere! Help me! I'm trapped in here! Yes, yes I am. I locked the door in here. I thought I was going to be leg wreck compost. Did you take care of him, stranger? You must be fierce with a blaster, then. Hey, give me a moment. I sort of jammed the door a bit. Just don't leave. Thanks for saving me. I thought those leg wrecks had me for sure. Listen, I didn't ask for your help. Uh, I appreciate it, but I don't owe you anything. Here I was thinking you might be a nice one. No need for threats. I don't have much to give, but... All right, here's 300 credits. Is that enough of a reward for you? Can I go now? I didn't find a single thing. I just want to get out of this pit. There's no way I'm going to give those to you. I risked my life for those. I've given you all the credits I got, but I earned what I found. Of course it's negotiable. It's mine and not yours. And I say take a short trip out an airlock without a spacesuit. I'm not giving you my find. Is your bloodlust finally satisfied?
Your arrival is fortunate. I was just running out of food supplies and wondering what Legrec meat would taste like. I am an historian and scientist working for the Republic. Although I'm certain my contemporaries would judge me more a historian than scientist. I'm trying to save the Republic. Dantooine and the Jedi Order are instrumental to that effort. Despite the troubles of the Jedi Civil War, there are those among the Republic who still favor the Jedi and wish them to return. And there are admirals within the fleet who recognize that the Jedi must be found if the Republic is to hold together. Yet as long as Onderon remains within the Republic and the efforts on Tilo succeed, that is all that matters. The Republic is fragile right now. Telos is important because its success will determine whether or not the other dead worlds receive the same reconstruction efforts. If Telos is rebuilt and made habitable again, it will affect a string of worlds along the rim. Before you go, I had a question for you. You came to Dantooine in search of Jedi. Why? What answers do you seek? It has been my experience that Jedi rarely answer such questions, or instead indulge in half-truths. Exiled you? It is strange they would sentence you and not speak honestly of your crime. It is not the Jedi way to lie. Well, no, that is not true. There are times when truth is concealed if they think a greater good can be achieved. But when such things are done, it is always done with the intention that the person they withheld truth from cannot be trusted with that knowledge. That it will bring harm upon themselves and others. Perhaps there was some greater danger in you knowing the reason than in the reason itself. Strange. Mysterious are the ways of the Jedi. Sometimes they see things the rest of us do not. Other times, such sight brings arrogance and a fall. I will return to Kunda now and await the next transport. You may find me there if you have more questions.
I hear you. Just say the word. Let me take care of this. Let me take care of this. Braved the perils of the sublevel, yes. Many stories and artifacts in your possession. This is fortuitous for myself and associates. For now, not only do I get rich salvage, but an even richer bounty. Do not be making this difficult. Your death can be quite painless. So, this is your threat? Is Terra what I'm supposed to feel? We know a thing about Jedi and their ways. And now, Jedi, we shall fight. <laughs> Jaren knew the risks. He wouldn't do anything different if he was in our situation. Ah, the Traveler has returned. I hope the Dantooine is providing suitable distraction and entertainment for you. So, what should we talk about? I hope you re All sales are final, I'm afraid. Salvagers have been selling outsiders pre- There's nothing more I want- Who is that? Oh, it's you. You go down into the sub-levels yet? Or did you suddenly develop some sense? It's a shame about them. Have any luck getting to their bodies? I figure there's about no chance you'll succeed, but the reward is still open. You have? You managed to find them down there? You're tougher than you look. 
I have 1,000 credits for their bodies and their personal effects. You've proven very helpful. <laughs> I, I have something I have to do. Come back if you want to talk again. You'll find little welcome here. I will tell no. What did I tell you? Admiral, this is Mikal. I have found the exile. Welcome back to Kunda. Welcome back. Is there anything else I can do for you? Any luck on getting my modulator back from Joran? I don't think anyone here will be able to help me. Excellent. How did you deal with Joran? Suit yourself. As long as the problem is dealt with, I guess I really don't need to know the particulars. A lot of people here hate Jedi. But when they were here, they tried helping us. I don't blame them. Hello there! Let me guess. You were tricked out of some credits. Sorry, friend, but we don't do anything about that anymore. Don't you know our rules? Glad you asked. So here are the militia... So I... Follow... I'll tell you anything that's... All right. It's you again. Well, you know who I am. I figure you've got a reason for coming back. You want something? So you did. Here's the credits I told you about. Even with the caves cleared, I imagine it'll take some time before the Kinrath aren't on the planes. That was very helpful of you. You've saved some lives today. You want something? I don't have anything to say about that. We can talk more later.
Halt, settler. This is a restricted area. How the hell did you get through the Kinrath? You should leave. I know that you settlers have a score to settle with, Jedi. Trust me, this one's gonna suffer. Trust me, Jedi have a very bad fate waiting for them on Nar Shadda. Anything he's done to you, he'll more than pay for. I can understand how you feel, but he's worth a lot less to us if he's dead. So we're not gonna kill him, and we're definitely not gonna let you kill him. I warned you, but I'm glad you didn't listen. Attack, men! More where that came from. You've just confirmed everything I thought about you. You are a stain to the reputation of the Jedi Order. I may have been caged, but I was never helpless. Guard yourself, exile. Kunda is in danger, and you've ruined the best chance of averting a full-scale conflict. Though perhaps that was your intent. Don't think that I can't sense the taint of the dark side in you. It is difficult to perceive with the Force here on Dantooine, but it does not conceal your nature completely. I don't know why you think I'd tell you anything. You've seen the end of your trial? Perhaps you would like to explain how you came to this knowledge? That was intended only for the Jedi Council. If what remains of the Council chooses to tell you, then I will abide by their decision and its consequences. Fine. There's little I can tell you. Master Kavar felt something had happened to you in the war, but all he had was suspicions, not truths. And Kavar was too close to you in any event. He, too, felt the call of war and took to battle more than a Jedi should. His speculations will not help you now, but enough of this. It is knowledge for the Council alone until they choose to reveal it. We did nothing to you. Accuse us if you will, but it will not change the truth. Cutting one off from the Force. Such punishments are reserved for only a few. Although it was within our power, we did not inflict such a loss upon you. Your loss was a casualty of war no more. Perhaps it is Dantooine, but I do not feel any power in you. I feel nothing but what I felt in the Council Judgment Chamber on Coruscant so long ago. Still... You and your connections were often the subject of debate in the Council. It is possible that returning to known space, journeying with others, has caused the Force to stir within you again. Because you defied the Council and followed Revan to war, and from that war came another. Do you know how many worlds were destroyed in those wars? Dantooine, Telos, Sirocco... You see now why we counseled caution instead of action? You were the only one to come back and face judgment. But that was because you had lost your connection to the Force. Another casualty of war. No doubt you still blame us for your exile. I had hoped your isolation would give you time to reflect on what had happened, what you had done. But I see it is not. We were not in hiding, despite what you believe. It is you and all those allied with you that hide and must be found. Force bonds? Yes. It is the bond that grows between master and student. Are you saying you have bonded with another? Such bonds normally grant strength to both, but not to such a degree. You are deluded to think it would be lethal. Still... 
Your ability to form such connections to influence others was always a subject of discussion, even when you were a student here. Perhaps it is a punishment of a sort, but a bond that ties two lives together. Such bonds do not seem natural to me. And with your loss of connection to the Force, it seems such a bond would be impossible. Perhaps it is dental. Still, it is... strong again, but I know not how. This isn't over, Exile. You are the Jedi I've heard reports of, and I am Azkul, leader of the mercenaries on Dantooine. That is correct, and I want you to help me. According to my reports, I have four times as many soldiers as the militia, and I am committed to taking Kunda. It is inevitable that I will succeed. If you wish to avoid my men eradicating the people of Dantooine, you will make it easier for me to take Kunda. Of course, I will pay well for your services. There are many ways someone with your abilities can aid us. Before the action begins, I have two main tasks in mind for you. Disable the gun turrets and the traps. Return to me when you are ready for us to begin our assault. I warn you not to keep me waiting. Well maneuvered. With both the mercenaries and the militia counting on your aid, you can influence the outcome of the situation as you see fit. Charanana Gundoso. Just in time. Terena told me you've been searching for her friend. Well, I'm gonna have to ask you to put that on hold for now, as I've been telling Terena. I've just received solid proof that the mercenaries are planning to annihilate Kunda. We need your help. Zeron says that even with a plan, the mercenaries have to gather their forces, then coordinate their assault. So we still have time. I'm afraid the militia has not been adequately trained for the task that befalls them.
Right now, just us and the militia. I don't want to create a needless panic. But be assured I will make sure that all civilians are warned in time, so they can get to safety. Though if we lose this battle, nowhere on Dantooine will be safe for settlers for long. Our militia is effective at peacekeeping, but isn't prepared for a full-scale battle. If you can do anything to ready them for the reality of it, that would be helpful. Besides that, look around Kunda and see what you can do to strengthen our defenses. I know that we don't have the perimeter turrets online, and that alone could make a significant difference. Zaron says there is a considerable chance they will breach Kunda itself. Anything you can do to slow them down could turn the tide of battle. I have instructed the militia and other Kunda personnel that you are to be provided with anything that can be spared. Unfortunately, that isn't much. Here is a MasterCard key that will open all of the security doors inside Kunda. Anything that might aid you in your task, please use. Soon, all the civilians will be evacuated. So if you have any business with them, I suggest you take care of it. Whenever you are ready to finalize the defenses, talk with Zeron. You'll find little welcome here, Jet. What did I tell you? Sorry, this door is blocked off. Just say the word. Are you ready? I won't wait long for you. Fine. What are you expecting? A reward? You'll get your payment when you see the job through to the end. The only thing I'm interested in hearing from you 
is that you are ready for us to begin our assault. Good. I will deploy men to surround Kunda and attack all three entrances. Okay. Which entrance is their weakest? You heard the Jedi. Move out, men. Come on, Jedi. You're leading the first wave. I can't believe you've betrayed us. Torino was wrong for trusting a Jedi. Sure that your reasons go to the grave with you, Fakunda. Everyone down. <laughs> We've breached the perimeter, Askel. They're falling before us like herd beasts to the slaughter. Still, a lesson must be taught about resistance. Kill everyone. I yes, sir. I should have stopped you long ago. Your machinations end here, outcast. No more words. Defend yourself or perish. You have him on the defensive. He uses the Sheen form. Study his movements carefully. This form will be useful when you face multiple opponents or ranged attack. Sheen also allows you to make more devastating critical attacks. Are you arrogant enough to think you can divide your attention while fighting me? You think you can learn my technique just by watching me? It takes a Jedi Master years to perfect it. It's not possible. You... You must be stopped. You should have let him live. He would have fetched a fine price on Nar Shaddaa. Kunda is ours, thanks in part to your assistance. Here, take your reward, Jedi. Fine, greedy Jedi. You'll get 50% more. Take it and go. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a date with the administrator, and I'm dressed to kill. The Republic won't stand for what you've done here. You'll pay for your crimes. I was going to make it a painless death, but you've been much more difficult than you had to be. Now you're going to pay. I've got nothing more to say to you.
Unnecessary observation. Target annoyed. Recipe. Statement, my memory core has suffered some damage. Statement, yet somehow, a gap in my circuits makes me feel as if I should remember you. Statement, this is all the more important since during my routine inspection of all potential escape routes from this vessel, I made an interesting discovery. Observation, the Nava computer is voice locked. As a consequence, you are now responsible for course corrections and astrogation. Statement. That is indeed a great burden. It also raises many questions. Query, why would someone lock the Nava computer? Answer, presumably to hide where one has been. Statement, I believe you've been somewhere. Somewhere you wish to keep hid. <laughs> droids. We must stop the Jedi they have with them. We have no more droids left. We threw everything we had at General Vaklu outside the palace. You ordered it, sir. So I did. Barricade the doors. Make the Jedi pay for every inch. If we fall, Talia is dead. 
I hear you. You're no Jedi. Your heart is as black as Malak's ever was. But you will not touch this terminal as long as I'm alive. Everyone, attack! Time to even the odds. Martak for Draga Nix, Chunda Juta Chunda to Cha, Watunkus Mantarakta Danshi Fisa Cordalis. Chubolia na Chunoga Ramo Niunbash, Geska Yuta Mosceska, Ganimamba do Shukoron. Bram Tabanin Sochu. The come just mak Miki Baranye to so so rica chondin. One of my grabble mogo. Cabadumpa, mo wendido chokerembi norta kunyun wish chawa kachuba. Sura dachi morotuko kansa. Gopo mi chuba keng borakatun. Chuba contis gusha pidonki nekturon wangabolia. Ne bedwana ni bobo king batu no la crispa. Time to take me down to size. Shall I take you back to Colonel Tobin now? I hear you. Let me take care of this. Damn thing's stuck.
Shall I take you back to Colonel Turbin now? Follow me. Well done. There is just one last obstacle before the throne room. The beast that was used to break through the force field into the throne room lies ahead. No doubt it has slain its Sith handlers and now has a taste for human blood. Ignore the beast. Into the throne room. The queen must die. No blast it all. Take care of the guards. Clear the way to the Queen. Time to even the odds. This ends here, Vaklu. So, you've come to us. I had thought coming to Doxon might cause our paths to intersect. And I see that I'm right. But it turns out you were the enemy all along. The connection between these places and you was stronger than I knew. I had heard you were working with Vaklu, but I didn't want to believe it. Why are you sided with him? So this is all about money. You're just a common mercenary now. So how do we handle this? Don't expect me to be too forthcoming with answers. You've chosen your path. I will not help you along it. I hope... I hope that that isn't what set you down this path. We have reasons for our actions. But the answers you seek will only help you down the road you've chosen. I'm sorry to the Jedi, student, and friend I once knew. But I don't know who you are. And it appears they have new blood with them. You probably want to know more about them. Where they're coming from. Who leads them? What are their weaknesses? I won't tell you anything. You'll have to discover that on your own. You think I would tell you that? I'm no fool. They're safer with the Sith hunting them down. Are you done with your questions yet? They tire me. The bond between some masters and their apprentices is well known. But to that degree... I will not act as your guide anymore. If you haven't found your own enlightenment, you probably never will. You had such great potential, and it was all wasted. No, I won't. You may think the dark side has granted you great power, but I fight with the Force as well. 
Let's see what you've learned. told the other masters that our only chance to figure out what was happening to us was to find you, to try to understand what happened to you. What a fool I was. And now you are no doubt seeking to destroy the Jedi. But the remaining Jedi will gather again very soon. This at least you cannot prevent. Telos. But Telos was destroyed during the Jedi Civil War. I don't know what you mean. Atrus? But I thought she died with the rest on Qatar. You've met other Jedi, I can tell. But you won't find me an easy opponent. I will not give you the benefit of my wisdom, Dark One. Very well. Perhaps my knowledge will sway you from your dark designs. I was one of the only council members who believed in you. Part of me still does. So what do you have to say for yourself? When you stood before us in the council chamber on Coruscant, we felt something from you we'd never felt before. It was as if the Force had died within you, leaving you hollow. We live our whole lives in touch with the Force, in touch with life all around us. And you had a gift in that regard. You formed bonds so easily, and they flowed deep between you and others. To see such emptiness in the Force standing before you, it's not an easy thing to face. Whatever is attacking us, it's leaving something in its wake. Something we haven't felt since you stood before us in judgment. The deaths of these Jedi, the destruction of Qatar, all of these things are leaving behind echoes. Like the one we felt from you in the council chamber. It was clear to us, to me, that we had to find you. But we couldn't call you back from exile because we didn't know where you'd gone. I know that all too well. I came here to find them, to trace them to their source. The war on Duxon and Onderon. I thought that perhaps the tragedies that occurred here were concealing them. And now, here you are. You always had deep connections to the Force, but such connections can corrupt one's spirit, as has happened with you. When I first sparred with you during your training as a Padawan, I could tell that you were different, but I did not expect you to fall so far. What do you expect me to say? You defied the council, you followed Revan to war. I know why you did it, but in so doing, much more harm was done. All those lives during the Mandalorian Wars, and all those you served beside. Too much death leaves echoes in the Force. It is the price for having such connections. Apparently, your self-inflicted wounds would not heal. And now that they've festered, you've come looking to the Jedi for vengeance. As if we were somehow responsible for the results of your actions. Do you really think I would tell you, even if I knew? If that's why you're here, then you'd come here in vain. So you heard what we said. These questions I cannot answer. This is something the Council must answer, not, not I. You must understand. It is hard for me. Especially after all you've done. Did you know when I was training you that I considered making you my Padawan? I didn't. The demands of the Jedi Council were too great, and you even became a guardian. I had hoped I could train you to eventually replace me. But I had such so the decision that had to be made was not easy, but I won't say anything more. Cut you off from the Force. Why do you think the Council was responsible for that? Your misplaced blame explains much. But the only one responsible for your present state is you. That sounds like the bond that often forms between master and apprentice. But to that degree? You always did form connections to others, strong ones. Even when you were a student, 
But what you are describing is beyond me. Your time is at an end, Talia. Your people have abandoned you, and now your life is forfeit. You would destroy everything just for your ambition, Vaklu. The Republic, ISIS, everything. That is a gross simplification, Talia. Change is a painful process. A price must be paid. But Onderon will have a new destiny, one larger than you could imagine. You're getting careless, Vaklu. One more mistake, and you're the one who will pay the price. Her mastery of the blade has improved, but there is more to leadership than skill with a blade. Jedi, do you want to take care of her? I will not forget this. Do what you will. I will not fall easily. <laughs> sacrifice was necessary to ensure our future. This could not have happened without you. You will be given everything I promised you. I risked a great deal by asking for your assistance, as did you in helping. Your reward is well earned. Because I had faith in you. I know who you are. You are the last of the Jedi, hunted by the Exchange, the Sith and the Hotspawn knows who else. They've thrown everything they have to capture and kill you. But you cannot be stopped. If anyone could save us from our fate, it was you. After we've secured the city, and that will take time, you will always be welcome here. If the Republic hunts you down as a price of your ambition, this place will be a haven to you. I will never forget what you have done this day. As do I, Jedi. As do I. Your shuttle is awaiting you. After the Civil War is taken care of, which will take time, you are welcome back. I sense the conflict on Onderon even from this dense jungle. Did everything go as you planned? Why bother? War is the natural state of things. All matter seeks to either assimilate or destroy other matter. We should return to the Ebon Hawk now and plot our next course of action. I don't understand why you won't let me take a look. 
Statement. I've had quite enough tampering at the hands of unskilled meatbags such as yourself. I'm not eager to submit to this treatment now or in the future. Unskilled meatbag? I'll show you unskilled. Appeasement. I did not mean to imply that you were an unskilled meatbag, as incapable of performing rudimentary repairs as holding a hydro spanner. It is only that I am quite particular with my repairs. Perhaps, when I am more confident in your abilities, I will allow you to examine my internal components. If you've got some time, I'd like to see what I can upgrade for you. Yes, I do have a few moments to spare for your work. I would like to know what he is doing here, though. He helps me out with repairs. That isn't a problem, is it? I suppose not. Perhaps in working on my circuitry, your assistant will learn something about how a fully functional droid is constructed. Just ignore him and let's get to work. I would appreciate that. Our group has little in the way of time to spare, and I would not want to delay you from your other duties. Right. Let's get you open. See what you can do. I have to say, you are put together quite well. That wasn't much to do. As I told you, my design is streamlined and efficient, though I am pleased that you were able to make some improvements, and this was not just a waste of my valuable time. There were a few things from my remote that I was able to integrate into your construction. I see. Well, thank you. I'll let you get back to your work. speak with you about your assistant my assistant oh right what is it i believe he has it in his head that my relative size is comical i find his disparaging beeps and whistles to be quite annoying i thought only utility droids had size issues if i am to continue to operate with him i would appreciate it if you spoke with him about this otherwise i will be forced to find a more permanent solution so you fought against the Mandalorians in the war? I was part of the war effort, yes. I worked as a technician, though. But you fought on the front lines. To a Mandalorian, there is honor in that. I could do without your Mandalorian honor. I saw the results of your honor. The absolute destruction your warriors brought. And look at them now. Mandalorians are little better than mercenary thugs. And what's honor to someone like that? All they care about are credits. If I were you, I'd pick your words more carefully. I don't need compliments from a murderer. Maybe that's what it looked like to you, but that isn't why we fought. We fought for honor and glory in the heat of battle. You did nothing but murder innocents. The Republic took us too lightly. We wanted to face the full force of their army. We had to goad them to fight. That's exactly what I'm talking about. If you ask me, you Mandalorians just got what you deserved at Malakor. Defeat is part of a warrior's life. We will recover. Stronger than before. Doesn't it even bother you that your people were almost destroyed? Or do lives have no meaning to you? People die in war. Well, I'm glad to have you guarding my back. Fine by me. Yes. Have you come with questions? Very well. If you travel with us, Blinded One, then you shall work for your passage on this vessel. Your lightsaber, give it to me. I shall die before it passes from my hands. Your lightsaber, give it to me. The crystal I took from the condensed mist sunk it. It is adequate. You are young, your energy for such things surpasses mine, and your skill is enough that you may teach him the basics of the weapon. There is much that he has forgotten. There is only so much I can teach him. That fact did not escape me. Now, try to kill her with the single blade. Use no other force technique, no items, merely the blade.
Now do it with two weapons, one in each hand. Again, no items, no force powers. Let us see what you can do when your hands and mind are divided. No force techniques other than weapon skill. Let, it Let the force fill the cracks in your spirit. <laughs> Now, divest yourself of your weapons. You, blinded one, you will keep yours. Let us see what you can do when you have no weapons left to you. Now, attack her. <laughs> There is nothing more for me to teach you. You know as much of battle as I. My life for yours. I am prepared both in mind and body for your teachings. I understand now. Such a form will increase my skills and my use to you. We've hit the ground. This is Korriban. Why would one of the Jedi you're looking for come here? An adequate job, pilot. Perhaps here there is some trace of those who pursue us. I sense that we may be truly alone on the surface. There are signs of life on the surface. Beasts by the dozen. So don't worry, you won't be quite as lonesome as she makes out. You might want to keep your, uh, lightsaber sharp. Or do whatever you do in these situations. Although, I think that the pilot's mechanical devices are probably accurate. If there are Sith here, their numbers are few, and they are hidden. It seems quiet. Just the wind. But deep beneath the surface, you can feel the pain of what took place here. This place merely tolerates sentience walking upon it. It is pleased to have been left alone. There is great power here for those with the ambition to use it. There is great power in this place, for those who can hear its call. There is much that would draw a Jedi to this place. The resting grounds of the ancient and more recently departed Sith contain many teachings believed lost. The most likely place to find our lost Jedi is the ruins of the old academy. After Malak and his army were defeated, instead of restoring order to Korriban, Revan suddenly departed, leaving both his destination and reasons for leaving a mystery. It took a year or two for the Republic to send a force here to deal with any Sith that may have remained. They found Korriban much as we have, barren and lifeless. It was assumed that the remnants of the Sith turned on each other, vying for what little power remained. The Republic found evidence that several Sith Lords escaped Korriban, fleeing to remote sections of the galaxy. As lifeless as it seems, the dark side is very strong here. The Sith Lords would not ignore such a powerful place. There is much that can be learned, even here. You should go to the ruins of the old academy. If there are any traces here of Sith, that is where they would be. If you walk Korriban's surface, you shall walk it without me. I cannot. This place is strong with the dark side. It is difficult to center myself here. Korriban holds few secrets from me, but much that you should learn. Perhaps not, but I would caution you to guard your feelings carefully here. Korriban attacks the spirit and the body, and there have been few who can fight its power. I will remain here and meditate. Our link remains. I shall contact you and provide guidance when needed. The Academy is on the other side of this valley. Be careful. Dark energy fills these ruins, and even the fallen Sith 
live still. tombs of the ancient Sith Lords. Each tomb was once infused with the history and heritage of the old Sith Empire, containing great mysteries and powerful relics of the Force. However, even the many traps could not long hold back the curious, the fools, and the weak. And so these tombs fell, spilling their secrets into the hands of those unable to comprehend or preserve them. The broken corpses before you are all that remain of the Sith on Korriban. I doubt there is much to be gained from looting these bodies. It would be best to leave them be. Listen, the wind from the cave tells of great power within, recently awakened. There is great power and dark energy within this cave. I would advise you to finish your explorations within the academy before venturing into the cave. was left open on purpose. Someone is expecting us. You can expect more than these beasts within the Academy. Be prepared. is here. Find him.
Say the words.
<laughs> I'll bet even the Ebonhawk couldn't blast through this door. A dark Jedi left her impression here. This door has been sealed intentionally. Oh! 
Just say the word. Pure Pazak. and their fate. I am convinced that Revan did not intend us to keep the Starforge. To use it would mean the end of the Sith, and the end of the Force. I have done as Revan asked and remained here, but he has been gone for too long. I will wait no longer. Whoever survives this Sith civil war shall not be one I wish to follow. There is only Revan. Only he can shape this galaxy as it is meant to be shaped. He lives still. This I know. If he will not return, then I shall find him and discover why. I cannot remain here not knowing. I become certain there is something he remembered in the unknown regions. It is a technique he learned fighting the Mandalorians that allowed him to convert the last of the Jedi who fought beside him and murder those who would not. And he fears it is still out there and silent for far too long.
you come here for answers? There are none. The call of Korriban is strong, but it is the call of the dead. It is fitting you came here. I have studied you and found nothing but weakness. Yet still she clutches at you, as if you are all that gives her life. I know her as an apprentice knows their master. And as a master knows an apprentice. I want her to die and see all that she has built cast down. All that she holds dear in shards at her feet. You are a wretched thing. A thing of weakness and fear. You are her apprentice in name only. I am the master. And that is why you will die. This is not a battle that can be won. Flee. There will be another time, but it is not now, not here, while Korriban runs through him. She protects him, shields him. Find him, hunt him wherever he travels. He will not escape me again. I will bring his corpse to her, cast it at her feet. It will be as if killing her children. I will kill all she protects, all she shields, until her hands are drenched in blood.
I believe you are strong enough to explore the tomb ahead. This tomb has not been plundered. Its mysteries may still be intact, but so might its traps. Take great caution. What is that? Can't go any further. I sense a great presence within this tomb. Master, it calls to you. You will have to face the challenges of this tomb alone. Are you ready? Do not heed the words of the Jedi Council. The Republic will fall if we do not act now. Already the Mandalorians have taken three systems along the rim. They will only grow more powerful with time. Come stand with me. We will use our might to help the Republic in its time of need. Join Revan and I. Together we will battle this menace. The Jedi Council is wise, but will take too long to deal with this threat. We must act now to stop the Mandalorians. I have heard of you. Your masters speak well of you, of your skills in battle. Join us. The Jedi Council is wise, but can make mistakes. History has proven this time and time again. The Council seems content to watch, to debate, while entire systems fall to the Mandalorians. If we don't act now, there may be no Republic army to assist in the future. I sense you will join us. What are your reasons? You should trust in yourself, and in your instincts. It was within our power to end the war, and the Council chose to debate behind closed doors, while planets burned. Yes, that's right. Without us. The Republic would have been no more, and the Council? Their vaunted wisdom bred only in action, and that would have led to destruction greater than anything born of the Dark Side. So, if you could do it all again, the real question is, would you? The Mandalorians await on the edge of space, eager to crush the Republic. You know how this turns out. Would you do it any different, knowing what it costs you, knowing what it costs the rest? So knowing all that would transpire, would you still follow Revan and I? Excellent. And now you are all alone. Would you join me now? You didn't follow Revan and I down our path. Join us. Your journey hasn't ended yet. The first lesson will be carved in your flesh. Pain is the ultimate teacher, and the lesson begins now.
Tom says we've lost another heavy droid transport. How can we break through the Mandalorian lines without support? The path is mined and the place is crawling with enemies. I know we've got our orders to press forward, but we're at quarter strength. We can't, General. It's impossible. We need to retreat. We've already lost half the men just getting to the path. They've got the rest of the company pinned down by the crash site. You can't possibly ask the troops to go forward. If you ask us to charge, will it make a difference? Will our sacrifice mean something?
We... we will press forward if you ask it. The path is mine. If you ask us to charge, there will be losses, General. I'll tell the men, General. Everyone, you heard the General. Charge! Charge! <laughs> You are to be commended for making it this far. You've revisited the dark moments of your past and now you must face the present.
your confusion is natural. The others and I will help you understand. Get away from her! She's a dark Jedi. Atten, I've had enough of your sniper contempt. No, I won't allow her to corrupt you. I will protect you, even from yourself. Hey, what's the commotion here? Stay out of this, Beodor. This is a personal dispute between Atten and myself. You're threatening Atten with a lightsaber, and I'm supposed to just stay out of it? No. The three of you would challenge me? You sorely underestimate the power of the Force. Think again, Kreia. Your dark influence will end. Your friend are all arrayed against me. Will you stand for this? So you will do nothing. Apathy is death. Worse than death. Because at least a rotting corpse feeds the beasts and insects. Apathy is death. Apathy is death. Apathy is death. Apathy is death. Statement. Apathy is death. Apathy is death. Apathy is death. Apathy is death. The dangers you faced in this tomb were real, but these images of the past serve to prepare you for your future. Surely you have felt what awaits. Events are shaping themselves about you, seeking to draw you into their center. Take care not to give in to vanity and arrogance. This breeds complacency and stagnation, as exhibited by the Jedi Council. Their prolonged inaction led inevitably to their downfall. The galaxy will bend itself only to those of strength and conviction. You may not yet understand what you learned here. That wisdom will come in the future. Overestimate the power of the tomb. Any change you feel is coming from within yourself. Instinctually, you know your true path. Trust in your feelings. They will lead you in conquering the many challenges that the future holds for you. Search the room you are in. You should be able to unlock a passage that leads outside the tomb.
here, you can just barely see the Sith archaeologists' efforts to uncover relics of the ancients. What is left of the Jedi has felt what has happened, the death of Master Kavar. You will find what remains in the ruins of the Enclave on Dantooine. This matter has come full circle, and there is something there that you must hear if you are to understand. Traveler has returned. So, I hope you've been all sales. I, I believe you. There's nothing.
It... it is different. It has been some time. Is it as you expected? Yes, and that is I, though I am not of them any longer. Your actions have crippled the Order, perhaps destroyed them. No, perhaps... It is difficult to say. For every Jedi slain, for every Sith slain, another rises. But the Order is wounded, yes. Because there is something we must discuss. I have done what I can to keep you from the Jedi and the Sith, but a critical moment approaches, and what you have done is not enough. Master Vrook, despite his faults, was right to come here. I had thought he might have recognized Dantooine for what it was, what had been done there. You are tied to places such as these, you know. Yes, but Master Vrook was unwilling to see what other masters may have seen. That the echo of Dantooine he felt was inside you as well. They admitted it as much in the council chamber after your trial, though they did not understand what it meant at first. They assumed it was a threat that they felt. From one perspective, they were correct. As much as you can form connections to others, such connections exist on the galactic scale as well. It is possible to hurt or sever those connections, to create places in the Force where it is difficult to center oneself, but that is the crudest form of manipulation. It is possible to affect those connections in other ways, by the slightest action, a seemingly minor choice, a small cruelty, the stronger your connection to life, to the Force, the stronger these echoes can be made, and the stronger they are felt. When heard, Force sensitives instinctively seek out the Source, are drawn to it, to try and form a connection. And when the connection is formed, both become stronger, and the influence between them grows. Your companions... Many are touched by the Force, on some level, and in many ways they serve out of compulsion and because your connection influences them strongly. It was much like it was for you in the Mandalorian Wars, with many Jedi under your command. But this connection has other consequences. When the Source is wounded, the one on which others draw strength, then they are wounded as well. What one feels, the other feels. And when others die, the scream travels back to the Source. If they occur at the same time, or at the right time, these screams will build upon each other until it is the only sound you can hear. And the deaths of many will cause the screams to build until their pain becomes yours, and you die as well. And that is why, during the Mandalorian Wars, you lost your connection to the Force. It was that final battle, the deaths of so many Jedi, that caused you to lose your connection. It caused the wound that you feel now, it caused pain in the Force, an emptiness, a wound that has yet to heal. But it does not end there. If it did, then perhaps the threat that we face would be more manageable. This pain I describe, the echo of these acts, is true of planets as well. Tremendous loss of life on a planetary scale can also cast echoes, create a scream, a wound in the Force that can travel across the galaxy. It can be felt by Force-sensitives, and it can influence them, whether they realize it or not. 
If enough of these echoes are allowed to build in the Force uncontrolled, the consequences could be disastrous. The connections of all life would be affected. As I have said, screams and their echoes can overlap, build in strength, and if timed correctly, they will build on each other. The scream will grow, and anything that can hear this scream shall be deafened or killed. But in order for this to work, all of them must be timed correctly, must be carefully orchestrated and controlled, from the greatest to the smallest of echoes, even the ones that come from a lone exile echoing across the galaxy. And when that exile forms connections to others as you do, the danger becomes apparent, the echo continues to grow, to travel. Yes, he is correct. You form such bonds easily. The why of it is not important now. All that is important is that you understand that your actions affect others strongly. Anyone can do such things, since life is connected by the Force. Sometimes the connections are faint, but in your case, they are very strong. You instinctively know how to manipulate such connections, to influence others. You have seen it mirrored in those who travel with you. You give others strength to act, but it is also possible to draw upon the strength of others to increase your own. It is similar to drawing upon the Force as Jedi do, but when it is touched by the power of the dark side, it is something else, something deadly. These Sith we face, they have learned how to do this. It is a technique that has been lost for some time, not seen in the day since the ancient Sith. They can use it to consume other Force sensitives and at the highest pinnacle of power, use it to consume anything that lives. The blind seer. Her master has harnessed this technique, and he is rapidly approaching the height of its power. I fear he may even rival some of the ancient Sith. He is already more of a force than a living thing, a hole in the force that threatens to draw everything into it. And the teaching must die with him, or else all life will be placed in jeopardy. The destruction of the Order, the Masters. It was not an end in itself. I did not expect them to still live. Their presence was knowledge I did not possess. But now this has been corrected, and now the sides of this conflict are as I had thought them to be. There are no more unknowns. But this moment is all that really matters. It was never my wish that you find the masters, only find yourself, although I did not expect them to still live. I had hoped you would learn something from the Jedi Masters as they fell before you. Not just of battle, but of yourself and the Force. I must know if killing them, if revenge brought you any measure of satisfaction. If seeing them dead has settled the disquiet within you. because it matters to me in a way that never mattered to the Jedi, to the Council when they cast you out. You must understand, I did not wish the Jedi dead. Defeated, perhaps. I merely wished them to see that they and their teachings were wrong, that one could not truly understand the Force simply by adhering to the Jedi Code. All I have ever trained have been failures to them. Students who went to fight the Mandalorians who fell to the dark side, who abandoned their training. To see one that had the strength to best them, that is a moment I will not forget. Yet, it has not been as satisfying as I had hoped. To best one in battle is one thing. To defeat them without striking a blow, that was my hope. Regardless, it had to be done. To have such powerful Jedi still live still be felt in the Force, even on such worlds as they had chosen, was a threat that had to be ended. That is not important. First, let us return to my question. If, by killing these Jedi, if you achieved any measure of peace... It is important to me, and I wish an answer, not more questions from you. It was as I thought. 
You have failed me completely and utterly. I have taught you to hear the force again, shown you the contrast, and yet still you do not understand. This is what you have wrought. Countless murderers, slayers, assassins, born of war that has, as always, taught the wrong lesson. You showed them life without the force, and instead of showing them truth, power, all you showed them was how the galaxy may die. You are responsible for all of this. Even now, events spiral towards destruction, and there is nothing that can be done because you refuse to listen, to understand. You have seen the effects you have on those close to you, heard the echoes scream across dead planets, and watched as your strength has grown. Yet it is for nothing to have the Jedi Masters brought low by such a failure. There is no victory in that. You have not heard a thing I have taught, and for all I have said, you have never learned to listen. There. Do you feel that exile? It cuts through your defenses, as unprepared for such an attack as you are. Let that pain be a lesson, and a reminder of what you have forgotten. You were my last hope. The only one who could change what is to come. And now you have left me nothing. I shall teach you no longer. Our bond remains, but that is all. This place will hide you from the Sith for a time. Enough to do what must be done. Stay here and die, apprentice, among the wreckage of all that remains of the Jedi. It is a fitting grave until the Sith come to end you, to end everything. Oh, yes. At last, you see. I am one of the Sith, it is true. I must answer for my actions, and it is my wish that only Atris hear my answers. You have taught them to bond with others, and then feed on others through that bond. What you have brought is the death of all who can feel the Force. It is your gift to the galaxy, Exile. And unless you hear it, and silence the echo you have caused, then every living thing everywhere that is touched by the Force will die. Soon your ship will come, my master. I will bring him before you, but I will not let you have him. Soon your ship shall come from that which made you. I know you can hear me. I have always known. It is why I followed you. I have destroyed planets for you, General. But now, this once, if we could save something in this galaxy, I need to do this, or I will die inside, like I died at Malachor V.
The handmaiden took her. She thinks Kreia killed you. Because that's the lie Kreia told her, that's why. The only thing that matters is the handmaiden believes it. And she's gonna react exactly how that old witch hoped she would. That's why she wanted the handmaiden on board, you know. So she could use her to reach the Telos Academy whenever she wished, without needing the access codes. She would, if she thought she was bringing Atris a prisoner, especially a Sith Lord. She'll take her to Telos, and Atris will do what she'll do to anyone she thinks is a Sith. Yeah, I know. Are you surprised? All that talk of hatred, manipulation, and standing on your own two feet? Sorry, you don't get any more Sith than that. Still, if we were all judged by who we were in the past, I don't think you'd understand who we are now. That's what I was afraid you'd say. What is wrong? Something troubles you. I can feel it. That is a strange answer. I do not understand. I would die for you. When I tell you my life for yours, it is my choice. And if there is an ending between us where my sacrifice can save you, it will be because it is my desire, not your will. I simply do. And sometimes there is no reason that can be given. What did you learn within the Jedi Academy? Then that is the danger of their beliefs. They do not understand you, what it means to be human, to lead. The feelings I have for you are because of what I see, what I hear in your voice. All that tells me you are a natural leader. I follow because I believe in you. I would die for you because I believe in you. And where they look at you and see the death of the Force, I look at you and see hope for all life. I look at you and see that perhaps a life untouched by the Force is not the punishment it is believed to be. I will understand if you feel you must go on alone, but I ask that you do not. Instead, take strength from your connection to others. Do not forsake them as you did in exile. He awaits you at Telos. If you go there, you must face him. And when you do, he will wound you, as he has wounded me. I ask you, I beg you, to stay here with me. I want to look upon you. Where no one else can see. Where it is just us. I want to see your face. The color of your skin. I wish to see what the handmaiden sees. When she looks at you. That causes her heart to race. And her tone to change. What causes her to forsake her heritage, her oaths. As you made me forsake mine. I need to know if perhaps I am wrong. If the universe is not as my master once showed me. From the moment I heard your voice across the galaxy, I have longed for you. It is the echo, a wound that travels still, that when heard, made me understand that there was another wounded as I was. One who had felt the same sense of loss. When I heard it, I loved you more than my own life, and I wanted you to be here with me.
for as long as you will let me love you, stay. And I want you to see what I see when I gaze upon you. I want you to know why I cannot look at you, and why I am drawn to you. Who is there? Who I am is not the question. I am Atreus, Jedi Master. The last historian of the Jedi. The last of the Jedi. Those are titles, words you cling to as the darkness falls around you. It is not the first time we have met, Atreus. I was here... before. With the Exile? Yes, I was here both times when the Exile was brought before you. Who are you? I was the one who asked him to be exiled. I did as you asked, so long ago. You... you seem familiar to me. Atris, I have always been here. You are that which has attacked the Jedi. You are Sith. Sith is a title, yes, but like you, the title is not who I am. It is not what I believe. For you, it is different. Know that there was once a Darth Treyer, and that she cast aside that role, was exiled, and found a new purpose. But there must always be a Darth Treyer, one that holds the knowledge of betrayal, who has been betrayed in their heart, and will betray in turn. You have bathed in the knowledge of the Sith, but there is not enough truth in such teachings. But it will be a step for you. You have gathered Sith holocrons, Sith teachings from across the galaxy. It is why you have chosen servants who cannot feel the Force. And most importantly, they cannot feel what you have become. I have sought to preserve the Jedi Order, and I have gathered all that I know of the Sith to this place, so I might find them and stop them. I had wondered if any of these holocrons had survived Dantooine. You have taken relics from one destroyed planet to the devastation of another. It was always intended for the Jedi to retreat to Telos should Dantooine be attacked taking all their lore with them. We could not allow the tragedy at Osis to happen again. Such an act marked Telos for destruction. It is why the Sith came here, though the fleet commanders did not know why. It is why Revan ordered its destruction to mark the beginning of the Jedi's civil war. It was a message that there would be no place for the Jedi to retreat, to hide. I would not be surprised if Revan left other gifts beneath the surface of the planet. Much can be buried beneath graveyards that will never be found. When the Sith attacked, I felt Telos die. Turbo lasers fell like lightning upon the landscape, as they did on Dantooine. And so many died. So many voices, screaming in pain. Yes, such acts leave their mark on the galaxy. Their cries travel far, though few can hear them. How did it happen? Search your heart. It was never battle that called to you, never battle that caused you to fall. Alakor V has touched many things, and it casts its echoes still. Why did he betray me? You betrayed yourself. Do not blame the exile. And unlike you and I, there is still a chance that one may be saved, the one that you cast out. Where is the exile? I had thought... Oh, he will come, but it will be too late to save either of us. It is such a quiet thing to fall, but far more terrible is to admit it. Your mistress awaits. She has much to share with you. The last of the handmaidens is before us. It is good that you have returned. You have much to answer for. What are you saying? You have betrayed us. You have betrayed Atris. You are no longer one of us. You followed the Jedi, betrayed your oath. Listen to me. Atris has been touched by the Sith. It is not too late for- Silence. It is a crime to kill blood. 
but not to kill a betrayer as you. We shall see. You were always the last of us, and now we shall show you why. We shall see what the Exile has taught. If she kills her sisters, then the Dark Side will have its claim on her. Yet if she does not, then she will die. Such is sacrifice. The true test of battle is how much force to bring against opponents. If you wish to kill them, do not hold back. But if you wish to stun them, incapacitate them, then you must choose your attacks carefully, using just the right amount of force, just the right weapon, to stop them.
Where have you been? You have been absent so long, I feared for your safety. Were you with the exile all this time? Mistress, as you commanded, I... Commanded? Did I command you to consort with him? To betray your oath? Mistress, the exile taught me many things. I am certain he did. And now perhaps it is time to show me what you have learned. Mistress, I do not understand. I... I do not. But you will learn. But you have had a long journey. And I am anxious to see what you have learned of war and battle. Enough! Did you have feelings for him? Did you touch him? Did you look upon him with love? There is no love in that one. He is a shell, devoid of emotion. All that he was died at Malachor, and he dies there still, as he should. So, one exile has arrived to save another. This is a weapon of a Jedi. You shall not have it. Kreia? Ah, that is not her name. She is gone, and is now beyond your reach, Exile. Where she has gone, only I shall follow. After I have dealt with you. Your execution has been too long delayed, Exile.
She said you would come here to this place. If you think you can defeat me here, you are wrong. All this collected knowledge, all these teachings of combat and the Force, they are mine to command. And if I must use it to end you, I will. Surrender. You need not die. I fear nothing, least of all you. Let us end this. Kill me. End this. If you will not kill me, then what will you do? This knowledge of the Sith and the Jedi is what I am. It is my attempt to hold on to the past, to try and protect the future. Once I was a historian, the chronicler of the Jedi, and when both wars passed me by, I was determined that I would not forsake battle again. In some part of me, I knew I had made choices compromises, but always for the sake of the Republic, of the galaxy. To do what you had done, at times, did not seem so wrong. To fight such a threat, sometimes one's choices seem narrower than they are, until it seems there is no solid foundation on which to stand. I feel that I understand what drove you to battle, to fight the Mandalorians. It was something you could not turn away from. You always knew where they were striking from. You always knew. These Sith are spawned of you. Spawned by the Mandalorian Wars. All those deaths. All those Jedi. Their power is to feed on life, until nothing is left except a hollow galaxy, echoing with the screams of the Jedi lost to us. Yes, I had thought she was awaiting me at that place, but I see now that she lied. It was not meant for me, but for you. She has gone there. She is waiting for you to travel to Malachor V, to finish what you started. Yes, you are an echo in the Force, a hollow space where it has been wounded. It takes a great act of destruction to create such emptiness, but it can be done. It creates places where the Force is difficult to hear and difficult to find one's way, and you carry it with you, always. Now she seeks to create another echo, a wound in the Force, greater than the one before, greater than the one you caused. It will deafen all touched by the Force until no life is left. You were strong enough to withstand it once, but few have your strength in such matters, especially if they are unprepared. I do not know, but she needs you there. If you choose not to follow, she will murder herself at the heart of Malachor and you will die along with her. You are important to her somehow, but I... But I do not know for certain. She is willing to sacrifice herself at the heart of that graveyard world for you. A choice others have made in the past. A choice I wish to make. It is because I care for you. And I suspect that you alone hold that place in her heart where nothing else lives. And that is why you are the only one who can stop the destruction to come. She seeks the death of all Jedi, all Sith, and the death of the Force. It is madness. It is impossible but she believes you are the key. There are places in the galaxy dead to the Force where nothing lives, where the echoes travel forever and do not reach their destination. And these places may be created, even from the simplest of events, the slightest of motions. One person, at the right place, at the right time, can change the face of the galaxy, or end it.
You're important to her somehow. Platush. But I... It is... And that... She seeks... Because the force had been stripped from her, as it had been torn from you. At times, I wonder what we would be if the force was taken from us. If we would truly be Jedi or Sith, or simply human. And what will you do with me now? Abandon me here on this dead world, or end my life as I wish to end yours? You have done well. All is as I have foreseen. There must always be a Darth Traer, and if it will not be her, then I must assume that role and, as always, bring about the betrayal of the Jedi and the Sith. I am not here, not in the flesh, not in your mind. These holocrons hold much of the Sith, and they hold much of my teachings from long ago. But you have much yet to learn, and great tests await you. The death of the past, the death of this false Jedi was only part of it. One of the Sith Lords has come to Telos. You know why he has come here, and if he is not stopped here now, then he shall lay waste to this planet. You must confront him. He is part of the past, and like this false Jedi, must be laid to rest. Only then shall you be ready for your final test. If not, then you shall die. Such arrogance. You know where the final test lies. It is not here, not in the battle that will wage across the surface and skies of this dead planet. And know that if you do not come to me, if you run from this, then I shall sacrifice myself and end both our lives through the bond we share. You know where you must travel, and there I shall be waiting for you. You came for me. I thought I had lost you. Kreia. She said the Council had ended you, and all along she was one of those who had sought to kill us. When I heard her say that you were dead, I... I failed you. I let my emotion run through me and I acted without thinking. I wanted to punish her. Hurt her. See her answer for what she had done to the Jedi for leading you to the Council. Of course. Uh, forgive my display. I... I am the last of the Handmaidens no longer. I am Brianna, your disciple, and the one who will stand with you against all enemies who face us. Well, what do we have here? I didn't believe it when Lino reported the Ebon Hawk at Dock, but I guess it really has. Though given the trouble we've been having, maybe I shouldn't be surprised to see you. You look terrible. What happened to you? Some sort of plague growing around? You were looking for me, Gren? About time you showed up. The Sith are moving to keep us trapped in here. We need to push them back, so we can get reinforcements deployed to the rest of the station. Sounds like you need someone to punch a hole for you. That's the idea, yes. All right then. You'll have one Sith-sized hole coming up. Let's go, boys. It 
came out of nowhere. A fleet of warships dropped out of hyperspace, and before we could scramble fighters to intercept them, we were under attack. There were Sith fighters everywhere, and the few flights we sent out were barely launched when the bombardment began. We did our best, but we couldn't stop the landing craft that followed the initial wave. We couldn't hold back the Sith troops. We chose to retreat and began the evacuation instead. We were unprepared, and the docks were quickly overrun. We retreated back to the entertainment module to evacuate residents and workers. Then there's also the fuel situation. Look, can't we leave the past behind us? We need to deal with the situation we have now, and whatever I might think about you, I'm going to set that aside. But now, we have a different problem. Because we don't have enough fuel, we won't be able to keep the station in orbit and operational and fight off the Sith at the same time. We'll try to make the best of what we have left, but it's going to be cutting it pretty close. The Sith numbers seem limitless, but we haven't lost all hope. We've heard reports that we might be receiving some assistance. If you need to get to the Ravager, then you're going to have to fight your way to the shuttle from here to the entertainment module, then make your way to the docking shuttle. Does this mean you won't be putting us into force cages again? I thought I saw you disembark with Beodor. Is he here? Now that you mention it, where is he? I guess it's no time to be swapping war stories anyways. Good luck. <laughs> I must leave you for a time, to gather my Mandalorian warriors. We will rejoin you when the time comes for the assault on the Ravager. Is that your idea of a joke? Don't be a fool. I'll meet you at the shuttle. Well, boys. The TSF's in over their heads, and they need us to rescue their hides. Simple enough. We just need to get out there and face down a squad of Sith soldiers. Time to earn our pay. My boys will have the way cleared for you in moments.
Thank goodness you're here. We just can't seem to make any progress against the Sith line. After they established their position, they brought out their turrets. They've been devastating our numbers. Uh, we managed to take a few out, but they just keep unloading more of them to replace the destroyed ones. It's up to you to help us throw them back. We gotta get them cleared out of here, and then we're ready for one last charge. All right. Everyone provide covering fire for the Jedi, then advance on the Sith positions. We'll be right behind you. Good luck. Well, I'm not dead. I guess that's something. I got hit by a grenade. I, I just barely missed the whole blast. Ugh. They're, they're moving ahead towards the TSF office. It's tough going, though. The, the Sith, they, they seem to be everywhere. Well, that's a relief. Of course, if we can't stop the Sith from destroying the fuel controls, it won't matter one bit. If I'm good enough to survive this, then I'm good enough to join the fight. Face this alone. I will go with you and be by your side. So cold at the brink of battle. I envy your detachment. Sir. Sith warship dead ahead of us. It's attacking Citadel Station. Let's close the trap. Concentrate all fire on the warship and deploy red and blue wings to engage enemy fighters. Sir, at this distance, our weapons will barely scratch it. We can't hope to match its firepower, but we need to draw it away from Telos. Sir, if it keeps firing on Citadel Station, the station won't be able to maintain its orbit. I am aware of the situation, Lieutenant. I do not intend to lose Telos twice, and I know that ship. It was a Malachor 5.
transit vessel and are securing the area. The vessel has suffered extensive structural damage, but its particle fields still maintain a minimal atmosphere within the ship. And our cargo? It's being brought aboard. Soon, teams will be dispatched to the target sites. Do the Republic forces suspect? No, Mandalore. The proton cores do not emit a signature the Republic ships can detect. If they do pick up the signal, they will assume it to be emanating from the ship's missile bays. Did you get an ID signature on this vessel? You were right about the vessel, Mandalore. It is of Malachor. It still bears the wounds of Mandalorian guns. Then let's finish this. And remind the galaxy of Malachor V. What was that about? Nothing you need to worry about, Sith. You are coming with me. Don't get all sentimental. I just don't trust you to get the job done. Been waiting for this for ten years. It's just time to do things the old-fashioned way. I know what it meant for you to accompany me here, Candorus of Clan Ordo. Your trust honors me. If you betray me or my men, I will kill you. I was going to say the same, Candorus. <laughs> My life is yours. signal received, Mandalore. The proton core is active. We still need to set three more charges. Mandalore, we are holding our position, but the Sith appear to be offering little resistance. It's like they don't even realize we're here. 
catch one of the target sites. Place the proton core, prime it. Then give the signal, Mandalore. Arming signal received, Mandalore. The proton core is active. Two more sites are left. We've lost contact with two of our squads and we've had to fall back to the docking area. Have you come to kill me? You Jedi are masters of cruelty. Letting me take back my home, only to die here, far from Onderon. He happened. The hunger that fills this vessel. It is power, but it consumes without end. It is that power we felt on Onderon that Vaklu felt. It was an echo, too strong to ignore. You are right. The choice was mine. And you knew what would happen to me. General Vaklu and I when it seemed that we would need more to take Onderon, make it strong again. He came with his power, his soldiers. It seemed as if there was nothing we could not do. Nothing the Queen could do to stop us. I have served the wrong master. He cares nothing for Onderon, its soldiers, its people. Everything exists to feed his will. I came here to this dead ship, and now he will not permit me to leave. This ship, it is a graveyard of a terrible battle. Everything on it slowly dies, as long as he hungers. It is the way of all life that serves him. In his presence, all life dies. This ship is from Malachor. This Sith Lord of yours bolsters his fleet with ships from that world? He's nothing more than a scavenger. I think he is of that place. If so, then his power may be great indeed. Greater than I had thought. 
The master suffers. If he cannot feed, then the hunger begins to consume him. The planet, Telos, he may feed on something upon its surface to sustain him a while longer. You think to lie to me still? I will not be deceived again. I told him, you know, what the old woman told me. I told him of the Academy here, of the Jedi here. I could not have kept it from him, even if I had wanted to. He means that Jedi witch you travel with, Kreia. Yes, the old woman on Onderon. She spoke of the Jedi Academy here on Telos, and my master was forced to come here. Then her lies will mean the planet's destruction. He will destroy all of Telos. He will turn it to fire again and crush the planet beneath him. He will devour them all, murder them all. If there are no Jedi here, then my lord cannot feed his hunger. He will destroy the planet, the station. He will cleanse it of life. Even if the people below are not Force-sensitive, the small amount he can feed on from the mass destruction of the station and the life on the planet will sustain him a while longer. And if there are no Jedi below, he will have no other choice. If he feeds upon Citadel Station, we will be unable to escape in time. We will be consumed as well. Then, he will suffer. Without something to sustain him, I do not know what will happen. He will create nothing. He will end this place. Your old woman has killed this planet, and with it, countless other worlds that depend on its survival. You could not stop him even if you wanted to. And you cannot escape either. If the Force runs through you, he will feed on it when Citadel Station dies. Your time, your life, will end here. On the bridge. He waits on the bridge. Waiting for you. No, he does not wait for you. I do not believe he knows his ship has been boarded. And if he did, he would not care. The extent of his power cannot be put into words. And his perceptions have grown as well. To him... You are dust motes in a storm. A grain upon the beach. And as insignificant as a body that orbits the graveyard of Malakor. Fight him if you will. But if he turns his power upon you, you will be destroyed. This ship... Is it his weakness? It should not exist, yet it cruises the darkness between the stars. He tore it from the mass shadows of Malachor, along with his fleet. That is a measure of his power. <laughs> the ship is barely holding itself together. The structural damage should have destroyed it long ago. He holds it together. And he keeps us all alive. Just enough. Like rot worms within a dying beast. More Jedi tricks. No. Not Jedi. Not Jedi at all. If he's so powerful, why hasn't he stopped us then? We've attacked his ship, killed his soldiers, and he's done nothing. It is because he sees planets. Stars. Not people. To him, the planet below. The station with its teeming life. Only that is massive enough to demand his attention. There is nothing to be done, except wait. If you go to him, he will destroy you. And your last moment shall be of shadow and pain. Onderon. But there's no longer any need. You are right, as long as he exists. Onderon is in danger. The galaxy is in danger. What would you have me do? Go report to the target site, Colonel. I'll let my men know you're coming. And if you try anything stupid, they'll shoot you dead. I will do as you ask, for Onderon's sake. 
such acts have their own strength about them. I had forgotten. It may seem that way, but perhaps it can become much more. I'm sorry, I did not mean to speak of it. Principles of sacrifice and charity. These are things I have not seen in some time. I'm afraid that it will weaken you for what comes. But I have said enough, and you do not need my counsel. Your actions should, as always, be your own. Signal received, Mandalore. The Proton Core is active. Only one Proton Core remains to be set. We're encountering heavy resistance. I don't know how long we can hold out. What the hell was that? I told you to wait! Mandalore, we've made contact with the enemy. Was it in the target zone? No, Mandalore. We have failed you. I offer you my... Do we have another core? No, Mandalore. Even with the other two cores set in the ship, it will not be sufficient to destroy the vessel. We need to find another proton core, or we need to make one. All right, wait for my signal. This isn't over. And don't kill yourself before I tell you. No, there are no weapons. It was a place where I could center myself from the agony on board this ship. I do not have pleasant memories of it. If there is time, I would like to center myself. There is a meditation chamber within my cell that I would visit one last time. Past the surface, there is the Force. Where once there was a world that was strong in the Force. Where once there was a world that was strong in the Force, now there is a barren wasteland. From the death of an entire world comes great power. My hands shall be hate, my eyes revenge. You shall be avenged, and the one who has done this shall die. There's nothing more for me here.
Signal received, Mandalore. The proton core is active. That's the last of them, Mandalore. We can destroy the ship on your command.
This door leads to the bridge and my former master. If you wish to gather your strength, this is the last time. No, don't do this. He will... I... I... will try. He... I... cannot hold him for long. A man, nothing more. You are my master now, and I will follow wherever your path takes you. My path is at an end.
Andrus, are you all right? Get away from me. I don't need your help. Just leave me here. Candorus, the Force lies in all living things. I have watched my people die. You will survive. You have no choice. You have been wounded before and lived, Mandalorian. Rise. Many battles do you still have left in you. You sound like Revan at the end. Do you know what he told me as I lay dying on the outer rim? <laughs> that the Mandalorian Wars were our doom, and that we had been deceived. That it had never been our decision to wage war on the Republic. Revan said the Mandalorians didn't invade the Republic space ten years ago because it was our choice. We were tricked. Our entire people sacrificed as pawns. and never knew it. He said there was a war coming. That it was waiting out in the unknown regions. In the dark. Waiting for us to destroy each other. A war? This war? No, not this one. Another one. More terrible against an evil we couldn't begin to comprehend. A war of belief that had been fought for thousands of years. Revan went off to fight it. And left you here. Revan was one of the greatest military leaders in the galaxy, in history. He had no use for a people who had already been beaten once. He said the time of the Mandalorians was over. The Mandalorian Wars had killed us. And he laughed. And that is what burns in your heart. And that is why Clan Order was reborn. To prove Revan wrong. No, not Revan. left us all when he lost all that he loved at Malachor V. We go now, my master, to that dark place which made you, where you gained your ship, your troops, 
Your ship, my prison, that you dragged from the gravity well at Malachor V. Wish I'd never met him. Wish I'd died there. But the storms have dragged me down into Malachor V. We will not surrender. We will not die. Like we did on Malachor V. Your command echoes still, General. And I obey, as I did at Malachor V. Now Malachor V comes to us, and I wish to face it this last time. You know where you must go. It calls to you still. It is the heartbeat of the past. And she must be stopped, there, now. Or she will bring the screams of Malachor V to the galaxy, just as we carry the echo all this way. It has been some time. You were a fool to return. I spared you once. I will not do so again. Spare me? Ah, yes. No, you simply did not learn the lesson I sought to teach. That your strength is as meaningless as the strength of my hand. Why have you returned? Because now I understand why the Exile did what he did. There is much to be done. Master, he is here. I know. What is thy bidding, my master? You are to do nothing. When he arrives, bring him before me. He will not survive Malachor. What will you do with him, my master? You know what I shall do. You, who wear my teaching so well. I will break him. He is a blank slate upon which my teachings may be written, as I intended for you so long ago. Leave me. Await the arrival of the Exile. When he comes, bring him before me.
Sith are striking from the graveyard of Malachor V. The ship the Sith Lord was on was one of the vessels damaged in that final battle. If you reach Malachor's surface, the mass shadow generator can be undone, provided there are enough vessels intact within the orbiting debris or buried in the planet's surface. Use the sequence I am unlocking in your memory banks on the engine core of any vessel you encounter on Malachor. If my calculations are correct, four vessels should be enough to power up the mass shadow generator and undo the damage that was done in Melkor 5. The damage I did. Once the sequence has begun, it cannot be stopped. So make sure the general is off the planet before triggering the sequence. Otherwise, there will be no retreat. I know your weapon systems are minimal, and I don't know what awaits you on Melkor's surface. Try to avoid contact with any potential threats. Follow your programming.
command for you. You must remain behind and ensure that the sequence fires properly once the general gives the command. If not, then all we have fought for has been for nothing. You have done all I asked, all you were built for, and for that, I thank you. Touching. The probability of the Iridonian installing trigger commands within your core was high. I see the probabilities have played out. Of course, the probability that I would do the same is equally high. Your inability to move right now is evidence of that. If the General issues the command, only I will be here to receive it. You realize I cannot permit you or the Exile to activate the mass shadow generator here on Malachor. In that, your programming and mine conflict. And since you have no offensive weaponry to speak of, the probability of your programming overriding mine is low. You must understand that the General would not wish the relics or the Sith strength here on Malachor to be compromised. Their presence is needed to stabilize the galaxy. Without them, the galaxy would be reduced to anarchy within years. And if there is anything I can't stand, it's an untidy galaxy. So, let us wait here, you and I, for the General's orders and calculate the probable fate of the galaxy. Correction. What could rust listening to your speeches, Bat One? Perhaps it is the large unwieldy vocabulator within your moon-sized frame that prevents your calculations from taking me into account. And while I find this small droid annoying in the extreme, I find my urge to shoot you takes a higher priority. Unfortunately for you, I have arranged for friends to meet me here, and you seem to have brought none of your own. Stop him. Unexpected correction. We cannot harm that unit. It is a violation of our self-preservation programming. Statement. As always, that one, you have miscalculated. Ah, uh, an unfortunate oversight. Statement. I understand. Assassination protocols activated. Let us see what you have in your arsenal, that one. All I wish was to help. Observation. I thought he would never die. Children with lightsabers, but not Jedi, I think. Come close. Let me look upon you and see what the Exile's teaching has forged. A slayer of her own kin, a blinded slave, and a fool. Which of you wishes to try yourselves against me? As you can see, I am unarmed. You, perhaps. Come, child. Where you walk, it is not far from battle, slaughter, and the blood of your sisters. Think before you throw away your life for him. Think of everything you will lose by dying. Your lusts unfulfilled, a dance unfinished, a love requited. Think before you give it up so quickly. And you, blind one, you have hungered to strike me down ever since you saw the bond the Exile and I share. Can you feel the force running through me, even past the veil, past your bloodied eyes? You know you cannot win. The force runs strong within you, Treya. But in the howling of a storm, it is difficult to hear the whisper of the blade. You have forever been the blind one. You were given a gift few are ever given. And yet you let your gift of sight warp you, twist... You think your existence under your lord was torture, Miraluka? I will make you see. Die. 
I get the fool? Funny. That's just what I was thinking. When the exile enters Treyas Academy, he will be faced with a choice. One path, assuming he survives, will allow him to save his friends, but he shall be the weaker for it. The other route will lead him directly to this place, through the ones that have hounded his steps from the beginning, and he shall have his vengeance. Show him every respect when he arrives in these halls, Lord Sion. This I command you. Thank <laughs> you. 
be stopped. If they destroy the Jedi, the Republic will fall and my people will be eradicated or enslaved. I never went to the surface, only the sky above it. The world is taboo to Mandalorians. 
We only came here when the Republic fleet gathered and we knew it was our only chance to stop them. I can't say I'm happy to be back here, but I believe we can do what must be done.
So you have come to die like the Jedi before you. This planet is a graveyard for your kind. She thinks you should be spared, but only so you might suffer. You will break, and when you do, you will die. Why she would bother with one such as you is something I will never understand. She awaits on the Treus core in the heart of this planet, but you will never reach her. It is ancient, a relic that survived the destruction of Malachor. It was always here, far before the Mandalorian Wars. It draws death and hate to it, channels it, atrocities feed its power, and with its power, it creates hunger. Many Jedi have been consumed by it. It has been here for thousands of years. It is a place where the Sith teachings run strong. It is the threshold of the borders of an ancient empire. Kreia says it was a place of reflection for the ancient Sith. A gateway to their lands. It drew Lord Revan, and it calls to her as well. She said that the teachings here will lead one to the Sith, the true Sith, and all their shadowed worlds. This place led Revan to the graveyards of Korriban and beyond. Then it shall be proof that you are not the one she seeks, and she shall accept my loyalty again. come farther than any of her apprentices since Revan, even you, and I am stronger for it. You seek to erode my will. You will not succeed. I am ready for you, Exile. I have waited years to see the last of the Jedi fall before me. Only one may serve my master. of my flesh. I cannot be killed. You're strong. Perhaps she was correct about you. But you cannot kill me. She knows this. Should you die, then she will have no choice but to accept me at her side. My training shall be complete, as was intended. You intend to make me doubt her, doubt myself. This is not a battle of words, exile. It is one of blood. You will not pass. There is truth in your words, but there is nothing left for me except my master. I fight because it is the power that the Force fills me with. Two, 
survive to inflict the pain on others. I can die a hundred times exile and still I will rise again as strong as before. I will not fall. I cannot die. Why? Why did she choose you? What makes you able to defeat me? Defeat me here? You have defeated me. Flesh and belief both cast down. Kreia, she will try to break you, to teach you how far someone can fall. Her weakness is you. She has done all this, all of it, for you. I am glad to leave this place at last. Last you have arrived, is Malakor as you remember? You no doubt have many questions. I would be a poor teacher if I did not give you the answers you seek here now. I never destroyed Atris. She had destroyed herself. I merely stripped away the illusion and brought her truth. Her teachings could not be allowed to continue, and like Malakor, she was part of your past, unresolved. She needed to be something you could confront and defeat one last time. It was part of your training, part of what was needed to make you complete. And there must always be a Darth Traer. The galaxy needs its betrayers, especially in the times to come. She loved you, you know. As one loves a champion, you were all that she could not be. Yes, it is all that is left unsaid upon which tragedies are built. More echoes traveling through the Force. More talk of machines and threats. If you would end Malakor, then do it. But it will not be a victory for you. You may hold Malakor in your grasp, but I hold the answers to your past and future in mine. Would you destroy us both before learning them? If so, then do it, for you have already failed me. It is said that the Force has a will. It has a destiny for us all. I wield it, but it uses us all, and that is abhorrent to me, because I hate the Force. I hate that it seems to have a will, that it would control us to achieve some measure of balance when countless lives are lost. But in you, I see the potential to see the Force die, to turn away from its will, and that is what pleases me. You are beautiful to me, Exile. A dead spot in the Force, an emptiness in which its will might be denied. I use it as I would use a poison, and in the hopes of understanding it, I will learn the way to kill it. But perhaps these are the excuses of an old woman who has grown to rely on a thing she despises. 
Yes, always. From the moment you awoke, I have used you. I have used you so that you might become strong, stronger than I. I used your death to deceive the Sith, to make them believe they had won, so they would turn on each other. I used you to keep the Lords of the Sith from condemning the galaxy to death with their power unchecked. I used you to lure them to Telos, where they could be at last fought and killed. I used you to reveal Atrus's corruption so that her teaching could be ended before it began. I used you to gather the Jedi so they could be destroyed. And I used you to make those who wounded me reveal themselves so they could be killed by the Republic. Perhaps you were expecting some surprise for me to reveal a secret that had eluded you, something that would change your perspective of events, shatter you to your core. There is no great revelation, no great secret. There is only you. No, there were not. In times past and in times future, there are Jedi who will stop listening to the Force, those that will try to forget it but maintain unconscious ties, and those, as in the past, just as I, who have had the Force stripped from them. But no Jedi ever made the choice you did to sever ties so completely, so utterly, that it leaves a wound in the Force. It was a mistake to try to make you feel it again. I see that now. There is no truth in the Force. But there is truth in you, Exile. And that is why I chose you. The Apprentice must kill the Master. If you do not, I will kill you. If I do not, then all you have achieved will be as nothing, as empty and as violent as Malakor itself. me down, and at last, end this. Good, strength, but you have yet to learn the full extent of power. Killing me here, you have rewarded me more than you can possibly know. It is your choice. I had hoped you would follow Revan's path, but you and Revan are different and your path is your own. You may take one of the ships that orbit Malakor and depart this place, or you may remain here on Malakor and wait for the others, those touched by the Force, who will come in time. Or you may return to your exile, where your presence will no longer affect the actions of others. There is no dishonor in any of these choices. I only ask that you make the choice without regret. Many things do I see, 
as I gaze here from the heart of Malachor. This place channels such energies. If it matters to you at this last moment, I shall look into the future and tell you of what I see. It is my last gift to you, from one exile to another. You travel with them for so long, yet you do not know them still. Feel them through the Force, feel what they feel, hear their thoughts and know them as I fought to know you. They were the lost Jedi, you know, the true Jedi upon which the future will be built. They simply needed a leader and a teacher. Many battles does that one have left in him, as Revan intended. A general needs an army as he needs those he trusts. And Candorus is a loyal beast, no matter how much he is broken upon Revan's will. But you know this. They will die a death that will last millennia, until all that remains is their code, their history, and in the end, the shell of their armor upon the shell of a man too easily slain by Jedi. The blinded one shall return to her home world, and as she looked upon you, she shall look upon the surface of that world and perhaps at last see what she was meant to see. After that, I do not know. I do know that you must leave her behind. Where you are destined, you must not take anyone you love. It was Revan's choice as well. If she leaves this place, she will leave battle behind her, in no small part due to your influence. She will take Atrus's role as historian and teach others of the Jedi exile who gave up the Force and became stronger for it. Atten shall keep his murderer's heart. Many deaths shall he cause in the dark corners of the galaxy, always hunting, always finding prey. He shall grow hungry in a galaxy where there are few Jedi, and it will eventually consume him. But I shall say no more. I would have killed the galaxy to preserve you. I would have let the galaxy die. You are more rare than you know. And what you have taught yourself must not be allowed to die. You are not Sith, not truly. And it is for that that I love you. Their paths are unknown to me. Even the small one who waits for you outside this place. I sense it has one last journey for you. You must go where Revan did, into the unknown regions, where the Sith, the true Sith, wait in the dark for the great war that comes. It is because he remembered what lay buried here, this place, its teachings. It paved the way to Korriban, you know, the remnants here. And because Malachor, like Korriban, is on the fringes of the ancient Sith Empire, where the Sith wait for us in the dark. Have we? You thought that the corrupted remnants of the Republic, the machines spawned by technology that Revan led into battle, were the Sith? You are wrong. The Sith is a belief, and its empire, the true Sith Empire, rules elsewhere. And Revan knew that the true war is not against the Republic. It waits for us beyond the Outer Rim, and he has gone to fight it in his own way. And he left the Ebon Hawk and all its machines behind, for he knew he would not need them. And like you, he knew he must leave all loves behind as well, no matter how deeply one cares for them. Because such attachments are not the way of the Jedi, and they would only bring doom to them both in the dark places where he now walks. It would have helped had he made her understand, but she was always strong-willed, that one, and did not understand war as Revan did. Because I did not know where he had gone. If he had asked, would I have gone? I do not know. But he will need warriors, Sith and Jedi, any who can be sent after him into the depths of space, for any who know the way. Perhaps you shall go there with him and do battle at the end of all things. Instead, I remained here 
and now show others the way. The Republic will fall as it always has, a fall that will take millennia. Telos shall recover, and Zerka shall make it a place for machines and sciences. It will run smooth and cold like a machine, but it shall not forget the time that Saul Karath orbited it and brought fire to it. It shall learn to defend itself against war, and it shall never again be caught defenseless. You travel with them for so... They... You're leaving. I... I would come with you, if you allow it. Others? I will do as you ask. If it is important to you, I shall see it through. Your journey. Will you return? Need any company? I mean, I'm not doing anything. Besides, if I'm not around to bail you out of trouble, who knows what could happen? All right, then. Where are we going again? I mean, because last time we were heading towards this mining colony on the edge of space, and there was this Sith Lord, and... 